This one here? Yeah, it's yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Just testing comps.
And welcome to day one of the 2022 British and Irish Cup, streamed live with 24-7 TV from West Park Leeds RUFC in Yorkshire. This is the uh, annual tournament, international tournament, that takes place between teams from Great Britain and from Ireland. And we're getting underway for the first time ever at one of these tournaments with a men's 40s match. Uh, I'm joined alongside me by Barry Keary from Ireland. Uh, Barry, the last British and Irish Cup took place at the University of Limerick in October of 2021. It was 1-3-2 on categories by Ireland. What sort of result are you expecting this time round? I'd take the same result to Hill if that was possible, but we'll have to see. Um, a lot has changed in the interim. A lot of players have changed, a lot of, te a lot of teams have changed. We even have some coaching changes, so it'll be interesting to see how, how today goes. And it's good to see uh, men's 40s playing at this level as well. Uh, for us, it's, it's a new team, but there's huge interest in Ireland. Yeah, it's uh, brilliant to get to see these teams uh, taking the field at the British and Irish Cup for the first time. Uh, they made their international debuts at the International Tag Series just a month ago at the University of Limerick. As we see the Great Britain captain James Gross take the ball up towards the try line for the first time. So they played uh, internationally for the first time. Ireland 40s against GB 40s and it's the first try of the game there and it is awarded to Dave Shipley from Great Britain. David Shipley is the head coach of the Women's Open uh, for Great Britain and since this men's 40s side was put into, put into action he's, uh, he's 
put his playing boots back on, lace them back up, and uh, to great effect there as he scores the opening try of the game. It's one point that Great Britain lead over Ireland. It's a good start for Britain. Uh, they must be delighted with that. Ireland will be disappointed to start so slowly. And it's a drop out now to Ireland with the kickoff. Now it's an Ireland suggesting that it uh, went dead, Will, before uh, the try line, but the ref said. Yeah, it looked to me like it bounced just before the try line. That's the decision that the referee is has given. So it will be Ireland dropping the ball out from the goal line back to the Great Britain players. Now these two teams we know are incredibly evenly matched. At the International Tag Series, not only did they play two tests against one another, they each played two tests against an Irishman's 50s side. Uh, in the two tests they played against each other as 40s. Great Britain won the, the game one on Friday, and game two was won on Saturday by Ireland, and both games won by the exact same points margin, meaning that it all came down to who had beaten the Irishman's 50s by the most over the two days and by a margin of just one point that turned out to be Ireland but. yeah it was close very close there was a suggestion that maybe 50s would do 40s a favour by uh, allowing them to win easily but the 50s were having none of it and they uh, they fought as hard as they could and almost denied Ireland to win but uh, just just about got over the line by one point as you say as we see Cliff Callahan for Callanan for Ireland taking the ball up to halfway and then receiving a penalty so this is Ireland's best chance of the game six tags and just half the field to go now first time that they find themselves in Great British territory yeah Ireland with a bit of field position now it'll be interesting to see what they do the row ball a bit messy there but ref allowing it to go but it's a turnover the GB ball yeah, a bit of a wasted opportunity there for Ireland. And it's GB taking over through Roger Rebello in the number one singlet. As Pete Murray, assistant coach of this side, dances into the opposition half. And a little bit of a stumble. It was accidental as he clashed ankles with one of the Irish defenders. Uh, but GB will come again on tag two. GB Good. making a lot of early running here, Will. Yes, they are, and that dart there coming from Alex Brown, he wasn't available for the International Tag Series, but at the same venue in May, uh, we debuted the men's 40s category at the UK Tag Nationals. Uh, it was a really exciting category, won by East London, who provide many of the players within this side, uh, but Alex Brown represented Coventry and Warwickshire and was a real standout player uh, in that side. So he's uh, earned his opportunity in the jersey really well this weekend. But Great Britain losing the ball there. Yeah, it's good defence by Ireland. They turn the ball over and they look to come out now from behind their line. Yeah, through... Uh, you've got two number fours on this uh, team sheet, <laughs> Barry. Is that Scully or Shirley? I think it was Shirley. Sure, sure. That was Scully. I think that was Scully. And Ireland once again up towards halfway. This is as far as they got last time. And the half break there from Tony O'Brien. But it's Brown who we were just talking about making the tag defensively now. And Ireland having... Found no luck on the right-hand side. Work it to the left. Really good ball handling skills. Until it was then kicked forward. But uh, played at and it's going to be six again for Ireland. Yeah, Ireland with a chance now to move the ball. Maybe pose GB a few problems if they can get beyond the first couple of tags. It's wet and slippy conditions in fairness because it was raining earlier today. So our first opportunity, and you know, our first opportunity for our viewers to get to see the men's 40s at international level uh, on a live stream in the Northern Hemisphere. We will actually get to see them three times this weekend. All the, all the other sides we'll see once today and once tomorrow. But uh, due to the way the draw works, the men's 40s will have two games live streamed on, this, on the show pitch tomorrow as... The break down the field from Great Britain puts them in a really good position here. It's Andy Inglis now taking the ball up with a dart from the ruck. Chris Prout, former member of Great Britain Mixed Seniors at the last British and Irish Cup, feeds the ball over to the right-hand side and lost forwards. Not the result GB were looking for there. 
Yeah, it's good pressure by Ireland, uh, forcing the knock on. So Ireland get a chance to attack again. And working the ball to the right, but not too many options. So just a settle in the end as they now go to the boot and looking for the 50-10, but it's going to come up just short. Just short. Yeah, it was uh, into the GB sub box, which with the sub boxes being laid out between the two 10 meter markers in each half um, it's fairly easy to see if it goes into where the subs are then it's not a 50 10. Dave Matkoff as uh, touch judge in in this game signaling for that and it's Paul Ward who's actually on the whistle yeah it's nice to have touch judges in the game it means that stuff gets missed yeah so we'll have touch judges uh, for every single match on pitch two that we're live streaming today which the live stream pitch tomorrow will be pitch one and the schedule uh, for the weekend can be found across the Great Britain tag rugby social media and the tri tag rugby social media I'm sure um, Itra um, and, and Island and Tag have shared it as well Barry we, we, indeed we have although the red was a bit hard to, to read well so we changed it to green I hope that's okay it's uh, fair enough and it makes sense uh, for the for the jerseys the two teams are playing in there's a nice little kick put in there by Ireland and it's a really promising opportunity a good that's tag Brendan out. Welsh that was tagged close to the line there and still Ireland will come working the ball now back to the left hand side over to the wing and the hip just offered there by Peter Moran Leahy feeds it into the right hand side the far side good pace on that run there but Shipley equal to it in defence for GB Ireland right, are probing here looking to get through but GB have turned it over it's really good defence by GB well GB look to move it out now. Ireland have to be uh, focused in defence here. They want to try and force a turnover. Maybe by forcing a knock on. They're up nice and quick. And they have forced a turnover from a field position. We'll have a chance to go wide now. As they look to do, but there's a good tag in the middle. But Ireland are exactly where they want to be in the centre of the pitch with a couple of options either side. Player coach Cliff Callanan on the ball now. He pops the offload to. Um, David Lyons and it goes back inside Dara Sheeran Cliff looks to move the ball again and it looks like Ireland could be in here for the equalising try and it's a score by uh, by Alan, Con Alan Conway These teams illustrating how close they actually are to each other with the scores being Neville again now. Zarden look to take the kick off of GB up. Look to receive. Open the counter. GB now look to attack Ireland, look to defend with a couple of missed tags, the yeah. nice break by GB there. It's the lovely twisting hips of Dave Shipley as it now goes on to head coach and then assistant coach Sagrove to Murray. Inglis looks to think about the kick and decides better of it, beats the first defender and that is going to be a penalty to Great Britain. Uh, wrapping on Inglis there so he takes the ball up again and Side Grove just marshalling his troops, giving options right but works left. Here's the captain, Gross, and now on to Ben Payne, who's moved up from the Great Britain men's 30 since the International Tag Series. He's been a fixture in that side for a long time. Uh, he is eligible age wise for the 40s, having uh, had his 40th birthday uh, last December. So he's made the move up to the GB men's 40s and will be a really positive addition to the side this weekend. But it's Ireland now on the ball. And over on the far side. Nice little interplay by Ireland. Getting a few yards, but GB holding the line quite well. 
pretend these teams are very evenly matched. Jero Shea on the ball, he goes outside to Connie Lee. We're in now with the uh, row ball in the centre again, examining their options. They have to go with the short side. It's decent yards before the tag is made. Luckily for um, luckily for uh, Jero Shea because uh, the ball went into touch. If he wasn't tagged, he would have been in trouble there. Ireland off the kick, but it's well well taken by GB. GB looks counter. Murray with a nice break there. Just to track back. Defence by Ireland, lots of communication and chat going on. They step up nice and quick in GB to close them down and deny them time and space. Nice kick by Alex Brown. Well defended though by Ireland, keeping Great Britain in midfield. Looping play there was Carl Smith and finds Prout, and the ball kept alive by Great Britain through the hands of Brown to Payne. And back into Brown. Nice little dart there from Smith. Yeah, but it's a turnover for tag six. Yeah. So just at the last island making the tag that saves the try and keeps them ahead in this game. Ireland look to break out here now as they look to get towards the centre. A lot of the ball going through Connie Leahy's hands. It's one of the more experienced players having first played for Ireland in uh, 2013. It's a turnover to GB for contact by Ireland. So again, GB with the penalty here for contact. Again, it's a bit of a slippy pitch, so it's hard to keep your footing with the rain earlier in today. But GB, nice little switch, look to go wide. Good defending by Ireland. Sadgrave to Prout and Ribello on the wing in the corner there. Nearly gets through and it's Prout who decides he will work that short side and Matkoff is happy with it as the touch judge. That's Paul Ward no and the try is given which will level things up here. Great Britain to Ireland two. So GB with the two tries not inside the bonus box and Ireland with a single bonus box try means the score is 2-2. Two, two. the ball and working it up the field after it bubbles on the ground which as you, you mentioned the, the rain earlier Barry it's not going to make it any easier to handle but doing well there and again going for the 50-10 this one might be a bit more promising oh. now it just sits up before going into touch unfortunately the bounce there prevented what would have been the 50-10 but it looks like their touch he is giving it I would have said no that will to be honest yeah, I thought it had stayed in field, but obviously Dave Matkoff is a lot closer, has a far better view than the two of us uh, from where we are in our commentary position, so we'll trust him. And it means that Ireland have a really promising opportunity now. Yeah, Ireland with a real chance here. Nice attempt to break into the centre, but well watched by GB. Oh, Connie Lee looks like it might be in. No, good tag by Yeah, GB. good tag by Murray there. Otherwise, it could have been another two points for Ireland. Working over to the far side. That's O'Brien that was on the ball. Good fellow who was a uh, player of the tournament for GB Men's 40s at the ITS, making a, a solid defensive tag. And the kick again comes from Ireland. 
and knocked on. So they're going to keep possession. That's uh, Conor Leahy for Ireland, who's a big fan of putting boot to ball. Yeah, well, sometimes when you're up there and you're on tag six, what you want to do is kick into the corner. Worst case scenario, the opposition catches it and they got to play out from there. Best case scenario, like here, you get a knock on or a fumble and you get the ball back. Yeah, Ireland losing a little bit of ground here going forward, but sometimes you've got to go back to go forwards, and that's what they will hope will come from this with the game tied up at 2-2. GB's defence is quite strong here. They're up nice and fast, shutting everything that Ireland do down quickly. So Ireland really struggling to break through, despite having a field position. Kick through. Yeah, defended well with the feet by Great Britain and Alex Brown. We see him break downfield. Lovely run there. Sorry, Chris Holt that was on the far side. This is now Alex Brown on the ball and unfortunately knocked on by Murray as Brown looked to release him down the near side. So Ireland taking over around halfway. And here is Callanan. Finding Moran. And the fake pump and then it does go out to Convoy. pressurising GB but GB are holding strong at the moment Will yeah it's a strong defensive game from both teams really uh, just sort of really kind of sounding one another out in, the, in this first half uh, of course five test matches that each side will play against their opponents this weekend uh, oh a try for Ireland on the Hilder potentially or is it a tag no the try is awarded one point to Ireland before the break. So that means we are 2-3 at halftime. Ireland in the ascendancy with an extra point. And uh, it's really well taken. When you hear the hooter and you've got to keep playing on, Ireland in such a promising position there. Uh, and they made the most of it. So Ireland 3, Great Britain 2. We expected these two teams to be this close at halftime. Yeah. Uh, it's great to see that uh, it, it's lived up to its billing. Yeah, it's a very evenly matched, very similar to the ITS with wafer thin margin between the teams. Like a lot of really good play, but a lot of very strong defence as well. You know, um, and like to be honest, it's really good to see like what they can do. They can really move the ball, and they're not afraid to run hard lines. They're not afraid to be a, an option, even if they're not going to get the ball. And they're really pushing GB Ireland, but uh, GB are defending really well. And then GB with a couple of nice little breakouts themselves, and it's very close. It's anyone's game, really. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, again, too close to call this category uh, at this point in in the day. Um, and we would want that. We wouldn't want uh, a, a team racing ahead in the first half of their first game. It would be a long weekend for one team if that was the case but we uh, were certainly in for a really tight contest through the weekend for these these guys now uh, as I mentioned this is the seventh category at the British and Irish Cup but it's not counting towards the BNI itself there are six categories that do count to award toward the awarding of the British and Irish Cup they are mixed open and mixed seniors women's open and women's seniors men's open and men's 30s so all six of those categories they'll be playing two tests today and they will be playing three tests tomorrow one of which on each day you will see on our live streamed pitch coming up next we will have the mixed seniors uh, and we'll be seeing the seniors categories over the next three uh, so it'll be mixed seniors women's seniors and then men's 30s followed up in the afternoon mixed open women's open and men's open uh, so lots of tag rugby coming at you today on the first day of the british and irish cup a competition that is the oldest international tag tournament in the northern hemisphere and one that has been contested uh, uh, since 2013 it, it was won 
by Ireland in 13 and 14. There was no tournament played in 2015 because of the Tag World Cup. Played again in 16, 17 and 18, all won by Ireland to give them a 5 nothing lead overall in the series. We then went to the famous Wasps Rugby Club in West London in 2019 when for the first time the Great Britain teams managed to, uh, to end the tournament victorious, winning across multiple categories there, uh, and uh, finally getting their hands on the British and Irish Cup. Uh, we then missed a year in 2020 due to COVID, so the tournament was postponed, it was actually postponed multiple times within 2021 due to travel restrictions. We finally got to play it in October of last year at the University of Limerick, the venue that we will use for the World Cup in 2023. It was an incredibly close contest, Barry. Uh, this category that we're seeing now obviously wasn't played, but across the, the other six, we saw a 3-2 scoreline uh, in favour of Ireland with women's seniors winning. The categories that Ireland won in last time, men's 30s, mixed seniors and mixed open, are they still the three categories where you would have the most confidence that they would deliver wins this weekend? It'd be hopeful, mixed, open, mixed senior, yes, and, and men's 30s. Men's 30s has a lot of the players that played open in 2015 and 2018 in the World Cup, so it's very, very experienced. It's probably our most experienced squad, um, and it's the best players from those, those squads that played either 30s or open in those two World Cups, so you would be hopeful there. Uh, the women's 30s has a lot of new caps. It's new, new setup and new team. It's a little bit in transition with the the previous squad being silver medalists at the World Cup in 2018. So there's been a bit of turnover in that squad. So it'll be interesting to see how they go today. And women's open has, has a lot of a lot of new caps who would have either started this year or last year. And it's okay. And it'll be interesting to see how they, how, how they go as well. Um, but it'll, it'll, be, it'll be tough for them because they're, they're, they're new. So, but it'll be, it'll be close, I'd say. I mean, between the two countries, it's been relatively close over the last number of years. I know we won the last time, but the previous time, GB were emeritus winners in, in Wasps. And the time before, we, we only narrowly won in Gormanstown just before the 2018 World Cup um, by number of wins. It actually came down to, and at one point in the day, it looked like it might come down to points scored. So, um, yeah. Yes, so with, with this tournament so finely poised, as you mentioned, the last three, uh, uh, cat, uh, last three iterations of the tournament being decided by very bare margins, the same could be the case this weekend. So it's probably worth us just going through the tiebreakers for, for those of you watching at home. Uh, as we see Gross uh, break a little bit down the field and then uh, slips on the wet grass as Great Britain move it from left to right and knock the ball on, Ireland will take over. So within the six categories that count towards the awarding of the British and Irish Cup, the country that wins three or more should win the, the tournament overall. Um, categories that are drawn don't count in either way. They're not decided by points difference. So as we had in 2021, the women's seniors category, one game each and a draw, uh, didn't count towards the overall uh, result of 3-2 in favour of Ireland on categories. Uh, so if we are tied on categories, whether it's 3-3, 2-2, or... And here's the break from Ireland and a lovely galloping one uh, from David Lyons. And it's another box try. It's another two points. And Ireland stretch their lead out here 5-2 the margin. Now the biggest lead that we've seen in the game of uh, three points. And Great Britain are really going to need to find a response because a, a try on the hooter in the first half and then one pretty much straight after the break in this one. It's Ireland's first opportunity on the ball after the break and they go over and score. So three points in just a matter of minutes scored by Ireland. Yeah, that's a big swing in, in the context of this game with the team has been so evenly matched. Nice uh, run by lines into the box there. Nice pass by Jarosha to put him away as well. So just returning to the tiebreakers, if it finishes 3-3 or 2-2, then it goes down to games won in the six categories by country. So were Ireland to have won uh, out of their out of their 30 matches that they play this weekend, were they to have won 16 and Great Britain won 14, then the British and Irish Cup would stay with Ireland. 
if uh, their tie on wins 15-15 um, then it would go down to points difference across all six of the eligible categories. Um, and then if we still can't split the teams at that point, it would come down to which team has conceded the fewest red cards in those six categories over the weekend. But obviously we don't want to see that being a tiebreaker. Uh, we want to hopefully won't have any red cards through the weekend. Yeah, exactly. We have a really close contest decided entirely on the pitch by, by tries and tags being made as Ireland continue to come again. Now certainly looking in the ascendancy here in this one as I my first commentator's curse of the weekend yeah pretty much will <laughs> and Ireland do knock that ball on uh, just about 10 metres inside the British half so Inglis now takes it up a little bit of contact there but nothing being awarded either way now oh, this is men's tag where a little bit of contact is not generally going to result in a penalty and Inglis again on the ball and dancing up he uh, didn't play at the ITS for this side selected for the British and Irish Cup it's been a rapid ascendancy for him as Prout and Vinluen lit it tried to interlink after breaking through but the ball goes loose and into Irish hands and they will look to work it away from their own line now yeah again Ireland off the kick yeah an early kick this one Looking to put the GB full back under pressure. Yeah, it's fielded well by Mark Day. Good fellow now at dummy half. Finds Chris Holt. Prout does have an option in the end. Alex Brown coming up on his inside shoulder. Carl Smith over to Ben Payne. We're expecting to see speed in attack from Payne. Yeah, Ireland may be a little bit slower now coming up. I mean, GB have a bit more time to decide what to do with the ball. Yeah, GB look like they really want to bounce back from that final try. But that kick just escaping the clutches of Inglis and Ireland fielding it well. Yeah, it's good defence by GB again. Ireland are not really getting much change. I'm trying to go down the wing. Callanan with a big booming boot downfield and it's herring away from Jack Williams who has to be careful as he scoops up the bouncing ball not to knock it on. Has done well. But nice kick chase by Ireland. They make yeah, the tag in the corner. Straight up there and not letting uh, not letting Williams get away anywhere. Vinland now in midfield. No ground gain. as the experienced head of Callanan. And I know it seems uh, a bit obvious to call any of these players experienced in the men's 40s category. But Callanan really uh, amongst them uh, one of the most experienced players that we will see on a, on an international tag field oh absolutely yeah he played in he played for Ireland in the 2015 World Cup and Mick Senior and he's really uh, really enjoying his, his time now with the with the 40s he's, he's always had ambitions to coach Ireland so this is a, a big deal for him and he'll be really hoping to get a, a win out of, out, of, out of this weekend He's played a lot of tag over the years. I've, pl I've played him several times before. I stopped playing with him. Uh, no, he was embarrassing came me. out on the winning side. Oh, it, was, it, was definitely, it was definitely Cliff and not me. <laughs> He's far more talented than I ever was. And no thoughts of representing Ireland men's 40s or I, maybe even I, 50s, Barry? To be honest with you, Will, uh, I think you have to be able to run to play international tag. So that's definitely a flaw that I have. Not particularly quick. And I'm not particularly skillful, so I doubt I'd make the cut. Those are two of the essential skills of a top-level tag player. Uh, so perhaps uh, you are better off in the commentary box here than Barry. As Vinluen puts in a long looping pass to Gross. And looks to find Goodfellow in the corner, but the tag was made already. Clutch defence by Ireland at the last there. Yeah, that, that looked like it was going to be a score all day long, so it's good defending by Ireland not to concede. 
Yeah, and Gross is a, a very dangerous runner. He's the all-time leading scorer for the Bristol Sonics Rugby League Club um, during his contact days. So he certainly knows his way to the try line, and Ireland did well there to shut him out. Yeah, Ireland looks to come out again now. Making some decent errors of the first couple of first couple of tags. They'll probably look to kick now, given that it's tag three. Here we go. Oh, nicely blocked by GB, but the bounce falls kindly to Ireland, but I think it's a knock-on by Lee as he tried to yeah. to secure possession there. Unfortunate because it was it, the deflection definitely meant it set it sat up really nicely for Lee. No relation to, to Jack in the coaching setup for uh, Ireland women seniors? No, no relation, just a coincidence. Murray managing to avoid being tagged there, and it's Chris Holt now. Good little dart initially, but he was pegged back. The DJ, as Vinluin finds Murray. He's another player who's moved from on the other GB sides, Murray. He played for Great Britain mixed seniors in the British and Irish Cup last year. Uh, but when the 40 side was announced, he put his hand up, not only to play for them, but also to get involved in the coaching. Uh, very lucky to have uh, people like himself and Alex Sagrove, who was previously in the men's 30s, moving up to, uh, to give this side strength and experience. Yeah, they will need it as they find themselves three points down in this one. And so far, without an answer. Yeah, Ireland are doing well so far, controlling the ball, and they've taken advantage of a couple of penalties here to get a nice bit of field position. They're now examining their options. Nice depth, a lot of communication going on. So it'll be interesting to see what they do here. Good defence by GB. Maybe a little slow coming off the line. Ireland look dangerous. With Ger O'Shea and the ball back inside to Lee. Who opts to go back out to O'Shea. Again, he's tagged. So GB defending well. The ball in a probe and looking for the opening. It's really good defence by GB to tag five. Ireland off the kick, but it's far too long and it's going to be a top kick out at ten from the centre. And an extra tag. For um, for for GB as well, because you start in tag zero. Oh, and a wonderful break here! It's Carl Smith. He's made 60 meters already. Be two players as well. Pretty impressive, Will. Yeah, lovely stuff. Something you would expect from Ben Payne, who looks to do the same. Great Britain with Shipley and Smith now in a very promising position. Shipley twisting his hips, the, the first man to go over in this uh, 2022 British and Irish Cup. Put GB on the board early doors and they'll need him to do the same. If they want to get back into this one, Murray, the options run out in front of him. Brown can't work his way round the central defender into the box. It's fifth and final now for GB. Murray pops it to Rebello and oh. Rebello so nearly oh, through but the, the final tag made and Ireland just as GB did moments ago on their try line escaping on fifth and final and will now look to launch an attack of their own. Yeah, GB were, were, were very close to scoring there. That was a really last gas pack. That's good play by by uh, by GB and good defence by Ireland. Yeah, and all of that uh, attack and that play for Great Britain coming from that initial break from Carl Smith. He uh, is a, a marathon runner. He was actually the fastest lifeguard costumed marathon runner at the London Marathon in 2013 and we can certainly, uh, we've certainly able to record, see that pace from him there. As, uh, you know a like a marathon is like a really GB. long race, right? A marathon so is a very really, long race. Pace doesn't come into it, right? If he went as fast as that, then I've no doubt he was the quickest lifeguard. And lifeguards do need to be able to sprint from the hut down the beach into, into the water. Uh, not sure whether Carl Smith has actually been a lifeguard himself, or whether he just dresses up as them in marathons, but 
Well, it's definitely a suitable to be a random fact. Well. As we see Brown now in midfield, and Gross just dropping the ball backward and losing a few metres for GB. The kick comes from Brown, but dealt with well by Lions for Ireland. So we'll see you crossed for that bonus box try that put Ireland into this 5-2 lead that they've preserved over the last 10 minutes. Yeah, Ireland are doing well. They're, the game sort of retreated back into where we were before, where it was quite even, both sides probing, but not really getting that close to the try line. Um, Ireland will be quite happy with that at the moment. And again, boot to ball, but this one's going to reach the try line before the touch line. And so it will be tap on the 10 to Great Britain. Payne screaming for the ball. He wants to go quickly, looking for the gaps in front of him, but they disappear as quickly as they were ever there. And Ingham oh, finds Gross. By in the middle by Brandon A little bit of contact as Gross makes his way back to the mark. And Irish player not to the ground. Paul Ward just I making think sure. I sort of semi slipped. Making sure that everything is in order there before the play continues. Sagrove Good looking to run a Ireland. switch. Nice turnover by there. Just didn't work out. Ball drop backwards. Ireland take over. Still, Great Britain not able to find a way back into this one with time ticking away. Five and a half minutes to go and a three point lead for Ireland to defend. Yeah, you feel if Ireland get another score here, well, it could be game over. Certainly do, Barry. And that could. Oh, that's good tag. Nearly in the looking to be it, but Holt making the tag there. Still promising positions and important moments, these for Ireland. for the kick is it a try I think it is yeah no it isn't no tag, tag. awarded and corner Great Britain take over quite a lot of confusion from, from all all the players on the pitch and the players in the subs box as yeah. well. But Ireland suggesting the tap not ta or the roll not taken from the mark and therefore it should be a turnover. GB opting for I'm confused. Yeah, the uh, the official guidance given by the referees to all the teams before this tournament is it a tap not taken from the mark or taken incorrectly will be replayed. It won't be a turnover as per the international rules. And the big kick from Ingham there as he looks for the 50-10, but it's going to come up just short. Luckily for Great Britain, short of the try line as well. Yeah, Ireland look to break out now from where they are, and GB look to hem them in. Uh, so it's uh, Ireland really just need to, I suppose, really keep, keep the ball for a couple of tags and then look to kick for field position. And they should be able to close out the game from there. GB really need the ball and a score. Yeah, and a box score as well. Can't see them scoring three tries, three separate tries to level things up here. It's good kick chase by Brandon Walsh, chasing his own kick and he makes a tag, which is always crucial, Will. If you're going to opt to kick, you better make sure you get there. Either get the ball or get the tag. Absolutely, Barry. You sound uh, like you've shouted that to players that, um, on your own team a number of times before. I may have, yeah. I'm, I'm quite the, I'm quite the sideline shouter. All right. Most of the time they ignore me, well, which is a good thing because I talk an, an awful lot of rubbish, as you well know. As I do. Oh. As this is a break by Brown by Holt. That's a try for GB, and it is a wonderful try for Great Britain. And we're just checking. The referee looks yep. to have awarded one point yep. to Great Britain. 
making it 5-3. Now to Ireland. And just over two minutes remaining. So a box try would level things up here. But a <laughs> kick right into the guts of the Irish defender like that is not going to help GB as Shipley hairs back after it. Tries a little bit of basketball, bouncing the ball backwards towards his own try line, but it ends up in the hands of the Irish. And what a position they're in here now to really seal this game. Yeah, they've time and space. GB are a little bit disorganized. Oh, they yeah. ran into each other there. They, <laughs> they did. That's definitely contact, but it's contact that is friendly fire. And so there'll be no penalty. Ireland will continue with the ball and with the field position. The little dance from Welsh doesn't quite come to anything. And Leahy now. Ireland will be content now with the time that's on the clock to Leahy just taking use his up time, Newcastle style there. Yeah, well. To use up the minutes here. Rebello making the tag in centre field. That's all GB can do. They need to get through Ireland, set a six and take possession. The little kick there. Uh, doesn't work out for uh, for Lions, so we have seen cross the line for Ireland, arguably is his the most decisive score in this game with a two-point margin. Murray takes the tap from the 10 metre. We're in last chance saloon for Great Britain in game one of the men's 40s exhibition category played here alongside the 2022 British and Irish Cup. As Ribello looks for what his options are from dummy half and finds Williams on the far flank. Back into head coach Alex Sagrove, pops it off to Murray. It's good D by Ireland though. 30 GB seconds to go time. and half the field for GB. We saw a wonderful break from Smith earlier. Not quite that time. The tag is made and could be a really important one from Welsh because it does just slow down the game as we wait for the hooter to come in this First game of the weekend. We've got many more coming at you. Six more matches today. Eight matches tomorrow on this live stream pitch. There goes the hooter. There's the final play. And Great Britain win game one. Five points Ireland. to three. Uh, sorry, Ireland. <laughs> Slip of the tongue there. Just uh, was hoping that would have been the result we would have had. Uh, but of course, I will be unbiased through the weekend on commentary, just like my, my good friend Barry Keary alongside me. It's Ireland that win this first one, five points to three. Uh, and hopefully Barry will be able to bring some interviews with uh, the Irish men's 50s, a couple of the Irish men's 50s 40. after the handshakes here, Irish men's 40s. I'm having a, a wonderful 30 seconds of it as we see the two teams congratulate one another. They have, uh, as the exhibition category, they have two more tests today uh, that will be on pitch four so we won't be able to be live streamed but if you're thinking of heading down on this beautiful Yorkshire day to see some tag in action then uh, they can be found at 1 p.m. and 4 p.m. on pitch four as uh, Great Britain will look to strike back and level things up and Ireland with the opportunity having one game one here to tie up this exhibition category before the day is out yeah well Ireland. Ireland have started have started really well there and they'll, they'll be very happy to get the win in the first game momentum being a, being a key key uh, one of the things you said there was that I would be unbiased well I don't remember ever promising that like, you're 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 the unbiased of the two of us right I'm as biased as the day is long I'm just going off what they, they the the viewers keep asking uh, for Barry but um, yeah yeah you straddle your fence there uh, we uh, we we'll, uh, I'll continue to be just in, in, in favour in favour of Ireland.
Hey guys, congratulations on winning your first game. Thanks you must be happy. So yeah, with that. Delighted to get the first game over with. Yeah, you defended really well there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's uh, not a long way to go, but we've got the first one over the over the line. What, what are your thoughts on the rest of the day? Um, well, let's we'll get over this one first. We'll let it cool down, and then we'll regroup, and hopefully, uh, same thing. Keep the pressure on them. And we went to day two in a, in a good in a good stead. You think you're going to? Be, are you happy you're going to be able to play all those games? Um, ah, uh, yeah, at that pace, it should be all right. Should be all right. Should be, should be okay. Yeah, should be all right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I asked your coach, would, would, would you guys be comfortable playing so many games over the two days? And he said, yes, the other team is equally as old as us. <laughs> so it should be fine. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. this is uh, your second time playing international yeah. tag. How have you found it? Yeah, great. Loved it. Loved yeah. it. Absolutely yeah, loved the competitiveness. Yeah. Yeah. Love everything. Yeah. And in terms of the league, where are you playing at the moment? Are you playing in Dublin? Yeah, we're playing in UCD. Yeah. yeah. How are you finding that? Great, yeah. Um, good standard and good to get to know everyone on the squad from playing against them and that. So, yeah, it's good. Yeah. It's a different level though when you're going up to from social yeah. to international. How, how do you think the World Cup's going to go next year? Yeah. A lot of winter, warm winter weight of training to do. <laughs> we, need, <laughs> we need to talk about going away to do some training. <laughs> definitely need some team bonding. Yeah, yeah. 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 absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah. Congratulations, guys. Thanks, 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 Thanks a million. Thanks very much. Thanks a Cheers. 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 Bye. Bye. Bye.
Yes, we would, uh, we would hope to see another good contest on pitch two here at the 2022 British and Irish Cup. This is the first match that we're seeing this weekend that will count towards the overall tournament. Uh, of course, it was won 3 nothing by Ireland in Limerick last year. Uh, so Great Britain will be hoping for a stronger result than that. Ireland will be quite happy to repeat, I should imagine. Uh, but the mixed tournament at the International Tag Series, as you alluded to there, was, was a lot closer between the, the two mixed open sides from Ireland and Great Britain and the two mixed senior sides from both countries. Uh, we did have uh, a fairly uh, uh, even mix of results with a number of teams beating one another within that category. Um, so uh, hard to call this one compared to last year. Uh, both sides looking to build on what uh, I think they'll find to be encouraging results last time out. Yeah, I think I think that's right. I think uh, the ITS was close with the mixed open teams making the final and the mixed senior teams being in the the, 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 the middle final, um, which you would kind of hope and expect, I guess. Um, and as with anything, first game today is probably crucial to get that little bit of momentum. So it'll be just interesting to see now how Ireland get on. We have uh, one uh, Australian-based player, uh, Tamsin Perry, who flew all the way from Australia to play uh, for Ireland. That's how much she wants to play in the World Cup. You can't uh, fault that dedication. She'll be wearing number 43 uh, for Ireland in this one. 
Um, Great Britain, they, uh, they have a similar lineup to the, uh, the team sheet that they've had at their, their most recent two tournaments. Um, but they are joined for the first time in the British and Irish Cup by Alexandra Sims for GB. Uh, for GB, who had a really strong, uh, really strong tournament at the International Tag Series, scoring some excellent tries there. Um, they're captained once again by Ben Picnic with Amanda Scarfo, the former gymnast, the vice captain. Uh, Andrew Davis, a former player coach of this side, has taken the year off from playing to focus on his head coach responsibilities for the team. So he will be offering a lot of advice and, uh, and support from the sidelines as Mick Seniors run onto the field. And it is um, Scarfo, the vice captain, we see working her way towards the near side wing. Great Britain will receive the ball uh, from this first kickoff with Ireland in green playing left to right and looking to replicate the achievements of their men's 40s counterparts in the first game of the day and kick, them, uh, kick their campaign off with a win. Yeah, Ireland will look to build strongly on how their year has gone so far and look to, to get the win themselves to get themselves off the mark today so we're just waiting for the hooter to allow us to start in this one and there it is the game is underway and the kickoff down into the far back corner and it's captain picnic for great britain who fields the ball really nicely almost volleyball style to avoid the knock-on and then worked over to Hafakrim, the Royal Marine Commando that we saw lots of at the International Tag Series with a, a first burst upfield. The ball nearly goes loose and uh, Great Britain, yeah, and they are judged to have knocked it on according to referee Matt Blades, who himself was a late call-up to the refereeing team here. Yeah, he did an excellent job at the International Tag Series. Um, Unfortunately, Russell Crane, who was due to ref at this one, to increase his international experience, unable to in the end. So, Blade stepping in is Dara Conway, who recently moved from London to his native Ireland. Takes the ball up really well for Mick Seniors, as they have their first opportunity on the ball. Yeah, they do, and they're, they look to get into the game nice and fast. Lovely little lines, and they're running nice hard lines at the GB defence straight away, putting it under pressure. And there is Tamsin Perry. She's come a long way and unfortunately for her, the run isn't able to be quite as far as a lovely change of direction. Works well here for Ireland and Blades just checking with his touch judges before awarding this one. And the try, the one point try is given. Scored by David Hayes. To Ireland, but we're just uh, waiting for a moment. Lois Lau for Great Britain is down having attempted to make the try saving tag. Yeah, Men's look, 40s assistant coach Pete Murray running in to, to help her off the field. Yeah, that looks, that doesn't look great to be honest. She's been carried off the pitch. Hopefully she'll be okay. Yeah, really not the, uh, the start that Great Britain will have wanted there, regardless of the score. Uh, they miss Lois at the International Tag Series. She was away on England touch duty at the Euro Touch Championships, uh, where she achieved great success there. Really important player in this side. has been involved in the coaching for it last year as well. Uh, so we, we hope that's just a, an initial knock and we'll see her back on the field as Pilgrim makes it up to... 10 metres inside the GB half. Yeah, Ireland come up nice and quick to make the tag. Again, GB are just looking to settle into the game. Not be too disrupted by the, in by the injury. Oh, nice block down by Alex uh, Mullen, the co coach, and he's tagged just before he gets the offload to Sue Howley. So Ireland again with field position options. On the right, really, Jim Bradshaw on the ball. He goes for the line, but he's actually well tagged by the defence. Ireland will now look to go wide, you would imagine. Alex on the ball again. 
No real option. They're looking to go left. They go through Emer Martin. And she goes in herself and she scores, I think. I think it's a try to Arden. Yes, a, a girl try, which makes it 3-0. Uh, Emer Martin, all that really stemming from a nice block down by player coach Alex Mullen. Uh, giving Ireland the field position in the first place and then some quick quick hands and quick ball from the rolls and Ireland have scored again to take a 3-0 lead. Yeah, the perfect start. Three points in just over three minutes for Ireland. And there were just no GB players expecting that kick to be blocked. No one was chasing back and Ireland capitalising really well as Mike Dowd fields that reset with his foot. And uh, Great Britain need to turn the momentum here very very quickly otherwise this game is going to get away from them inside the opening exchanges Farrell finds Pavlovic and another player returning to the side after missing the ITS and Dowd with a nice line it does gain Great Britain a few metres yeah it's a good tag by Kyle Mooney and GB up to kick yeah Farrell just making sure that the, uh, the kick was in the air as it went through the defensive line before taking its first bounce this time to ensure there was no chance it could be deflected uh, and give Ireland another advantage. Yeah, Ireland looked to break out now from their half with uh, Sandra Williams on the ball. She gets tagged. Uh, Hogan in quickly to take the roll and Hayes looks to move it again. He beats the first one. He's on a bit of a run. He goes wide to Hogan. Hogan's pretty quick. He opts for the one-handed behind the back offload. Perhaps not the wisest decision in the world, Will. Maybe not, but it suggests that this Ireland McSenior side is playing with some real freedom. They're certainly playing with pace, and Great Britain finding it hard to live with at the moment. All of the running coming from the green jerseys. And Farrell was looking to see whether he could uh, work the ball out to his teammates on this near side. No options were initially available, and so they do go back to the far side, and that's great sight there. It's seeing Lois Lau back on the field, and she looked to be running okay. So very, very important that for GB mix seniors. Yeah, Ireland are defending well, though GB haven't gotten much yards gained for several tags, and Ireland forced to turn over again. Yeah, GB look to be trying to find their feet a little bit more, whereas Ireland uh, certainly running onto this pitch, the more assured, the more confident, and it's shown so far on the scoreboard. That was unlucky. Yeah, another promising chance building after only a, you know, a couple of phases of possession. Ireland already threatening. And GB just hanging on at the moment. Lau to Dowd, Dalton, the... New Zealand native outside him. Tamsin Perry's tagging quite well in the middle. Making several clutch defensive tags. Ireland are up very quick, putting a lot of pressure on GB. Yeah, there's just no space for any of the, uh, the red and blue shirts to run into. And uh, Ireland just... In Looking like an incredibly well organised outfit. Oh. Although that's uh, whether you're in Australia or whether you're in Ireland or GB, <laughs> a hit a like that is not in. acceptable in tag. A and it, it, in it works effort. well for GB as oh, the break. Perhaps he should have fixed the fullback yeah. before making the offload. Will yeah, Dalton with so much pace and he did have time and space. But he went to Scarfo anyway. Mix seniors now work it back towards the far side and there with a little bit of space in midfield the switch play called by Kareem who does dart and jiggle around a few players and, and ends up going back a little bit as he's hounded by Mullen yeah, GB could be oh that's unfortunate and uh, there's your first commentary curse of the day commentators <laughs> curse of the day Barry as Woodman unable to hold on to that one it, fires off her shoulder and over what that pass at her at the, the top Irish of her head house. how did she not catch that oh wait yeah it wasn't a great pass a little bit too excited white line fever well that's what happened there yeah it's certainly gb's most promising opportunity of the game and and it was a really well worked one so they will be uh, disappointed not to come away with the points but it 
We'll hopefully give them the confidence that they can break through their Irish defence if they, uh, if they look to play in a similar positive mindset as they did there. Ireland already up to halfway and keeping the ball alive, avoiding the tag. Conway just running a little bit too flat and removing the option for Mullen. Yeah, hard enough to chase and oh, Conway's in for a score. Nice score. Bringing it up to... Uh, that is 5 nothing now to Ireland. Uh, so two box tries uh, and then another single uh, pointer. Yeah, it's a good start by Ireland. Mixed energy. B look to have settled into the game there. But Ireland countered almost straight away with a, with a box try, which wants you a real kick in the teeth for GB. Because they were actually starting to settle in the game there. Okay, so Ireland defending well again, up nice and quick to make their tags. GB looking to go wide. Some really tigerish defence by, by Ireland. Grania Johnson making a very nice tag there. GB up for the kick, attempt at 50-10, but the bounce doesn't bounce kindly. And it's going to be a tap to Ireland on the 10 metres, uh, starting at zero tag. Kick being the right decision, but unfortunately the bounce just didn't quite favour the kicker there. David Hayes opts to, opts to run it. Ireland looked to break out and GB looked to hold them, but Sandra Williams breaks the first one, second person tags her. So she looked to go, they look to go wide again now with Mikey Reedy on the ball to David Hayes, who offloads to Jimmy Bradshaw. Mick Senior, Elio Gorman is very quick. I suspect she may get it, indeed get in here, but she doesn't quite. She's tagged just as she grounds so it's not going to be a try and we'll be back for the tag I think we will have a bit of conferring between Alex Davis the touch judge and Matt Blades the referee uh, and the signal appears to be for a penalty and he's actually calling in uh, a couple of the GB players so Bear and Pavlovic going in to be spoken to by Blades as he explains his decision and looks as though he is giving the sin bin for contact against Pavlovic. So Pavlovic, the long run to do from his own try line. He has to stand behind the bonus box at the Irish end. And Ireland, with a 5 nothing lead, now find themselves with a one-player advantage as well. Still in the first half and a lovely Ooh. dart there. And I think that's a try, yes, try really. for Ireland. He does get the one-point try, so... Mike Greedy with the try there, and that makes it 6-0 uh, to Ireland. Yeah, already the advantage telling for Ireland. They were in the ascendancy anyway. The last thing they needed from a GB point of view was an additional player uh, advantage. And a quarter of the way through this match, we are seeing Ireland a long way ahead. 6-0 the score line now as Ireland will look to thump this ball downfield. Goes into touch. So GB will bring the ball 10 metres in. And in the hands of Jill Detoit, they will begin, will look to begin their comeback. A nice bit of interplay there and all the way over to the opposite touch line. And it's Scarfo who works her way up to the 10 metre line. There's Farrell in at dummy half. Through the hands quickly to Lau. Back to Karim, the ball is still alive. Over to Detroit. Picknick, who was involved twice in the last phase. Tag was made on Detroit. So they come back for that one, and Loud just finding Karim, who nearly knocks it on, but hits it backwards to that's save the it. Of mine, yeah, to knock it back. Yeah, that's, that's good play there. And Farrell finds the gap. Two tags remaining in this set for Great Britain as Pilgrim loses control of the ball just as GB were in a promising position. Yeah, pass was slightly low and also I think she was thinking about what she was going to do with the ball before she actually got the ball, unfortunately. 
It's a pity because GB had a bit of momentum and field position. They really did, and they need every point they can get now to narrow this deficit and get themselves back into this game. It's the miss pass Bradshaw works fairly kick. well, and the tag was made simultaneously, so as soon as he gathered it, it was a tag. And a bit of time taken as Ireland will look for the kick. Down towards Scarfo's corner. And a judge to have been played at. Ireland will take over again. Yeah, Ireland again with nice field position. And six tags. Hayes just giving the ball to Egan to roll. And Hayes looks for the gap himself, but Pilgrim managing to make the tag. Sue Howley on the ball, she looks to break in, but it's a nice tag. Lots of communication on the Irish side. They look to go, Cahill Mooney looks to go himself, and he does indeed score. It's a good try for Ireland. Ireland stretched her lead again, 7-0. Yeah, lovely twist of the hips there by Mooney is what got him through the defensive line and puts Ireland into a 7-0 lead now. Yeah, GB very much rocked well at this point, I would say. They are yeah, still with the player in the bin, Pavlovic, waiting for his opportunity to return to the fray. In these full 40-minute international matches, that sin bin feels like it lasts for an incredibly long time as we see Billy Lyons now moving forward with the ball in hand for the first time in this game. Worked over to Sarah Jackson, back to Farrell with a nice little looping run. Ireland are up nice and quick to make the, make the tags again though. Oh, nice, nice bit of defence, but unfortunately it's a penalty. Yeah, penalty for offside, so Jackson waiting with ball in hand to make the tag and make the tap, sorry. Tagged on halfway. Sims, Dowd outsider. Jones picks it up from dummy half, finds Farrell, back to Jones, looking to work it to the left and does free the hands and it is over now, two Sims sprinting down the left wing but Ireland equal to everything that GB are throwing at them so far, Jackson with the dart from dummy half doesn't gain too much ground, Jones she looked to wind up the big pass off her left hand, ends up dropping the ball and Ireland let off the hook again. Yeah, I think the ball the ball is probably a little bit slippy because the ground's still a bit wet. So hard when you go to do that wind-up pass. Yeah, there's brand new balls uh, with plenty of grip on them, but even that can't compete with a, a dewy Yorkshire morning. Good hands there from Ireland. A, a tricky pass thrown at the feet of Michael Ridley. Manages to keep possession. Probing again. GB coming up and Ireland off the kick again. Michael Reed chases and he makes the tag. Nice bit of exit play by Ireland there. Yeah, that chase so important. You were talking about it earlier, Barry. Uh, I think you would have been happy if you were on uh, on Reed, Reedy's team there and you'd seen him put in the kick and immediately follow it up like that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that was to, to a T. Ireland are putting GB under a lot of pressure. They have a few metres for four tags now. Yeah, it's just relentless defence. As we go on to fifth and final already, and Bear does manage to get the kick through, but controlled well by Conway with his feet, and Bear, who chased his own kick, then misses the tag. Dalton, he gets there in the end himself uh, in his distinctive backwards white baseball cap. As Ireland again bursting forwards with pace. That pass doesn't go to hand though. Even Martin tidies it up, she gets it outside. A rare bit of scrappy play from Ireland, but they still gain 10 metres off, off it. Such is the momentum that they have at the moment. Reedy again with the kick. This one though is going to go long on over the trial line. So Great Britain left off, let off the hook and will have a tap 10 metres out from their trial line. Lau calling for the ball. Incredibly experienced head to have in the side. And she, uh, along with 
Everyone on this uh, GB Mix Seniors team will be frustrated with the start that they've made and the position they find themselves in. They are, of course, finally back up to the full complement of eight players. Yeah, Arden only scored two points in the same period, in fairness. Yeah. Yeah, we saw we, we have seen Great Britain get a bit more of a foothold in this match than they initially had in the early stages, but they just looked a little bit shell shocked by the way Ireland had come at them in those first three minutes. Yeah, it was like four points in the first two or first three or four minutes. Just tough going. Just took G B a while to settle. They've sort of settled now. Conway it's thought he was even. away there, but the tag had been made on Mooney. The most recent man to cross for Ireland in this contest. Yeah, Mooney played uh, mixed open in uh, the 2015 World Cup. Uh, took a break in 2018 and he's been back in the mixed senior team since then. So Scarfo was briefly unsure about whether she could uh, play the ball, having gone behind her own child line. She is allowed Great to do tag that. By David Hayes. So <laughs> as uh, Hayes wants to, to make sure <laughs> that he camera. is seen on camera. Unfortunately for him, I think it was uh, he's probably at the wrong camera. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but still, we, we enjoy uh, a little bit of style like that. As Pilgrim is... That's the first time Dave again. Hayes and style is in the same sentence, I would say, Will. <laughs> no comment from me. You, uh, you know him, better. You know him better than I do. Du to, Dublin to man, David like Hayes. Oh, no, wait. Sorry, it's Cork, actually. Uh, GB up for the exit. Ema Martin controls it with her foot. And we're going to have tag, and that's the last play. It's half time. So a half that has gone all in Ireland's favour so far. Seven points the margin at half time, and GB still yet to cross the whitewash. Uh, it's there's not really too much to dissect in, 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 in this first half, really, Barry. It's it been very good attack by Ireland with an electric start that left uh, Great Britain scrambling. And then they backed that up as the rest of the half has continued with really solid defence. The number of times that you were mentioning how fast they were up in the line, it just left Great Britain with no opportunity to score. Yeah, no, I, I think that's right. A really fast start by Ireland with uh, the first couple of scores. Gave them that bit of momentum, and you'd have to say as well, the injury disruption probably distracted the GB players a little bit at the start. Took them a while to settle. By the time they settled, there was four or five points in it, and Ireland were in real control with Martin and David Hayes crossing at the start. Like, and it just gave Ireland such momentum, and then like Ireland's line speed just meant that GB can't really get anywhere. Like, they've now settled into the game, and it's much more even with. Ireland only getting a couple of points but just GB cannot get anywhere because Ireland are just up so fast that they're denying them time and space to even think let alone try to move the ball left to right really wide and make some breaks GB really need the first score of the second half where this game is in danger of getting away from them unfortunately yeah it certainly has been uh, doing its best to run away from GB so far uh, so I would completely agree, Barry. They need to need to hit their straps in this second half and, and get themselves back into it sooner rather than later. Uh, we were mentioning David Hayes at the, the end there. He uh, claims to be the Lord Mayor of Cork Tag. Uh, are we, what do we think about that, Barry? You would know better than, than me. Uh, Dave is probably one of the most important people in Cork Tag, or at least that's what he would like you to think. Um, he runs a team in Cork called the Spartans who pretty much dominated for the last number of years Cork Tag and he's heavily involved in the Cork region Cork um, ladies actually won regionals this year for the, fir for the first time it's our version of, of nationals Cork ladies have been in the final a few times and it's relative to playing number size would be smaller than Limerick and a lot smaller than Dublin, so to win a, a regional title is pretty impressive, and that's testament to a lot of the work that Dave's done over the last few years. And he's probably one of the uh, most enthusiastic players we have. Um, I still remember at the uh, 2018 World Cup, his team were uh, playing Lebanon in the third and fourth place playoff, and the guys were shattered, having just lost to GB in uh, overtime in the semi final in men's 30s and David picked them up off the floor and got them to put in a performance. Uh, they did lose but only by a point 
um, which was some achievement because they were absolutely shattered sitting on the sideline just before and he got them up to the pitch of the game straight away so yeah he uh, he's a lot of things like but he's he's a, he's a really good guy and we're, we're lucky to have him well, I mean, that sort of enthusiasm and tempo that he obviously injected into the men's 30s in, in that World Cup match, we've certainly seen him bring to uh, the performance of the mixed seniors on the pitch here so far, who uh, certainly look to be playing with more freedom and enthusiasm than their GB counterparts thus far. Uh, you'll notice uh, on the Great Britain shirts uh, through the day and on the banners that we have around the pitch and some of the graphics on screen, the logo of Oakland. Oakland has joined up with Great Britain Tag Rugby this year as their associate partner all the way through to the World Cup. Uh, Great Britain is very pleased to have them on board with the programme. And at uh, 10 to 1, we will actually be hearing from a couple of members of Oakland. Uh, we've got Josh and Grant who've joined us. They've got the train up from London this morning to, to watch some tag. And they'll be coming uh, to, to have a little chat with us to tell us a bit about... Uh, the company and about why they were co so keen to partner with Great Britain Tag Rugby. So we'll look forward to bringing you that after the Women's Seniors game, which is the next one up on our live stream pitch two today. Uh, for now, though, our attention returns to this mixed seniors contest. Great Britain, nothing on the scoreboard so far. Ireland, seven points already. Yeah, GB need the first score of the second half, no doubt about that, and not to not to concede. It's a good start with the kick, uh, bouncing out, meaning Ireland have to drop out to GB. GB will have the opportunity to attack. Yeah, because of uh, Ireland kicking off in the first half and then scoring all the tries, you didn't actually see a GB restart in uh, the first 20 minutes. And so we didn't get to see one of those J-Bear trademarks where he boots it all the way down. It bounces once before the try line and then over to go dead and require the drop kick restart from the try line, which has ended up working well for GB as Bear caught that kick, ran it into the Irish half. And now GB, a couple of tags down, have the opportunity to attack in Irish territory. Karim with nothing on really, no options, and the Irish defence pushing up behind him. Uh, Lost a bit of ground, but Jones regains it on the next tag. Farrell and Jackson with lovely fast hands to one another. And this is Jackson Dalton down the left wing for Great Britain. The diving effort for the line, but he was tagged. And on fifth and final now, GB. One more opportunity to score first in this second half and get themselves finally onto the board. But it's not going to happen when the Irish defence is up that fast and that competently. It's actually Ireland ball, GB not realising it's a turnover in time. Tag six, ooh, contact against GB. And Ireland look to break out with Bradshaw on the ball. He gets tagged. It's good defence by GB so far. Oh, and it's handling error by uh, Sandra Williams giving field position to GB, and GB have started the second half like they would have wanted. They have, but they still need to get themselves on the board. So that will be the aim of the next five tags that they've got here. Jones can't get around the inside of her defender. Farrell and Jackson once again linking I up, and Dalton dives again and this time it is awarded Jackson Dalton from Wellington New Zealand the former rugby league player who started to play tag due to too many injuries uh, he is the man that goes over finally for Great Britain mix seniors in this one uh, and they are finally on the board and narrowing the deficit to six points so we did say, Barry, they needed to score first. They've done that. That's job, yeah, job one, done. Job two, score again. And Bear. Don't concede. Mike Greedy on the ball now. Again, he played in the 2015 World Cup. Took a break in 2018. He's back again now to have another go. Sue Howley, who plays on our women's 35s team as well as uh, Mick Senior. 
And David Hayes, the aforementioned David Hayes looks to break back to Sinead Egan and Dara Conway. Is well tagged. He doesn't yeah. look that happy about it, but it's a good tag in fairness. Mike really apps to go wide to Hogan. Hogan outside. Oh, and it's contact given against Arden there. A little bit unfortunate with the momentum taking uh, Granny Johnson into into the into into the GB player. Yeah, she'd have to step past the first defender, which uh, left her with nowhere to go but into the face of Ben Picnic. But that uh, doesn't mean it's not a penalty against Ireland. And so GB now with what I was about to describe as a promising attack. Luckily for them, the tag made before the ball was lost forward, so they. Do keep possession. Lau to the left of the ruck and nowhere to go. So back to Bear and Woodman. Picknick. And he threw and, and, and that will be another point. So I did say job two was score again. They've achieved that one. 7-2 yeah, now a bit of momentum on the here board. Now. Ireland a little bit rocked back on their heels. Not quite as quick either in defence. Perhaps thinking they had the game wrapped up with at halftime. I mean, I'm sure with the experience in this Ireland side, they, they wouldn't have thought that. They would have wanted to come out and just add to the lead that they had. Uh, but it's down now to five points. Still a fairly sizable one. Oh, that's um, out. That's out on the fall, though. So that's going to be a tap kick margins halfway. There. So tap on halfway for Ireland. Ten metres of clear space in front of them. Yeah, Ireland and it just is need Hayes. to keep this now for the six. To put GB under a little bit of pressure again. The yeah. tag on Ema Martin before she makes the offload to Conway. Conway looks to go back inside to Mikey Reed. He, he opts to go for David Hayes. David Hayes looks to break. I think it's going to be a penalty for contact on the foot. David yeah. looks like he's carrying his leg a little bit. Hopefully he's okay. He opts to sub off. I'm sure he'll be fine. He's the most positive person I know, regardless of how injured he gets. He believes in, in positive mental attitudes, Will. It's the opposite to you, isn't it, Baron? Uh, are you trying to say I'm negative? Just that you, you might enjoy a grumble every now and then. I don't grumble, Will. Besides, when I'm giving out, it's because you, you've done something that warrants me giving out. I never said it was me that you were giving out to. <laughs> Fair, but it probably was you. And it was definitely your fault. As player coach Alex uh, Mullen must to break through. Ireland putting GB under a bit of pressure now, having settled potentially after half time. Oh, Ireland got lucky there as a tag before the offload was made. GB would have been away otherwise. Emer Martin opts to take the kick. Yeah, penalty though, given against GB there for descent. Farrell did not agree with the decision of Blades and made sure to tell him that. Blades then gave the penalty. GB losing another 10 metres and Ireland with the opportunity now to restore the lead that they previously had. Yeah, Ireland went close there. Sue goes outside to Alex. Alex looks to go for the line but doesn't quite make it. He's tagged just before. Elio Gorman goes back to Sue Howley. Howley looks to have a go, but she's tagged as well by GB just up on the line. Ireland really probing now. Conway looking to get through. Such a dangerous runner, Conway, but these GB players are uh, well used oh, to his style of play. Uh, he's spent years uh, playing around the, the various tag circuits of London. Uh, so he wasn't able to cross, and it is GB now that take over. Just about 10 metres out from their own line. And Billy Lyons sadly missed the, the B&I last year due to injury. So good to see him in this kit uh, and this famous old tournament. As Scarfo receives the ball on the far touchline and involved again. Barrow to Jones. Grim with a gap in front of him and he's straight through it. Can he twist around the final defender? No, he couldn't it? it was Conway that was there and the diving tag working well for Ireland to save what would have been a certain try for Great Britain Farrell to oh, Dalton who scored GB's first oh, but good another tag by good tag Reedy. 
GB making nice, nice use of that little wraparound wheel. It's working quite well. Yeah, they've used it a number of times and certainly gaining meters each time it is employed as Farrell twists Into those hips and aims for the box. Ooh. I think he's got it. Blades checking with both touch judges. It is awarded the two pointer. So GB, three tries in a row that they scored now unanswered as we started this second half. Three tries worth four points. And the margin now just three uh, yeah. with the comeback certainly on. So a completely different picture to the one that we had just eight and a half minutes ago when it was 7-0 Ireland and GB hadn't really fired a shot yet. They certainly have now. Yeah, definitely the quintessential game of two halves, Will. Second half going pretty much all GB's way. Ireland with just one little piece of uh, piece of uh, field position, and that's it. It's mostly GB, and GB got a turnover here now from a handling error. So again, another chance to go. Yeah, it's Bear. What's it to Jackson? Dowd with the switch. There, uh, will he go for the miss? No, he goes for the uh, the hard line that Pavlovic was running in. Jackson and Scarfo on that far touch line. Ireland equal to it so far. Picnic calling for it on the near one. The captain wants ball in hand. Thinks he can beat his opposite number. Yeah, Dowd space and with the toy. Fifth and the final. For the pass there. I think you had a two on one, Will. You might have been in. Mm. Not sure I disagree with you there. A nice decoy line. And Scarpo. Right. That's right, yeah. And that's two more points. 7-6. Seven, six. Seven, Game on. 6 indeed. It is certainly, Barry, a one-point margin. And who would have imagined that just 10 minutes into this second half after the, uh, the opening 20 minutes that we saw yeah. from Ireland? Did not look like that, but you have to hand it to GB. They've absolutely taken momentum back. And they are now definitely on top. Absolute brilliant character. Uh, absolutely brilliant character shown by these GB players. They are on top with the momentum, but they are not yet on top of the scoreboard. The one-point lead still remains for Ireland. Yet to score in the second half after an electric start. That just ball just held on to. Oh, and again. Forward pass. It was forward. Yeah. Blades making sure the players are aware and so in a not too dissimilar position to the last knock on that uh, uh, GB eventually scored from. Ireland make another error, compounded then by a contact penalty. Six more tags for GB, just 30 metres out. And Dalton not able to find a gap, so goes for the settling tag. Farrell and Lau in midfield and Back to Farrell now. Kareem, we did see a wonderful break from him around halfway earlier, just not able to go through there, because that would have been another try. Lyons in front of the box is tagged well by Perry. That's a calm bit of defense from Egan, but actually it's moved slightly further in field to where the previous tag had been made. Farrell finding the options are running out either side of him and they have one last chance in this set to score. They were on their final tag when Scarfo went over last time. They won't be so lucky this time. Ireland do hold out and that will give Ireland some confidence after what had been a relentless sea of scores against them. Yeah, you feel Ireland just need to hold the ball for six and then exit. Because they haven't managed really to hold on to the ball by that one little segment up on the GB line uh, a couple of minutes ago. That's exactly the problems that were facing GB in the first half yeah, and now facing Ireland. It's a mirror image, except the other way around. Like it's the, that's it's what a mirror image yeah, is, Barry. Sorry, that's what I meant to say. <laughs> yeah, like, geez, GB have really taken back control of the game, but yeah, Ireland just need to hold it for the six and then exit. That's what they need to do now. And the kick coming in and just sitting up on this wet grass. It's not going to go near the touchline. Lions oh, calmly nice fields chase. it. Yeah, good. 
Uh, good chase again by Ridley. Woodman attempting to twist round Perry, unable to, to gain too much ground. That's Perry involved again defensively. Another good tag by Perry. Woodman with the half break. Ridley there to close it down for Ireland. Farrell, quick hands from GB all the way over good to Pavlovic on the far touchline. On the far side. I think uh, Hogan may have stepped up for the intercept. They didn't get it, so Ireland got a bit lucky there. Farrell with the kick, and that is played at. Will it just bounce up? No, That's it's unlucky, not. so it's going to it's gonna be a dropout because Ireland played that ball. Yep. So they'll be deemed to have taken it behind their line. So GB will set themselves for an aerial catch and another opportunity to run at this Irish line with six minutes remaining. So it's a big boot, gets over halfway. Good catch by Karim. And into the Irish half straight away. Picnic darts himself from dummy half and does really well. Yeah, good yards. Lots of space that opened up for him. And Lau looks to do the same, just running the other side of the ruck and nearly finding Karim. Slightly caught in two minds, Karim with calls coming at him from both sides so it's going to be penalty for not sure what that was for did you see what that was for maybe crossing or head of the kicker possibly not yeah. sure Ireland with the ball now just need to keep it for six settle down nice little kick exit play but I think it's a turnover for four pass for penalty for contact, the signal from Blades there oh, okay. as Jackson takes it quickly and Ireland backpedalling and I would say perhaps not 10 but uh, play is allowed to continue anyway as Scarfo darts round the outside. Jackson and Farrell, that familiar partnership in the midfield. It's going to be turnover. Yeah, yeah contact straight again. into the defender there and just taking a moment to regather his feet. Mullen, he will be aware of a wily player of his experience that there isn't much time left on the clock and there isn't much of a lead for Ireland to protect here so they do need to take all the advantage they possibly can. Yeah you feel Ireland might need another score will to win the game. They certainly will want one to feel more comfortable. Yeah which is amazing considering the gap at half time. I mean we all wanted to see a close contest as Conway uh, is the adjudicated to be the perpetrator of the contact there but uh, did his best with his footballing skills to uh, suggest that he was actually the real victim uh, nothing uh, nothing that blades was going to be convinced by no he needs better acting than that but... oh TV nearly in again, but good tag by that by Dara. Yeah, Conway suddenly uh, looking uninjured as he makes that tag on Dow to save the try and bear with the dive. He gets another one. See how he got him first though. So no try, but it's close. Way for ten margin now. Anyone's game really. It really is. Detroit and the contact there is given against GB. against GB. The sniff of the gap being closed, but. Blade saying there was never really a gap for Detroit to run through. Ireland, three minutes on the clock, ball in hand, one point lead. We'll look to work the ball into safer territory for them. And the last time they had that opportunity, they then gave away the contact penalty through this man, Dara Conway. No such issues this time. And the gap in front of Conway. And he's breaking through. This could be the try that wins it for Ireland. Missed by Scarfo. Dowd scrambling back. The pass given. And oh, he's saying tag first just yeah. before a ball. Lucky for GB because that would have been game over. Yeah, it would have been a lovely try for Grania Johnson who ran a strong supporting line on Conway's shoulder the whole way up the field. But Ireland still now with the opportunity to ice this game. And the oh, ball through everybody's hands. It just uh, went through touch. their hands there. You feel if it had been caught, potentially would have been a try. GB with the chance to break out now and Ireland will be looking to force the turnover. 
Yeah, Great Britain with two minutes to level this one up or potentially even take the lead and showing some lovely spinning feet there. Escaping the clutches of the Irish defence. Picnic on oh, the touchline now. He's in touch. And this uh, no a real let this. off for Ireland. Yeah. So bringing the ball in 10 metres. And again, as you say, Ireland won't mind that uh, extra little bit of time taken at the roll ball there. Conway, he's looked dangerous the last few minutes and he will score. That makes it Ireland 8, Great Britain 6. And amazingly, it's taken uh, 18 minutes, 40 seconds. But finally, Ireland, after scoring seven points in the first half, have their first score of the second. Yeah, it's, pretty, it's a pretty clutch score too. Makes it 8-6. May well be decisive in this one. Could well be. Ireland just need to force a turnover here and then they've won the game. GB look to break out. Ireland look to close them down. So, 40 seconds to play. The length of the field to go pretty much for GB and four tags left in the set. The scoreboard, the clock and the pitch all in Ireland's favour at the moment. And now the possession as well as that ball was kicked away and into touch Pavlovic is there at the mark for GB in Ireland get the ball back on the field just seconds remaining in this one for what will be a very good win for Ireland one where they really showed everything they could do in the first half Great Britain put up a great account of themselves to come back with six points scored in the second but ultimately Ireland just had too much in this opening game of the mixed seniors category at the British and Irish Cup. So now a first result counting towards the overall trophy goes the way of Ireland. This category, as we mentioned at the top of the match, was won uh, 3 nothing by Ireland in 2021. Great Britain had won it 2 nothing in 2019. So it's seesawed either way, uh, but currently advantage is to Ireland and uh, just as with the last game won by Ireland we will look to get you some interviews with Irish players uh, and with Barry Keary conducting them uh, once the players have finished with the handshakes yeah Ireland will be happy to get the win there having been 7-0 up at half time to tough it out and get the extra score at the end there to win 8-6 take a 1-0 lead in the category Ireland will be happy enough with that uh, some work to do, but like the first half will be where they'll focus. Lots of positives there, plenty of good line speed, lots of great scores, well worked tries, and good to see people settling in with a few new faces in the mixed senior team. They'll be happy with the first game, and more work to do now in uh, in, in in the latter games today and tomorrow. So we're just going to do anthems now for the next round and then do, then do interviews.
Okay, so next up it's uh, GB Women's Senior versus Ireland Women's Senior. Uh, this category being a draw in the last BNI last year. Uh, with one, e one win each and a draw. And um, GB having won uh, the year before, or sorry, two years before. I always forget that we missed the year out there due to 
due to COVID. Um, GB winning comprehensively 3 0 in London uh, in 2019. And uh, GB also winning the match between the teams in the International Tag Series with both uh, GB teams making the final in the women's section. Uh, so this should be this should be a close game. Both of these teams know each other very well. With several people having played each other over a number of years together. Um, but uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how this goes now. So both of these teams will be hoping to do well at the at the World Cup. So women senior are coached by uh, Valerie Power, his player coach, and uh, Jack Leahy, who runs a number of uh, tag teams in the Dublin League, and who also, for his sins, is the operations manager for the ITRA in Ireland. He's a person who quintessentially lives and breeds tag. Um, number of players playing for women senior for the first time with uh, ones to watch out for including uh, newer players including Ellen O'Regan and Rachel Furlong uh, who would have played Open before Katie O'Sullivan um, and uh, Captain and Vice Captain Captain being Valerie Power Vice Captain being Rachel Furlong and Amy Cotter uh, both Rachel and Amy being from uh, Cork So it'll be interesting to see how this goes. Both teams warm up. Um, and look to uh, look to get ready to hit the ground running in this match. Will, any predictions for this game? Uh, I think Great Britain will be going into it confident after their performances, uh, as you mentioned, in the, uh, in the B&I in 2019. I know that's going back a little way now, but also their, their performances across the women's program uh, at, uh, at the International Tag Series just a month ago. It was fantastically encouraging from a GB point of view to see the women's open and women's senior side lock out that final. And each team took a win off one another. And around Robin, it was women's seniors that came out on top in that final. It was women's open that, that were the winners. Uh, that was a tournament where uh, Great Britain women's seniors were without their head coach, Mark Ruffsedge. He is back this weekend in the tracksuit uh, after having to focus on his Scotland men's wheelchair rugby side uh, as they look towards the Rugby League World Cup uh, towards the back end of this year. He's back and it is a strong women senior side that has been picked obviously the familiar names that we uh, we saw and called a lot of at the international tag series Geertsen and Litcher on the wings and Bedford and Robbins bossing things more towards the middle uh, Lindsay always uh, a, a real workhorse in attack and defense for the side just so tireless in the efforts that she makes uh, we also saw Kirsty Clark assistant coach for this side uh, really stepping up to the plate in the absence of Mark Ruffsage to, uh, to support with Ant Merritt uh, taking over there. The big news on the team sheet for women seniors is the return of M Stone. She's been involved in Great Britain Tag Rugby pretty much since the very beginning. She's been to multiple World Cups, uh, played in multiple different teams within the, the programme. Uh, an incredibly dangerous player who, when women's seniors had their live stream game at the British and Irish Cup last year. We saw score a, a bunch of tries in uh, what was, a, I believe, a 10-1 win in the end uh, to tie up that category. She missed the ITS because she got herself injured playing rugby sevens, I believe it was, earlier this year. She's back in a GB tag jersey, though, number five for women's seniors. And we will look to see her in the rest of this strong outfit. Uh, really assert themselves in game one of their category here at the British and Irish Cup in West Park, Leeds RFUC. Yeah, M Stone is the one person I'm glad I don't have to play tag against Will. 
I think if I think if I played against her, I'd have nightmares. She might be the one person at this point before kickoff that you don't want to play against. But I, I would like to think, Barry, by the end of this game, uh, you will have seen that uh, across the eight on the park, in fact, across the 20 in the squad, that actually you wouldn't want to be playing tag against any of them. I think that's probably fair. I think that's probably fair. That's probably why I'm retired from playing tag, Will. So here we go. It'll be interesting to see how this game goes. Yeah, so we're just waiting until the hour comes up and the, the hooter goes off to signal to the referees that we can get this game underway. The third game of seven that we are bringing you today on our live stream pitch at the British and Irish Cup. And the first time that we are seeing one of the all-female outfits on the field. And it's Ireland that starts with hand on ball, uh, working their way up to... The halfway line, well. Thanks, Dave. Barry Keery's fans, you may have heard in the distance there, or fans may maybe pluralising that was uh, unnecessary. <laughs> uh, <so laughs> nice kick through by Clara Cunningham yeah. as she looks to break, but uh, it's well fielded by the GB fullback. Yeah, Gateson did a good job there to field that one and it's Hampton that then takes it on vice captain Bedford at dummy half finds Francis Wehrwine uh, of course uh, we've mentioned before he's come over from America from other codes of rugby where she's uh, been particularly prolific to add her skills to the women's tag program at GB level Kirsty Clark finds M Stone her first touch of the ball in a GB jersey since 2021 she gains a few metres, not quite over the try line yet, but uh, I would imagine we will see that sooner rather than later. The kick down towards the Irish line and good avoidance of the first defender. Uh, again, uh, another team sheet. We've got two number fives down here, Barry. Is that Ima Romani or Tristan? That's Tristan. Yeah, we have a couple of people who... I've had to double up on jersey numbers, unfortunately, due to, due to injuries and unavailability. For for this trip to Leeds, it's my first time in Leeds, Will. I'm looking forward to finding out what Leeds has to offer. Any recommendations? Uh, well, I think uh, anyone in Yorkshire will tell you that you've come to the best part of the United Kingdom. Uh, up in what uh, they often refer to as God's own country. Leeds is itself a historic sporting city. Great successes in days gone by in football and rugby league uh, and also rugby union. Uh, an opportunity for us to bring top level tag rugby here for the first ever time. Back by GB there. Um, Ireland turn it over and Ireland get a, a chance to move the ball now through uh, Claire Tierney who's on the ball. She's tagged out. Ima Manny's looking at her options. She offs to go outside to Rachel Joy. It looks to use Carmel Egan. Beats the first tagger but second defender gets her. And uh, again Ima Mahoney on the ball. She does a nice offload to Claire Tierney who breaks the line but she's tagged by the next defender. Um, and Holly Jenkinson on the ball now and it's back to Imra Mahoney again who goes to Neve Kennedy but she's well tagged Ireland with good field position with GB defending quite well and a little kick in there on the final tag but well fielded by GB and they will look to come away through Bedford and Mason Bertrand but it's knocked on and that will be Irish possession I don't think so no. I think knock on by Ireland first I think so Try to intercept the pass and just knock the ball on. Yeah, very lucky that for GB. Otherwise, it would have been an incredibly promising position uh, for Ireland. Yes. Good tag. Tag made there. Angela Sheehan. Yeah. 
So Great Britain with the penalty here. Maz Botel, number 13. Now she didn't play at the ITS, so she'll be very keen to assert herself here back in a GB jersey. And a nice spin from Holly Johnston. It's a good tag, though, by um, Rachel Joy, who used to play for GB, well, for a couple of years. She did indeed. She was a, a, a very experienced, very able player over in GB before she and her partner, Adric Mason, moved over to Ireland and now lending her abilities to to our, our friends and rivals. Are we friends? Well, I mean, I wasn't speaking personally. I meant more the, the two, oh, you meant the two, two countries, oh, countries okay. of I Great Britain you. and Ireland. Uh, Sorry, I got but, confused um, there for a second. Yeah, I'm not sure. Am I on your Christmas card list? Oh, absolutely. Well. Oh, thank you. Uh, as we see Great Britain working this left-hand side, quick hands from Hensel to Lindsay to Lichert, who uh, it was her birthday at the ITS oh, as Hensel breaks tag. through. Good tag by yeah. the fullback, though. Nice cover. And Kennedy marks it. Now the fullback to get back into position. Clark oh, with a twisting, good, turning good break. Good tag, though. Ireland will look to defend now. Hensel just clinging on. She finds Lindsay. Lindsay over to Barton on the left wing. Another player returning, having missed the ITS. But Ireland hold out and will have possession now. Got the chance to come back out again. Oh, good hands there by Ireland. Pass was possibly a little dicey. Might have been, might have been better off taking the tag. Laura O'Mahony on the ball now as she looks to break the line, but it's good defence by a GB, and the two teams are very evenly matched, it has to be said. Yet yeah, still yet to see oh, our opening break. score in this one, but a lovely break from Ireland could lead to it. The tag made in the end by Gateson tracking back. That's a good break by Eleanor Regan there from Cork, one of the people who won regionals this year. And all gets a little bit scrappy there. I'm fairly certain uh, Cunningham need that ball forwards rather than kicking it, which is why Great Britain do take over in possession here. And it's Hensel who saw the encouraging break in the last phase of play for GB. On the ball first. And now Litcher, as I was saying, it's her birthday at the ITS. And her teammates were very keen to make sure she got a shout out about that on the day. Uh, we ended up calling her name a lot as she scored a number of tries on that show pitch at the ITS uh, as the ball attempted to be worked over to M Stone but goes out to play in Ireland just inside the GB half now have their own set of six as yeah. we look to get our first try in this one Cody Jenkinson on the ball, she beats the first one second defender gets her Laura Manny in nice and quick to take the row but she's tagged before she can get the ball away. So it's back to Holly again. Looking to involve Neve Kennedy and uh, Emma Jordan on the outside. It's a good tag in the corner by GB. Again, both teams very evenly matched, running through the six tags, getting up to the line, but not penetrating. Holly opts for the kick, but unfortunately it goes too high, so that'll be a turnover and it'll be GB ball. Yeah, a little bit of a chip kick there from Jenkinson. And fortunately for her, it's the referee's shoulder height that matters rather than hers. I think hers is a little bit higher than that of Jason Baker, who is in charge in yellow in the middle for this one. Geertsen, good pace on the ball. Johnson already there at dummy half as the line is set for GB. Hunter decides to go herself. O'Neill, out to Bedford. Hampton, round the defender. But good tracking back inside to Trish, by, by Trish Dunn. Dunn. And these gaps, as soon as they appear for GB, they're closed down as Christine Arthurs managed to do so again there. And that ball spilt forwards by GB uh, after the tag was made. The sixth tag it was. So Ireland. Again, take over and yet another phase of play with no score. Yeah, 
both teams very evenly matched clearly. No score and we're nearly 10 minutes in. Evenly matched is what we like to see when these uh, sides are playing five tests against one another over the weekend. A lovely dart there. By Claire Mullen. She goes inside to Claire Cunningham. It's good defence by JB. Amor's looking for options. She's not getting them. She goes herself. Oh, unfortunately. It's a knock on there by Claire Mullen. Perhaps might have been better off letting the ball come out. Or they need to force a turn over here now with a bit of field position. Haven't done really well to get up here. Good yeah, tag that's by uh, part of the reason I think we we still yet to see the score is both sides always starting from so deep uh, that uh, they do go through their tags just as they get into into the red zone and uh, have the opportunity to score. And again, this is the case here as Hampton still 10 metres inside the GB half was tagged and Hunter then kicks on the next tag, chased back by Cunningham and fielded well, but Johnston right up there. Good kick chase as a supporting player there. Yeah, nice exit play by GB there. Recognise that they were running down the tags, so off at the kick. And it's pretty close again, Claire Cunningham nearly breaks the line, but she's just caught. Emer Mahoney on the ball, she goes outside to Rachel Joy. Has the option of Rachel Furlong outside, but doesn't use her. Rachel Furlong goes back inside to Emer. Emer opts for the kick. Unfortunately, it's straight at the fullback. He'll get the chance to counter. Ireland will need to make the tag here. They've come up nice and quick. They surround the fullback and they make the tag. Oh, and Ireland draw the penalty. And uh, Lydia Lini looks to have a go. Ireland have time and space now. It'll be interesting to see what they do. They have to go to Neve Kennedy. Neve Kennedy goes for the line, but she's tagged. Ireland, nice bit of depth. Couple of options. It'll be interesting to see what they do here. Claire Cunningham on the ball. She has to go back inside. But tag is made. So again, Ireland, Ireland probing. GB holding strong. Making yes. their tags. This is the closest Ireland have been. GB really need to hold on. Oh, Ireland looked to go wide. Unfortunately, the ball's not to hand. So it's well tidied up, but it's last tag. I just feel Ireland aren't going to get in here. No, not with tags like that from Mason Bertrand. They're not. It was a confident effort at a critical moment in this game as Bedford nearly breaks away from Jordan. Good tag. Botel, but just didn't have the time or the space to get the ball away. Here's Clark. Good defence by Amir Mahoney in the centre and Ireland up nice and quick, putting a little bit of pressure on GB. Enzo with GB the step and the kick, kick. But Claire Cunningham's there to deal with it, so she gets the counter. She beats the first one, she beats the second, she opts for the offload. She's Tags having a made. very strong game so far, Cunningham, and she will take the ball up at first receiver here. Ireland yeah. definitely seems to have gained a little bit of confidence from that last set that got, saw them get so close to the British line. They kept the ball inside the GB half in their defensive set. Passes yeah, like that won't right help, but they still find oh, themselves in a promising the position. It's well tidied up by Ireland, considering. No option. Uh, I'll have to go back inside. Yeah, Laura Manny's there. She points where she wants the runner to go. But unfortunately, she's tagged before she can make the offload. It's back into Cunningham again. He opts the kick this time. And unfortunately, I think the kick may have bounced before the line did it. Or sorry, over the line. So no try. Yeah, looks to be what they're discussing. And Baker is ruling out the try. Yeah. Close. Uh, the closest either team has got so far, Barry. Yeah. It's a very, very tight game. Two very neat, very evenly matched teams. 
Interesting. He touch edge calling GB over to towards the sideline there. So that would suggest that they think the ball had gone over the touchline rather than over the try line. Interesting. Hmm. Anyway, the long and the short of it is that Great Britain are in possession through Steffi Geertsen. Yeah, Still looking for that incisive break to get back into the Irish territory. Have the opportunity to be the first scorers in this one. A wonderful pass from Lindsay into the hands of Barton. Not so wonderful, actually, from the angle of the referee. It was forward and Ireland take over on halfway. Laura Mahoney on the ball, she looks to break, but she's well marshalled. A lot of ball going through Rachel Furlong's hands. Oh, tagged without the ball, so that's going to be a penalty. Sheehan takes it up for the first tag, and uh, here's Arthurs. Oh, Bit of miscommunication with Cullen, and Litcher pounces on it. GB with the ball. Botel shaped initially for potentially an early kick, uh, but uh, keeps the ball in hand as GB move it to the far touch line. And here's M Stone, beats the first defender, thought she was tagged, turned to go back, told to carry on, and then uh, Ireland scrambling and did make the tag in the end as Hensel to find Botel. She's got Litcher outside her. Squeezes through a gap that just hows. <sighs> How could anyone get through that gap? It's incredible Good play by Litcher to turn and Furlong get through. To kill the, kill the momentum. You feel that if M Stone had gone there, she might have made yards at least. Yeah, she just bend her ears back. Certainly would have gained something. But instead, it is Ireland now on the ball. And over halfway. Stone involved defensively there. Yeah, Ireland up to move the ball again. Laura Hamani, sister of Emer on the ball. Uh, she pops it outside to uh, Christina Arthur, who gets tagged. Ireland are really probing here. Holly Jenkinson takes the opposite line. She breaks the first one on the second. It's good yards there. Holly won a silver medal in the over 35s World Cup, losing to. Uh, England and hockey only a few weeks ago, well. It's a uh, good defending by GB. Yep, seeing out another Irish set there. So still nil-nil as we bear down on half-time. Three minutes to play before the break. The deadlock yet to be broken by either side. And possession changes hands once again. Ireland... 10 metres inside opposition territory. An initial hit up from Rachel Joy. And a bit of uh, frantic communication there from GB to make sure everyone was in the right place. As, uh, Mahoney, but she's tagged. She goes to, rolls to Claire Tierney, Emma Jordan, making the yards. Looks to offload, but unfortunately she's tagged before she can get the offload away to Trish Dunn. Back inside to Emer Mahoney. Emer runs the line. Ball hits the hands but goes back. So it's okay. Emer tidies up. She has to go outside to Rachel Joy. Claire Tierney to uh, Emma Jordan. It's a good tag on Trish Dunn. Ireland went through the hands quite quickly there. Rachel Joy looking to move it. And we're going to have contact here against Ireland, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Kirsty Clark knocked to the ground there. So GB, six tags, 10 metres of space in front of them. A little bit of gamesmanship uh, as Omani was uh, backtracking there and preventing uh, Bedford from really finding her top gear. But here's Lindsay, tries to slide through. Hunter, yeah, good, good Litcher, again. spilt oh. forward. With the pressure that the Irish defence are putting on. And it is a bit of a scrappy end to this half. Both sides uh, losing control of the ball a little bit more. But will be keen not to concede just before half time. So 
lot of the game being played between the two 10 meter lines in fairness with a lot of turnovers. Quite a good defence or the odd handling error or knock on. It's very close now to half time. I feel this might be the last attack set. But GB if Ireland can just make their tags here. It's a good tag by Neve Kennedy. It's looking like it might get to half time and be still nil all. Most of the game taking place in the middle of the pitch. It's a good tag by Ireland again. They get up to four. And looks like it's going to be level at half time. Claire Cunningham looks to field the uh, kick through. And it's half time. It is, so our first uh, game of the day that's gone all the way through a 20-minute period without a score on the board. Uh, so uh, nothing nothing needs to be talked up here, Barry, about how close these sides are. Uh, nothing to separate them at the moment. They both had some, some good phases of play running at one another. Uh, Ireland possibly the ones that have had more of the, uh, the field position in doing so, but still neither side able to cross the, the white line and get the points they need. Yeah, Ireland were possibly down slightly more on GB's line, but only slightly. Most of the game taking place between halfway and 10 metres in the British in the British half. Uh, very close game. Difficult to pick a winner at this point. Uh, could really be anyone, being honest. Uh, Jack Lee and Valerie will be happy with how the first half has gone from a defence perspective and will be hope to keep it just as tight. I like ideally I want to stick with the lip mic because it's definitely working better. So yeah, this game pretty much going as expected. We would have expected it to be close. Uh, both teams know each other very well. Both teams have been close to each other over the last number of years. Ireland having the edge three years ago. GB season it back. Then the last B and I being a draw with one and one win each and a draw. So illustrating how close it is. And to watch 20 minutes of tag and reasonably high standard tag with just a few handling errors and one or two forward passes resulting in turnovers. And yet it's... Uh, it's nil all. GB probably slightly happier that it's nil all at half time given that they had let probably slightly less field position than Ireland. But Ireland be happy with how well they've controlled uh, GB's attempts at attack, how well they've defended and how well they've, they've run their own line. So it'll be interesting to see uh, how the second half goes. to read now, come this other side of it.
So here we go for the second half uh, with the game finally poised at nil all. Unlike the mixed senior game where Ireland dominated the first half to lead 7 nil. Uh, GB came right back at them in the second half to close the 7 6 before Ireland got their one and only score the second half to close out X6. Uh, this game, I don't think it's going to be as high scoring as that. I think this game is going to be decided by a score or two in either direction based on the, f based on the first half. So it'll be interesting to see how, how this goes. As Ireland look to kick off. And GB will look to counter immediately. We'll see the effect that the uh, team talks at half time have had on both teams. Will either of them have figured out an edge that gets them to victory? What do you think, Will? Predict a winner? It's it's a hard job to do so after that first half. Uh, I mean, you would potentially be putting your money on a score draw in this one. Uh, as we were saying going into it, Great Britain are the ones that potentially have had the, uh, the results going in their favour uh, the last few meetings. Uh, so they would, they would hope to have the same this time. Um, and uh, it would be nice uh, with the, the British and Irish Cup taking place on British soil for us to see our first win on the live stream pitch for a GB team. Ireland taking the game one in the men's 40s exhibition category and game one in the mixed seniors category so far. So uh, hopefully a GB win potentially uh, in the offing here. But uh, both sides will feel that there's plenty they can do to step up going forward as they start this second half. And the ball in the hands of Werewine initially there and and worked back across slightly scrappily, but Hensel had the experience to just let that ball bounce before she snatched at it. Voids the knock on, a nice play here over to Clark and then to Stone on the near side touchline. Hunter, that was one the, uh, an example of one of those times she was saying about in uh, an earlier game, Barry, thinking about what you're going to do before the ball has come to you and it gives Ireland territory and possession although the pass is scrappy from Ireland as well yeah Patrick Brown has to break rather than pass but the markers wise Swinton makes the tag Laura Manny looks to go around but she's tagged as well so Ireland will uh, have another chance to have a go right to Joy on the ball she's looking for an option no option really close to her Again, she's tagged, and again, it's good field position for Ireland, but you feel GB are defending quite well. Emma Jordan is tagged before she can get anywhere near the line. Right, your furlong knocks for the kick. Claire Cullen, catch it. Claire Mullen catches it, but she's tagged just as she catches it. Yeah, there wasn't really much going on with that kick there. It just sort of uh, went fairly flat, bounced up nicely for, for Cullen, but uh, not to be any advantage to Ireland and Baker just uh, intervening there to explain the decision as I think the Irish thought they might be getting their hands on the ball. Jack Lee, he certainly did anyway. He was wrong about that one though. It's good defence by Ireland. They held GB in the corner looking to force a turnover. This is what you need to do in tight games like this. You need to get down there and you need to be right in the opposition's face force him to make a mistake, get a turnover, and then you've got a nice bit of field position with your six tags, perhaps some options. The key yeah, is not we, to miss any. We saw how well the Island McSeniors were able to do that in the previous game, Barry, uh, getting right up in the faces of their British counterparts. So uh, women seniors doing the same here, and a bit of contact, and it's going to go against Ireland. Ireland. Yeah. So she running into Mason Bertrand and it is Mason Bertrand who then takes it up and another penalty for offside Side, yeah offside not back in time and you don't want to compound errors like that uh, not when it gives GB field position and that pass loose there and forwards so Saved Ireland take Rachel over Joy. Neve Kennedy on the ball Carmel Egan now passes outside to Lily Looney from Cork 
Uh, looking to break the line. She hasn't managed it yet. If she does, she has, uh, I think, rockets in her boots. Well, she's pretty quick. She'll give M Stone a run for her money. Well, it's important oh. to have players of all different skill sets and speeds and abilities within a side. And I'm sure uh, we will see when the space opens up as these players tire through the second half, we will see some of the speedsters take advantage of them and look to score some wonderful tries as a result. It's a good offload by Cunningham, but uh, Christine Archers is well watched and she's tagged in the middle. Ima Romani offers an option. She doesn't go for Neve Kennedy. Claire Tierney on the ball. She looks to go outside, but it's a good tag. Again, Ireland with a lot of field position, but not really that close to the GB line. Ima opts to go around. But she's tagged before she can make the offload. Ireland are probing. You feel they might get there if the pressure keeps up. If they go wide here, they look like they might get in in the corner. Claire Cunningham off for the kick. There was, I mean, there was certainly the number outside uh, with uh, Klossi, uh on the near side touchline, but it was just too big a pass to try and make over to her. And Ireland again coming up short as they belt four down on the British line. Ireland look to hold GB now down in their half. Stone tagged by Amani. Break into the Irish half for the first time in the second half. Gets in with the twist of the hips but can't escape the attentions of the defender. And the decoy line run by Hampton. All the way over to the far side. Barton catching that ball on the head. She did well. Yeah, good hands there to be fair. Hampton spins round and she still had her tags on, but Lindsay had been tagged as she offloaded it. Close though. Yeah, certainly the sign of something from Great Britain. Let's turn over Ireland. Good defence by Ireland there. GB only gained about five metres for four tags. And that looks to be a ripped pair of tags there, unfortunately, for Bedford. So we need to, to get her some more so that she can continue. As Ireland take the ball on, nice quick hands there and over into the hands Grace. of Grace on this near side. Laura Mahoney on the ball, she looks to move inside to, oh! Yeah, Claire Mullen took a bit of heavy contact just there. Rep Slow to her feet. Opting to stop play. Probably should substitute because that was a bit of a heavy bang. You always feel when someone gets banged on her, they should opt to substitute just to be on the safe side. Yeah, and I mean, there's no shortage of substitutes at international level, but she does break through now and doesn't look to have uh, been impacted at all no, by that knock color. Not. She did really well to break the line there. Again, Ireland are probing with time and possession. Yeah, they certainly GB look the more likely to score. Topsy making the tag there as Arthurs works the ball to the left and then is there as the supporting runner herself. But again, it's Topsy with the tag. Laura goes outside to Claire. Claire opts to go herself rather than making the pass to the wing and it's turnover and it's GB ball again. Once again, GB the attack, from shut, her now. The attack shut down just in front of the GB line. Botel goes left to Barton. Barry, are there any uh, of the players from the Irish women's 35 side that would have made it into this women's seniors? that would have been selected or that are here they might have today. played at the 35s at the ITS and uh, then into the seniors the only, at the BNI the only player from the 35s is Sue Howley um, who's playing today for Mick Senior this squad is pretty much the squad from the ITS with one or two swapped out based on injuries and availability so a fairly settled team yeah and is, is that 
the picture across most of the Irish programme? It would be. Uh, Mick Senior have ha actually have a number of people who are unavailable due to injury or um, work commitments and things like that. So they have they probably have more changes for the ITS than anyone bar maybe mixed open, where there is a couple of new caps and a couple of people who weren't able to play in the ITS. So it'll be interesting to see how they go as well. Yeah, it's a similar picture in the Great Britain programme. A handful of changes across each of the squads from the ITS to the BNI, based mainly on availability. availability. Some sadly based on injury, uh, but also that I mean that works both ways. Uh, players uh, that are returning, having recovered from injury, that had ruled them out of the ITS. Not too many players that will switch between sides. That's something that can happen in the off-season uh, before the selections of the training squads are made, but not once the international season is up and, up and running, really. So uh, it's Ireland now again on the ball, and they thought they were a little bit further upfield than they were, being told by Baker yeah. to take Emma the Jordan back. forgot to put her tag back on there when she took the penalty, so it went back to... Oh, forward pass. That could have been the most encouraging break of the game so far. far yeah it's good work by Ireland good defending just feel this game needs it needs an individual player perhaps to grab it by the scruff of the neck and bring it to light the team's clearly so evenly matched and able to shut down the attacks of, of, of their opponents it, it's crying out for a piece of individual brilliance. We know there are players capable of it on both sides, uh, but it's a question of whether anyone is able to step up to the plate, whether they will step up to the plate and make that decisive break in. Put some points on the board, and here we could see an example of it as Joy now finds herself on the ball with a bit of space and over Fair the top to Egan. And she finds O'Regan, but the... The tag, tag had already been made. Yeah. It's a good one yeah, by O'Neill. Joy to Kennedy. And then the the whistle goes against Ireland and it's a penalty tap to GB. Once again, closing out an Irish attack and a counter there that had looked very dangerous when it first began. Certainly Ireland, if uh, we were Doing stats on this game, they would be leading by a bucket load in terms of territory. Most of the game has been played inside the GB half, but it's counted for nothing so far on the scoreboard. Still can't separate these two. It teams. has, but like mostly between halfway and the 10 meter, not really close to the GB try line. Johnston with a nice break there into the GB half. It's back to a penalty, just on halfway. Yeah. We're back to zero tags. This is GB's first bit of proper field position now. They're in midfield and it's tag zero. So they'll have six to attack. Could this be the moment? On the 10 meter line, good tag by Carmel Egan. Bedford looks up, assesses the options in front of her, finds a little bit of a gap. But good tag by Newt Kennedy in the center. Yeah, uh, GB will be made. okay with that outcome because the pass it's just a little bit behind Kirsty Clark, who goes herself now. It's a good tag by Emer Mahoney. Hunter calling the play to Bedford, and it's Totsy that sprints up outside her, and it's going to be six again for GB, or maybe it should have been, but not seen by Baker in Ireland. Yeah, Close out that British there, attack. Will. And oh, just unlucky, escaping. The pass not to hand, yeah. Eleanor Regan. And one might say justice was done there because the ball goes back the way it probably should have gone. Yeah, swings before. and roundabouts and it all ends up with... The, well, it ends up actually with the players thinking they're playing one game and Baker calling them back to the actual mark. So they play the correct one and that ball yeah. just not able to be taken by Hunter and pulled forward. So it's not on, unfortunately, on the ground. Just... Cullen, she still both looks to be look fine a, after that both knock. Both teams look a little tired now at this point in the game. Seven minutes to go, and it's still anyone's game. Indeed, a huge amount of running, a huge amount of work put in by both teams so far. and It's it, one of those situations where you really sort of begin to uh, be reminded 
just how much a try gives you in terms of energy levels. And with neither team having been able to celebrate that decisive score, uh, it's a bit of a heads down play, some heavy legs, struggling to find the gaps, some tired hands, not always able to grab that ball as it comes in. Penalty to Ireland. Baker calling the women in green back to the mark. Yeah, Ireland with a bit of field position now here in six tags. Claire Mullen knocks herself as an option. Claire Cunningham hits her. Tierney opts to go the other way, but she's ta well tagged, well marshalled. Ireland possibly could do with being a little bit deeper. Rachel Furlong does well to break the line, but the second player gets her. Unfortunately, Ireland with a chance now to attack. Pass doesn't quite go to hand. It's tidied up by Claire Mullen, who's tagged in the middle. And Christine Arthurs looks to go to the right. Claire Cunningham looking for an option. She opts for a kick through, but GB fullback is there to take up the ball. GB looked to come out. Beats the first defender, doesn't beat the second. Yeah, I tell you what, Kirsty Clark is still full of running. If that uh, little dart was anything to go by, and already GB closing in now on halfway. Geertsen was the last one with the ball in hand there, and it's Clark once again. Solid tag by Ireland. Keeps GB in their own half. Lindsay links up with Stone, but the tag made immediately as the ball went into the hands of Stone. Penalty though. Yeah, saying early tag though. Yeah, free tag. That's Fractions. why it was so quick. Uh, there Lindsay one. to Geertsen, who switched wings now. Good tag by Grace. Here Stone finds herself at first receiver and with what she thought was open ground in front of her, the tag made. A little bit of momentum lost as uh, she had to come back for the roll ball. O'Neill with a nice run there. Again, every time there's a sniff of a break, the Irish hands are there to make the tag. And again, another one where Litcher thought she might be through. The tagging is excellent from Ireland here. Yeah, With but the pressure, oh. the highest it's been on them, they are not making a mistake. It's GB that do. With the ball spilt forward. Yeah, it was a high pass. It wasn't a great pass, but much you could do about it. Claire Cunningham here is makes a, break. a nice break. But there's a tag on the, the player who passed the ball to Claire Cunningham. I have to confess, Will, I thought the ball was away there. I thought it was too, Barry. I was all ready for us to call Cunningham as it, she entered a foot race for the line. Yeah, the ref didn't agree with us, though. No sex occasion. <laughs> this game is still very finely poised. With both teams very evenly matched and just three minutes left to play. Might we see our first ever nil all game in the B&I. Yeah, as Barry no, Keary searches no. for every possible we've cliche we've never had in one. the book we've for never. a nil-nil draw. Never had it's one. Hampton, oh. It's Litcher, well, sorry, that picks it up and she breaks. Be. No one in front of her. It's a Trish simple foot race to the line in Ireland. Her. Do so well, Ooh. the diving tag from Dunn there. And that save. The opening score for GB, but they still come in waves. Wearwine, tagged by Rachel Joy. Just 10 metres out now, GB, and they have a penalty. Six tags as O'Neill looks to her oh, left. She can't she find anyone, and she drops it. And just when, just when it looked like we might have a try, again, the pressure from the defence tells. And again... We find ourselves remaining at nothing, nothing in this one. Pass fired out into the Irish attacking line. O'Neill straight up in defence, wanting to make amends for that knock-on. She's been excellent in defence, O'Neill. Uh, as really have both sides, and that's the main story good. as to why we haven't had a try so far. It's not a lack of attacking play. It's just solid defence, but there is a bit of a break from Clohessy round the first defender tagged by the second and Ireland with two minutes on the board uh, still coming 
towards the GB halfway line, but no, O'Neill makes a decisive tag, and Botel at dummy half finds Lindsay. She's Stone on her shoulder, and Stone through that gap, but a great tag by Laura Omani. Stone, you would have backed for the box had she got away from the defender there. Botel can't hang on, and Both once again, a move breaks down. Both teams are making mistakes now, they're tired. This is anyone's game. And there is the hooter. Uh, and the kick, a bit of an up and under. And that won't be allowed. Is Baker playing advantage? He's just double checking with his touch judge. He's checking if there was contact or not. And then I think it'll be a penalty for the high kick if there wasn't contact. Yeah, I mean, the high kick wasn't dangerous, so it should just be a roll ball, if that's the case. And it looks to be what Jason Baker is. No, it's not what Jason Baker is signaling. Con contact. It is contact. Yeah. So one final chance. We've had the final play hooter in this one. Ireland, they have half the field to go and one tag to do it in. And the break. But Wehrlein scrambles back, makes a good a tag. For jumping. So uh, GB are they going to have a shot now? GB, yep, yeah, having a shot. And I think perhaps one of the things that Baker was adjudicating with his touch judge was whether there was time left in the game uh, because we are continuing to play on here for one more phase. The ball was scrappy to Stone. She cleared it up, but there's nothing more she could do with it. And we do end up with our first nothing-nothing draw in the British and Irish Cup, Barry. Ever. First nil all ever. First nil ever. Well, history made. Maybe not the history either of these teams would have been looking for. Uh, ah. But indicative of the, the parity within this category. They, uh, they won a game each last year. They drew a game. The whole category ended up as a tie. Uh, and uh, is, uh, is headed in that direction after game one. So four test matches remain in this category. And uh, the the chance of uh, of a win on either side of wins on either side, and a level score at the end, uh, just as likely as it was last year. Yeah, correct, correct. Um, two very evenly matched teams. It'd be easy to sit here and say like, oh, there was a lot of mistakes in that game, and that's why it ended up being a draw. But to be honest, there wasn't. Uh, the attack was good. Defence was just better. Both teams did really well. Probably the tag of the game was without doubt Trish Dunn's one and what looked like a certain score for GB, which would have given them the, the win. Uh, but thankfully for Ireland, she made the tag and so it ended up being a draw. Um, yep. uh, so yeah, like very, very close so far. Yeah, an incredibly close game. Uh, Honours even after the first round. We're just going to very quickly bring you an interview with... Uh, a player from either side before we have our interview with Great Britain Tag Rugby's new associate partners, Oakland. OK, so after that draw, it seems only fair that we have an interview from a player from each side. Rachel Joy has joined us from Ireland and Francis Warewine from Great Britain. Uh, Honours completely even and no tries scored in that one. Rachel, how tight was it on a pitch? Yeah, it was pretty tight out there, all right. Um, it was a tough game, but four more to go. So um, it'll be interesting to see who comes out on top after tomorrow. Absolutely. I mean, we know that this category was tied last year in the B&I when you were playing, Francis. Uh, so it started off in the same way this time. Great Britain managed to find the edge at the ITS. What do they need to do in the remaining four tests over the weekend to be able to, uh, to get the win in this category? Yeah, I think for us, you know, Ireland's a great team, especially on defence, so we need to put our sets together a bit more, have more on the ball runners, but it was a great first game. They're a great competition. We love playing you guys, so looking forward to the next one. 
Fantastic. So you'll have one more game today, three tomorrow, and we'll see you back on the on the live stream pitch then. Uh, final word, Rachel, as a, as a player that's experienced both sides, you played for GB before, spent a lot of your tag career in, in the United Kingdom. How does it feel now being over on the other side and in the Irish jersey playing against former teammates? Uh, like you can probably tell from the accent, uh, I'm home anyway, so heart bleeds green. Definitely glad to be in this jersey today. OK, thank you for joining us. Best of luck for your remaining four tests. We'll uh, look to see whether we get a winner in an incredibly tight category. Thank you. Thank you. OK, so coming up now, as promised, we have an interview with two, uh, two of the members of Oakland uh, who have joined us today. Oakland has recently come on board as the associate partner of Great Britain Tag Rugby uh, and we're extremely happy to have them here with us this weekend in Leeds. I'm joined by uh, Josh Carhart, consultant, and Grout Leighton, an associate partner at Oakland. Welcome to the two of you. I hope you're enjoying the, the beautiful Yorkshire weather so far. Um, so Oakland's a management consulting firm. Now, for those of us who, like me, are not particularly uh, familiar with management consulting, what does that entail? I will. Thank you very much. And um, just on, on behalf of Oakland, uh, first and foremost, just want to say thank you for having us out. We're loving uh, exploring uh, tag rugby and uh, appreciate the opportunity to, to be a sponsor here. Uh, so uh, management consulting in sort of in a nutshell, we, we like to say if we could explain it to our grandmas this way, it would be we're professional problem solvers. Um, we tend to uh, provide strategic advice um, and ultimately take our clients' problems off of their hands. Um, we work with um, anywhere from startups to multinationals and ultimately allow them to focus on their core missions rather than worrying about growth or um, regulatory issues, anything like that. So, in a nutshell. Fantastic. That all sounds really interesting. Uh, so are you able to tell us a little bit more about what it's like to work at Oakland and some of the projects that you've worked on? Absolutely. Uh, so uh, Oakland has been around for over a decade. Um, in that time, we have grown tremendously. Uh, we've, we've worked with a, a bunch of really fantastic clients across a, a whole range of, uh, of industries. Um, and it's, it's allowed us to expand ultimately uh, from the UK. We now have a, an office in the US um, and we have been, uh, we've been ranked as one of the, the top consultants, uh, management consultants in the UK for uh, several years running now by the Financial Times. Um, so uh, a number of the, just a small sort of cross section of the, of the challenges that we're helping our clients to address. Um, you may have noticed the, the travel disruptions at the airports lately. We're helping a couple airlines to, to figure out staffing issues to, to avoid those. Um, we're also providing strategic advice uh, to the country's rail and, uh, and roads agencies. Um, we're helping uh, a couple of energy suppliers to uh, meet the, the country's uh, net zero commitments without impacting pricing. Um, and uh, also on, on the innovation front, we're helping several industries to evolve to, um, to, to match new customer uh, preferences uh, and we're launching a few really interesting uh, automotive brands with our, with our partners. So it's quite exciting to, to be in management consulting right now and Oakland are really at the forefront of, it, of that. Really, it sounds like some really valuable work and I'm sure you'll, uh, you'll have gained yourself some fans there if, uh, <laughs> with, with the projects that you're involved in. Now, Josh, you and I have worked quite closely in terms of getting this partnership off the ground, but could you just uh, give us a bit more info on what it is about Great Britain Tag Rugby and about Oakland that makes them natural partners and, and why you, you look to get the partnership going? Yeah, sure. Will. Firstly, we, we share a lot of common values um, between the two firms, you know, in, in inclusivity, passion, performance, uh, community, uh, well-being, um, all very tied closely to, to, to what make us you know, who we are. Um, firstly, we're, we're proud to sponsor a, a team who promotes such an inclusive sport such as Tag Rugby. There's a big focus for us internally to be as inclusive as possible um, so that anyone, wherever they're from, can succeed in consulting to tie there. We're also very proud to support um, an organization who have built such a community so we've really noticed the camaraderie down here today amongst the teams you know we've just seen two teams competing against each other you know such respect for each other 
at Oakland as well, we, we, we build such a community amongst our team. Um, it's very important for us um, so that we all work towards a common goal. And finally, it's just, again, we're so proud to support an organisation who promote physical and mental well-being. Um, I don't need to state the obvious, but when we're all physically and mentally healthy, you know, that's when we're at best. So, as I said, there's just lots and lots of um, commonalities between the two organisations. Um, in terms of what's coming up then, I think over the next few months, we'll, we'll be continuing to support events like this continuing to help you guys promote the sport outside of London obviously it's great being up here in Leeds today um, to do that so yeah it, it's fantastic to be partnering with you guys Brilliant thank you Josh uh, and with such uh, commendable values I'm sure that our viewers will be keen to find out more about Oakland how can they do that? Firstly head to our uh, website you'll have seen them on the banners over there um, www.oakland.com we're also on um, LinkedIn and Instagram Check out our Instagram page where we've got lots of posts on cool, all of the fun, cool stuff we do as a firm. Um, also check us out on Apple Podcasts. Check out our Brighter Business Podcast. We've just released a new one with our, one of our CSR, Corporate Social Responsibility Partners, focusing on carbon offsetting. Um, so check that one out. It's super interesting. Okay, so we've had three really close uh, test matches on uh, our live stream pitch today, starting off with the men's 40s, then the mixed seniors, and most recently the women's seniors in that nothing-nothing draw that was uh, more exciting than, uh, than the scoreline might suggest. But what have uh, your, your highlights have been so far, uh, as uh, I think this is the first time you've got to see tag rugby at this level live and in person? Firstly, again, it's just fantastic to be up here, um, seeing it, you know, in real life. Um, it, it's kind of quite inspiring, actually, to, to see it at this level. We've, mo we've watched um, the um, men's over 40s, 40s um, category. We've watched a couple of the mixed games. But it's just the pride and professionalism and, at the same time, the sportsmanship and respect that all of the players have for each other. That has just been um, quite amazing, amazing to see. Grant, I don't know if you've got anything else to add from your observations so far. No. Just, just great to be here. Um, so yeah, we've got lots more to look forward to over the, over the next few hours. Um, but it's just great to see, um, you know, lots of different categories, and it's just showing what an inclusive sport, I guess, it can be. Absolutely. And what we find is there's a lot of people that they come down, and they see tag rugby for the first time, and they think actually that's something I could have a go at. Uh, so are we likely to see either of you uh, on the tag field anytime soon? I'll start with you, Grant. Uh, well, I, I grew up in Arizona in the U.S., uh, and unfortunately, tag rugby wasn't uh, on offer. So American football was uh, was uh, what I started out with, but uh, my mom didn't like the, the full contact, was worried about me getting hit in the head, so made me switch to tennis, but had tag rugby... Um, with its you know impressive safety record and, and lack of uh, you know a lot of a lot of physical contact been available, I think there's a good chance I might be out here playing today. Um, but do also just want to say uh, one of our consultants, Nikki Bryant, uh, is going to be playing uh, tomorrow, and we're really really uh, you know rooting her on, and and we're extremely excited that uh, ultimately people like me can get involved in you know just get a, a peek into the sport that you guys uh, you know have promoted so so heavily. Josh. For me, um, I think I told you this, I played when I was 10, um, when I was a lot shorter and probably a lot quicker, but um, a friend of mine actually asked me a couple of weeks ago if I wanted to join her mixed tag rugby um, crew uh, on Tuesdays. Um, I might take her up on the offer, um, but yeah, just, just, for, just at a social level, probably not at, at this level, unfortunately. Yeah, Grant, the point you made there about the, the lack of contact in tag rugby is, is a massive draw for so many players, not just uh, children that would otherwise get involved in contact rugby, but also at, uh, at an adult level where people see it as a safer option to, to get involved. So hopefully, as you stay through the rest of the day and, uh, and see not only the action on the pitch, but the social side that will take place in the clubhouse later on, uh, that often is a, a bit more of a draw for, for players as well to get involved. Now, because tag rugby is an amateur sport in the United Kingdom, partnerships such as this one that we have set up with Oakland are absolutely crucial to the, to the development of the sport. Players, even at this top level, are responsible for financing their own involvement in the game. That means getting to training, it means buying a kit, it means getting to tournaments like this. So to have 
uh, support from organisations with such great values as, as Oakland do. Uh, it's something that Great Britain Tag Rugby is looking out for the whole time. So if you're watching this and you're thinking, well, actually, Tag Rugby is something that I would quite like to support. And we have a, I, I'm involved in an organisation with values similar to that of Oakland, similar to that of Great Britain Tag Rugby. Do please get in touch through our social media channels. Uh, we are, as I say, open to, to building more partnerships. But we're really excited about continuing to work with Oakland over what is going to be an enthralling year of tag rugby as we look towards the 2023 Tag World Cup in Limerick in Ireland and hopefully we'll see you guys over there for that but thank you for joining us today enjoy the, the rest of the, the matches and uh, I'll catch you in the bar later on take care And it's a try there for uh, Keith Maloney for Ireland uh, to start the match um, very quickly for Ireland. Nice break straight from straight from the off, and Ireland take a two 0 lead. Sorry, one 0 lead. So those are the uh, men's thirties with uh, these two teams being. Very closely matched. Uh, GB men's thirties haven't won a silver medal at the World Cup, and Ireland coming fourth in 2018. Ireland then edge into Category Two One at uh, the BNI in the University of Limerick, um, and also edging a Two One in London the year before. Ireland seems very experienced with a lot of players having played either Open or Thirties in 2018. And some players haven't played open in uh, 2015. Uh, number seven is Matt Kennerson, who's the player coach of this team. Runs a tight chip with uh, really well drilled players and a, a very uh, well understood game plan. So 30s have started strongly. Maddie opts for the kick through, but it's well dealt with by GB. King Nitty gets the ball. That's going to be tag one, because it was played at. Uh, Padre O'Brien looks to move it inside, but he's well tagged by the GB defence. It's Conor Leclerica who played mixed open in 2018 on the ball now. He gets tagged. Darren Mullins also played mixed open in 2018 with uh, player coach Matt Kennerson. He was on the ball. Uh, GB looked to move inside. Darren moves the ball. Miles O'Hagan offs for the kick through, but unfortunately the kick's just a little bit too long, which means that it'll be top kick to... GB out 10 and they'll start on zero tag, an extra tag to attack. So uh, what would your thoughts be on this one, Will, in terms of uh, my, uh, GB here? Certainly the ascendancy has been with the Irish teams uh, in the, the last two British and Irish Cups and also the International Tag Series. But a break like this from Tom Higgs. Oh, he put a foot in touch. So unfortunate for GB because that was an electric bit of pace shown by the speedster who's playing men's open at the, the BNI last year. Moved up to the 30s for this year and uh, nearly stamped his mark on this game straight away. Uh, but yes, it, it has been Ireland that have had the advantage in recent years. Uh, I would argue though... Keith Maloney's in again here. It looks like he's going to make the line. doesn't look like he's going to be caught and he scores again for a second try today. Two, two tries, him. two points, and uh, not even his hat able to live with his pace there. No, it looked like he had a little bit of time and space there. He thought about going for the box, thought better of it, and took the score. So, 
So yeah, what I was what I was about to say just before that try was I think this is perhaps one of the most talented uh, men's 30 sides that Great Britain has been able to put out recently. We've got returning players that weren't at the British and Irish Cup, like Flo Hodgson Tuck, who we're about to see on the ball now, Aaron Lombardo, previous captain of this side, uh, who are all real threats for the men's 30s. So if not now, then when really for this side in terms of putting it together and and uh, reversing some of their recent results against the Irish sides. GB up for the kick, looking for the 50-10. Looks like it might be slightly short. 50-10, certainly no urgency on the Irish side which suggests it's Ireland's ball. Short of 50-10 there. Nice attempt at an exit kick though. John Cole attempts to break the line, but he's well tagged. GB will look to move it now through Darren Mullins, who gets tagged in midfield. Jack Levins on the ball, moving up from mixed open. Matt Kennison, the player coach, opts for a kick, looking for 50-10. It's not going to get there, but equally it's also not going to go dead. So GB forced to play it out from the try line, and it's good chase by Andy Harris, who makes the tag. So that's two tags now down in the corner. And Harris is in again, but he doesn't make the tag this time. It's made by Jack Levins. GB three tags haven't really got out from the corner. Harris again for a third of four. Will Harris get a fifth? It's David Wilkinson in midfield looks to create something. And tag five. Good tag defense. Once again. Good defense by Ireland. They drop two to deal with the kick. That may be coming. Yeah. The kick tuck, unfortunately it goes into touch. Booming kick, but it is sliced off the inside of the boot. Doesn't even make it to doesn't make it to halfway, and so that will be Ireland taking over inside the GV half. And just while we wait for the ball to be returned to play, an opportunity to bring you up to date with some of the scores on the other pitches. So uh, we we've obviously seen Ireland win in a men's 40s and a mixed seniors on pitch one, uh, but as mixed seniors are playing on on this one, sorry, on pitch two. Uh, Ireland also won in the mixed open category 12-6 uh, and Great Britain then picked up their first win uh, in the last round of games in the women's open category that was being played on pitch three at that point winning 8-4 over Ireland with Emily Rona Roper returning to the side and winning the player of the match award so it is certainly advantage Ireland so far, leading in two of the four categories that have been played. Great Britain leading in one, and it all level in the category that we have drawn last time. The women's seniors, is, it's now Aidan Wilkinson, who does really well to, to break away. Sorry, uh, Flo Hodgson Tucker did really well to break away there from a number of defenders, and then worked upfield by Dave Wilkinson. It's a good tag there by Kai Gary. Are enough to resettle after that nice break by GB where several tags were missed and GB made some nice yards. Keep Maloney almost caught that kick through though for could have been in for a third try. Yeah, and Wilkinson close. just not able to get away from the defender there, so Merch just to track back at dummy half, finds his captain Morrison who puts boot to ball and he's gonna break through the defensive line, but the ball is just gonna beat him to the try line, and so it will be tap ten to Ireland. Carl Murphy with the calm air of a man who was confident that was going to go dead before the kicker got to the ball. Turned out to be right, but only by a fraction or two, I would say. Yeah, I'm not sure I would have been able to be quite as calm and confident, but uh, then that's why I'm standing here and not playing. Yeah, uh, we never we never got to that, Will. Like, how come you're not out there playing? Look, some of us, uh, Barry, just have realistic understandings of our own shortcomings. Mine is certainly on the tag pitch where, where my shortcomings are heavily exposed. Um, I, know, uh, I know that you were probably at a, at a higher level than me, so it would be unfair to say that uh, <laughs> your shortcomings were on the, on the tag pitch. Oh, I don't know about that now. More perhaps in balance and... Nice, Will. What are you trying to say? 
Oh, the and interception for Ireland. Yeah, it's the attack building really nicely there it's with interplay between Lombardo and Rona Roper and Merch, the three of the Kiwis in this uh, men's 30 side, but it ended up being plucked out the air by Ireland. And oh, he's passed out. Oh, well, Lombardo there so like nearly Burke. to it. Because that really could have gone everywhere. Nice, nice tidy up. Ireland are penned in here now. Kane Nitty opts for the kick through. The kick chase is on. Kenny Hunt, the former oh, catwalk yeah. model it is, that chases back and manages to, to get there just before the tag comes in from Liddy. And Higgs tries to dart through and in the end puts the shoulder in to the defender, who's slow to his feet. Look a bit, uh, a bit stunned there. I think it's going to be a penalty against Ireland, though, for contact. Yep. No sympathy shown. Or, or is it just a tag? This is, after all, men's tag, Will. I think it's just a tag. It is, as Rona Roper finds Morrison and then to Himiona. Two further Kiwis, who was tagged before his shorts were pulled. He wasn't actually told to go back to the original tag there, which is interesting. And then the penalty goes against Great Britain. Yeah. Uh, the decision of the referee is that Rona Roper ran into a defender. Rona Roper feels the defender blocked his path. And so does Morrison. A bit of chatting with the referee here, and you can see that the referee has told Morrison that he needs to speak to his players and tell them to stop chatting with him. Uh, the referee's decision is final. Always fascinates, fascinates me when there's dissent like that, Will, as if the ref's going to say, oh, you're absolutely right, I should reverse it. Yeah, I completely agree with you, Barry. Uh, I have, have known you to think that you can change a referee's mind from the commentary box. Uh, yeah, he can't hear me, though, so that's fair. That's fair game, Will. You were, ju you were just saying to me, which of these microphones connects to the referee? <laughs> I thought you would know that, because you're usually all over the details now. Uh, I rely on you for all these things. And that's... That's Certainly a, contact there. That's going to be a penalty against Ireland. Yeah, Murphy running straight into Rona Roper. Uh, the ball, good way away from either of the two of them. So penalty, Great Britain, 10 metres inside their own half. Dave Wilkinson fields the ball uh, and takes the tap. Technically, uh, with the guidance the referees were given, he should have been told to take that tap again because the ball left his hands as he tapped it on his oh, feet. Nice but anyway, play continues, and it's Rona Roper to Himiona. Lovely play between the two, and Lombardo just can't quite grab that one, and it will go forward, but the referee calls them back. It's Penalty. Yep. And that was some real enthusiasm from Rob Chance to take it, but uh, has to go back to the mark. He does get his hands on the ball now, and Himiona. And up towards that right-hand wing, and Higgs, who we saw earlier on with... The break that was called back for the foot in touch as Great Britain search for their first score. There were two early ones from Ireland and Chance right, spinning around. No one able to tag him until and he falls over in front of the box. In front of the box. And Himiona and switches like play to the right. Space here. No Higgs! In the corner. And, and that uh, will be a try in the corner for Tom Higgs. The deficit half 2-1 now. The score with Ireland still leading. Early scores from Ireland made it look like it might be uh, headed a bit of the way that the McSenius game was in the first half, but GB have managed to assert themselves a little bit. They slowed down the scoring from Ireland and now find themselves over the line as well. Tom Higgs deserved score after that break earlier in the game as Hodgson Tuck kicks the ball down towards where the try was scored. And Ireland managing to field the bouncing ball. Yeah, D Brown on the ball there. He gets tagged. Hard enough to move with Trilla Kurka. Darren Mullins outside. He looks to use Jack Levins. Jack Levins tries to break the defence, but he doesn't quite manage it. He's tagged just as he tried to go. Kurka comes back inside to Kennerson. He's on the ball. Kennerson uh, gets tagged out. GB defending well, but uh, Ireland look to break out again, but no. They're stopped just in midfield. Miles O'Hagan on the ball, and Kennerson opts for the kick for field territory. Ireland look to come up and make the tag around the GB 10. It's all a little bit messy. 
Somewhat of a 50 yeah. 50, but the ref's giving it Darwin's yeah. way. Adjudicating that Beryl had run into a space that wasn't actually there, so penalty Ireland. Kennison nice dancing there. feet there from Kennison. Miles O'Hagan looks to offload, he offloads to Darren Mullins, Darren Mullins looks to offload outside, there's time and space here and it's a try for Ireland, Jack Levins the scorer, use a decoy show and go quite well there to take out the last GB defender and take the score for a 3-1 lead. Yeah, beautiful space creation there in that right hand corner for Ireland men's 30s, extends their lead now to 3-1. He's certainly one of the danger men in the Irish side, Jack Levins. Oh, absolutely. He would have played mixed open uh, last year and men's open before. He's just on the age for this category and he's got lethal pace and a nice step. And as you saw there, a real, a real rugby brain. A really nice score, like using the decoy show and go to take advantage of the overlap and get in for the score. Penalty goes against GB again. Hodgson Taku had uh, used his foot to control the kickoff really well, had then jumped in the air and landed solidly and effectively body checked the oncoming Irish defender. It's Kennison on the ball to Levens, John Cole on the outside, looking to use Harris, but he gets tagged just before he makes the offload. Ireland again with a little bit of field position and creating a little bit of pressure. Looking to move through, but GB are defending well. Only issuing instructions outside to both sides of the line. Cole opts to go himself, but he's tagged again, so that's tag four. Ireland need to do something now. There's only two tags left. They have to go wide. Levens nearly gets in again, but he's tagged just before he can get away. Great dancing feet shown from in there as he twists. And then the kick from Kennison is fielded by Rob Murch, vice captain of this GB men's 30 sides. Himiona takes the ball up. He was uh, he made his debut in the British and Irish Cup last year with a really strong performance. Was unavailable for the ITS, so good to have him back in the side now. And Aidan Wilkinson, his first time representing men's 30s, unable to escape the defender. Morrison darts down the short side and over to Higgs, GB's try scorer. Not able to get away there. Lombardo says he'll act at dummy half, pushes Morrison further out. Misses him in the line. It's Dave Wilkinson with a little kick and it sits up beautifully for him. And then he finds Morrison, who's in space, over to Lombardo. Tries to dance around the defender. Good tag by D. Rowan in the corner though. Yeah, really good tag and it's going to be a changeover. Ireland our, escaping our ball, once yeah, again. Six. So Ireland will look to break out from here now. With Maloney on the ball, he breaks the first one. He breaks the second. Third player gets him. So look to come inside again now. With uh, on the ball and Andy Harris goes inside to Kennerson. Kennerson opts to kick and it's gone into touch just beyond the 10 meter line. So Jack Evans will mark the roll and GB will look to break out from here. And there's oh, Himiona on the first hit up. Dave Wilkinson, we saw that lovely kick on the last phase of play for GB. Space closed down around him by Kennison. Lombardo. And not the first time that we've seen the ball go into the mitts and straight back out. And uh, he'll be frustrated with that. But he's got a very calm, experienced head on him, Lombardo. So he'll be straight back into it. As Ireland now take over through Kennison. And he looks so full of running every time he gets the ball. Beats the first defender in the end. Tagged by Stanworth. About 12 metres out from the British line. Four tags and 12 metres for Ireland. As the ball goes to Murphy, it was through the gap and then penalty given against GB. So now six tags and only 10 metres to go. Yeah, Harlem with a chance now to try something here. 
West Westman off to have a go himself, but he's tagged before he can get anywhere. Kyle Murphy looks to go inside to Miles O'Hagan. It's outside the Gurge making his debut today, but unfortunately he's hands him down just there. Not the impact he would have wanted, and it's Lombardo that rolls it as the, the run from O'Keefe comes in. Pull to Higgs. He's got plenty of running in those legs today, Higgs, but this time he has to jog a fair way back to the mark, and O'Keefe then, as he tried to take the ball on the run, knocks it forward. So Ireland will take over again in this uh, game with a 3-1 scoreline in favour of Ireland. Kennison, a little stutter step each time he gets the ball and finds his captain O'Hagan who then flicks the ball along the ground and it goes into touch. Uh, a whiff of contact on Stanworth there but the referee just going with the roll ball for the ball having gone into touch. Yeah, fair call there. I think there wasn't much in that. And there's the half-time hooter as Chance boots it down the field, but it didn't stay parallel to the touchline in a way he would have wanted. It crosses just inside Irish territory, and that will be half-time there. And Stanworth having a word with the referee, still not sure about that contact. Lack, uh, not, I was about to say contact call, cool, but it was a contact non-call cool from the referee. Um, yeah, because there wasn't any contact with the Fenger. Potentially. Yeah, I'm not sure the pictures would back that one up. Uh, there was certainly, <laughs> certainly body into body and one of them ended up on the ground. I'm not going to uh, say which way I think it, the call should have gone, but um, I do think perhaps it should have been uh, given a little bit more consideration. But fair enough, the, the eyes were on the ball that her, was bouncing into touch and so that was the deci decision that was given. So... Uh, Ireland, they started off this game very brightly, as they have in many of the matches we've seen with them on pitch one. You must be pleased with the performances so far, Barry. Yeah, performances so far are very good. Uh, Mick Senior had the quintessential game of two halves, going 6-0 uh, up, and then uh, contriving to near, <laughs> nearly lose, only to, to, to eke out an 8-7 win. Uh, ladies 30s in, a, in an absolute arm wrestle of a, a nil-all game two very evenly matched teams and Mick Senior uh, getting their win and then Men's 40s getting their win early early on in the day with our first match of the day. This game going well so far but it has to be said that Ireland got two points to go 2-0 two up through two, two Keith Maloney tries before GB settled. Once GB settled the game's been even enough with only one try each and the score being 3-1 at half time which is only a one score game. Someone gets a box try, it's back level again so you'd have to say that it's very close. Yeah, we've seen good phases of attack from both sides um, and, and pace to burn from players on both sides of the field. Again, uh, territory probably favouring the Irish, uh, as we've seen in a, in a number of the games so far. But if, uh, if GB can score opportunist tries like the one I got through Higgs in that right-hand corner, and then there's no reason they shouldn't be able to come back into the game, even if they are attacking from deep. And uh, we were forecast thunder and lightning for much of today, which uh, obviously would have put a bit of a dampener on proceedings. The, the thunder forecast had dissipated by dawn this morning, but we were still expecting fairly solid showers from kickoff onward through the day uh, so far the Yorkshire Sun is doing its best to, to peek through the clouds uh, and to keep everything dry here uh, so we we haven't had the damp all we were expecting which uh, the players will certainly be, be keen about the grass by now will have dried out from the the dewy start that we had and there was rain overnight uh, leaving a fair bit of moisture in on the ground uh, you said you've not been to Yorkshire before, Barry. Uh, have you visited much of the UK outside of London? I've been to London a few times. I've been to Sheffield a bunch of times because I have relations that live in, live, in, live in Sheffield. And I've been to Manchester a few times because I'm a, I'm a city fan. So I've been to a couple of city games. So you have been to Yorkshire? Yeah, Sheffield's well, in Yorkshire? Well, yeah, it is, yeah. Sheffield is, yeah. I haven't been to Leeds, though. That's what I said. I didn't say I was. 
careful. So family in Sheffield, yet you choose to support Manchester City. Is that popular with the family there? Yeah, it's all right. Uh, my brother in, in, our, in Ireland, people tend to follow random things. My brother is a died-in-the-wool Liverpool fan, which makes for interesting conversations in the last couple of years anyway. Uh, so the score at half time is 3-1 uh, to Ireland. The game finally plays one score game. So what's your thoughts Will? Who's going to win in the second half? Well the number of times we've said today too close to cool. Uh, something I've lost count of. But this one is yet another tight contest. Uh, it does appear to be favouring Ireland, I would have to say, uh, both with the, the form leading into the match and what we've seen on the pitch so far. But there are so many gun players within this Great Britain side that are game breakers. Give them half an opportunity and they will take a full advantage of it. Uh, so if we see, one of, uh, we see a few of those players stepping up to the plate, then this could well be a Great Britain comeback victory. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Ireland's up to take the kickoff and it goes into touch, so it's GB's ball close to their line, so Ireland will look to defend here. Uh, it's a good tag by, uh, by Jack, Jack Rails, who made his debut in the international tag series in this team. The new player from Limerick, a uh, referee indicating late tag, which means we're back to tag zero and a penalty to GB just on the 10 metre line. GB looked to break the line, but Ireland defending well with John Cole making the tag. Cole looks to make the tag again, and he does. That's tag two. Angus O'Brien uh, makes a tag in the middle. He was very triumphant about that one, waving the tag high above his head, making sure the referee had seen as Rona Roper bounces it back to Dave Wilkinson, who was nearly through for a moment. Yeah, but Padre O'Brien made a good made a good uh, good tag and he follows it up with another one. Lombardo in, <coughs> in the bucket hat. Fires the pass out just behind Tom Higgs, but Luckily for him, he was tagged before the ball left his hand. So Great Britain will maintain possession with the first attacking opportunity of this second half. And Rona Roper tries to spin and slide through the defence. But he is tagged. And Ireland will see out that first British attack. Yeah, well defended by Ireland. Good field position for GB, but they didn't manage to do much with it. So Ireland looked to come out again now with Darren Westman on the ball. He just gets tagged. He looks to recycle to Angus O'Brien. John Cole looks to break the line, but he gets tagged. Keen Nitty taking the roll inside to Darren Mullins, who opts to go short to Andy Harris. Darren has options outside. Will he use them? No. GB looking for the foul for contact. For the passer initi initiating contact after the pass is made. And it is awarded this time to Great Britain. So Lombardo taps the ball and shifts it quickly over towards the left-hand side. O'Keefe then caught in possession. Kenny Hunt is there and he's tied up by the defence. The gap closing in front of him. No penalty given. O'Keefe dances himself. Wilkinson, Rona Roper coming up with such pace and if he just hung on to that it could well have been a try, the penalty given to Great Britain anyway, ball back to Wilkinson, nice soccer control there as it's flung back to his feet and the show and go nearly working, Rona Roper will well come to Lombardo. By, well watched by Angus O'Brien in defence, Ireland step up and make the tag. Yeah, they've just taken the sting out of this GB attack a little bit with their calm defence island. Rona Roper and Lombardo linking up to try and see what 
gaps they can try and create, holes they can tear open. And again, play between the two of them. Lombardo puts in the kick. It's played at by Ireland and back to Ronan Ropu. Takes his time to flick it to Merch. It's a good tag again in midfield by John Cole, though. So Ireland a bit more territory to defend now than they did a few minutes ago. Tony Hunt not able to slide through there. Good tag by Darren Westman in the middle. GB with the ball, but oh, handle an error by GB, and it's good pressure by Ireland, resulting in the turnover. So, one of the longest sustained periods of possession for Great Britain. Uh, but it does end up with Ireland possession. Alex Murphy on the ball, but he gets tied. Connor Leclerc on the ball, he looks to go outside to Jack Levins, who gets tagged off the ball potentially. Looks like it's going to be a penalty to Ireland. Yep. The passer to Colin Murphy was tagged there. Murphy indicating perhaps he should have been let run on, but the refs have none of it. Ball back to Kennison. 10 metres to halfway. And an aggressive line by Murphy. Even more so by Kennison, who gains good ground. And another penalty for Ireland. GB rocking back 10 metres. Yeah, a bit of momentum here for Ireland now. Five minutes into the second half. Yep, still with a 3-1 scoreline. Ireland in the ascendancy. Uh, no try yet in this second half. Yeah, it's a good tie. Got Maloney there. And uh, Ireland look to probe a bit. <coughs> Levens on the ball and Levens looks to opts to kick. Uh, he's looking for the penalty for contact. Looks like the referee's going to give it. GB giving away a few penalties here, Will. I think that's the third one in a row for contact within 10 metres of their line. Yeah, and it's getting to the point where the referee is going to have a word with Morrison, the captain, or Merch, the vice captain, say the next one that I give is going to go to the bin. And with a deficit on the scoreboard, the last thing the GB need is to have a player off the field as well. Yeah, you just feel with an extra player, Ireland would be extremely dangerous. So, yeah, no side really can afford to have the... And Close just fight. checking on this one, and it appears to be just in the corner of the box. Yeah, it looks like it might be a box strike. Just waiting for confirmation from the referee that that's a two-pointer. Yep, yeah, so that makes it 5 1 to Ireland. I think it was Maloney again. With the try. Kennerson with the pass. Yeah. Maloney inside for the score. Good try. So that's five points to Ireland and four to keep Maloney. <laughs> yeah, he's having a hell of a game, Maloney. It would be a great person to bring over for an interview uh, for you. Uh, after this Barry so the kick off there from Ireland that was right into the guts of Morrison and spilt forward gives them a wonderful attacking opportunity here as Maloney takes it up towards the defence and the, the offload coming but it's Merch that comes away with it Ireland with a lot of pressure up on GB's line again Probing, looking for, looking for, looking for an in. GB forced to defend a lot, forced to knock on there to prevent the overlap getting in. Ireland looked to go wide again through Alex Murphy, but he's tagged. And before he can make the line, Miles O'Hagan goes for the wide pass to Kennerson. Kennerson looking for the offload option. Back to Darren Mullins, keep Maloney on the ball. I think it's penalty advantage for contact. Jack Levens looks to go quickly, but unfortunately it wasn't from the mark. Yeah, it could have been another box try for Ireland, and that arguably would have put this one to bed with just over 10 minutes to go. That would have been a 7-1 lead. Uh, as it is, it remains 5-1. Kennison, Kennison will go over like himself. Yeah. 
for a 6-1. Yeah, maybe just the one point, but it still moves this game even further away from Great Britain. A game that was evenly poised in the first half suddenly now has a completely different complexion to it. Two unanswered scores worth three points from Ireland in this second half. And we are uh, looking like we're going to see our third Irish win of the day on the live stream pitch. Ball kick long to Aidan Wilkinson who gains a good 10 or 15 metres off it. Leary at dummy half goes down the blind side to Stanworth. Beats the first defender, but it's a good diving tag by Westman. And the two Wilkinsons linking up Aiden to Dave. Again, the defence up so quickly. John Cole makes that one. Himiona with the little show and go. Finds Johnny Beryl to the captain, Adam Morrison, who will go. No one in front of him. Great Britain do get another score. Their first of this second half. 6-2 the scoreline. And it's Morrison, the former top grade rugby union referee in New Zealand. He moved over to, New to Great Britain, turned his attentions to tag rugby. Made his debut for GB last year and then in his only his second year in the international setup. Named captain of this men's 30 side. And you see exactly why his rise has been so rapid with play like that as the kickoff consecutive ones that are into the guts of the receiving player and spilt forward this time in favour of Great Britain Lombardo takes the roll Wilkinson picks and goes and it'll be Aidan Wilkinson then at uh, dummy half the next time darts himself and finds Himiona and Himiona's going to be through for a box try Ireland claiming the tag was made on Aidan yeah. Wilkinson and the try is awarded no I don't think no. so I think it's a tag the torch is saying it's a tag. Yeah. So the play is brought back. No try to Himiona. Yeah, definitely. Wilkinson was tagged. And definitely I, would, tagged. I think I would agree with that. Yep. Uh, so the score is still 6-2. Still 6-2 Ireland, as you say. That would have been a huge score. It would have brought GB into a 6-4 scoreline. Yeah. Just a, a one-score game at that point. Dave Wilkinson goes with the kick and his progress impeded by an Irish defender. But the Irishman just holding his, his position. He's perfectly entitled to do that and that does mean Ireland will come away with it here. They see out that threatening period of play from GB. Over to Liddy on the right wing. Cracker yeah. took one in the face there, I think. Yeah, so he's going to get the penalty just for it. Accidental contact there a little bit. So it'll be another penalty. A lot of penalties for contact in this match, both ways. Yeah, and some, it, it, side, it is something you do faster. see, not only just in men's side, but also in, in, in the men's 30s game where perhaps when these guys started playing tag, contact wasn't necessarily ruled as, as strictly as, uh, as it's is in general these days um, with the, the the latest rules handed down by the International Tag Federation and, and the way the, the game is governed in, in the UK and Ireland trying to make it as safe as possible uh, it, it's maybe not quite caught on as, uh, as quickly in the men's 30s so as you say I a bit more contact I think a little bit of contact is okay like in the two World Cups I've been to in 2015 and 2018 this was nothing in comparison to some of the things that the Kiwi refs let go. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure the principle it's been worse, so we'll allow it is the best one. And uh, <laughs> certainly that should not be allowed. That is a penalty. And it was a heavy run from Podrego O'Brien into Johnny Barrow, who subs himself off immediately. Yeah, always best to sub off with a little bang just in case. Wilkinson calling for the, the penalty there. That one was a little bit softer and play is allowed to continue as Himiona looks to dart round the defender but O'Brien involved in three tags in a row there. Good tag by Miles O'Hagan up very quick there to close that one down. 
They're leading from the front, O'Brien. O'Hagan, sorry. Stanworth on that left wing. Named as the speed demon in the uh, men's 30s team profile before this tournament. Ball flicked out to Rob Chance. Good attack by Darren Mullins. Good communication by men's 30s as they work for each other. D. Rowland does well to collect the ball and it's going to be a tag. Uh, Kenderson looks like he's in a bit of pain actually. That's uh, a very concerning sight for the Ireland men's 30s. Kenderson has been involved in most of the good things they've done in this game. I think he might have rolled his ankle slightly there just as well as his foot gave way. Yeah, he's he taking in his a little bit of pain so he's definitely going to sub off. Taking his boots off straight away which isn't necessarily the advice. Uh, as he hobbles to the sideline. The fact he's walking away himself is, uh, is an encouraging sign for Ireland. Ireland look to come out now from the line. Liddy to O'Brien. But O'Brien's well tagged. Liddy will look to go wide to... Oh, and slight handle and error there. Gives GP field position down on Ireland's line. They look to go left where they seem to have numbers. It's a good tag by Angus O'Brien though. GB think they're in, but the tag was made first before the offload was made. Time. Yeah, so all the way back. Probably about eight metres from the line. And Lombardo looping around in front of the defence, trying to see option. what... Holes can be created, and it's O'Keefe oh, now, and he an interception. throws that straight into the hands of, uh, of Westman. The penalty given to GB. So, four and a half minutes, four points the gap. Lombardo, ten metres out, and six tags to use. GB need to score, and they need to score quickly. Yeah, they sure do. Pool. To O'Keefe, goes himself, knocks his hat off over the line, but the tag was stuck. No, I think it's right. that's a try. Looked to me like the tag had been taken before the ball was grounded. No, I don't think so. Not the opinion that. of the referee. No, I think the ref got that one right. Three. I'm pretty now. sure the ball was on the ground before before he was tagged there. Don't have the benefit of a replay to see that though. But O'Keefe. I'm pretty sure that was a try with uh, what could be a very important score as GB look to get their comeback back on track. Yeah. Morrison Six, goes for the short three. kick, bouncing around dangerously in well front of the Irish. Jack Evans, though. Yeah, he did really well, Evans. He's uh, such a calm, assured player. Kenderson suffering no ill effects from rolling his ankle. He appears to be okay. Guy Murphy looks to run. He's tagged out. Miles O'Hagan looking for the ball, but it goes back to Kennerson. Kennerson looking to evolve Keith Maloney, but he's tagged before he can make the offload. Kennerson not happy Pete. with the, the, where the tag's been placed. Yeah, feeling it had been thrown away from the mark, and that was one of the things that the referees did, or the referee manager, Don Collingwood, did make clear to team captains and coaches at the start of the day that the tag could not be thrown and must be placed where the tag was actually made. So understandable that Kennison had issues with it. As Ireland decide, touch is the best option through the boot of Kyle Murphy. Great Britain will have possession 10 metres inside the Irish half. It's going to be Morrison to roll it to Hodgson Tuck. Yeah, time Merch at first receiver. Though. Finds him Iona. But his tag is found comfortably by Ireland and John Cole. Good Little skip from Cole Rob again. Merch. Rona Roper with no hat on. Miles O'Hagan makes a tag in the middle. Himiona to Merch. Puts the, boot, the ball down onto his boot. Morrison. Thought he had Higgs just on his shoulder. It wasn't Higgs. It was an Irish defender. And it's Ireland in possession now. And Morrison, he thinks he has taken the interception and dotted that ball down. Ireland appealing that the ball was knocked on by Great Britain. Yeah, it looked the, like a knockout to me. Yeah. 
the decision is being checked and it has been confirmed. It was knocked on by Morrison before the ball was grounded. So Ireland will keep possession. Nice attempt at the fake it to make it though, Will. It's what we all do. <laughs> you all have to do that, absolutely. That's the way the game is played, let the ref call us. Yeah, Kennison with a nice kick there and he was... Found the advantage. He's within tagging distance. Yeah, interestingly, refereed that because I think there might be a player within tagging distance a while before that. But anyway, the penalty is now going to go or, to Ireland. Although, no, the referee is saying that the advantage was over, so it's just a roll ball in the end. <laughs> oh, And the interception from Flo Hodgson Tuck on his return to the GB Men's 30 setup. Higgs oh. round the outside. We've already seen a break like oh, this. He he's beaten like he's two in. defenders. Will he go for the box? He won't. He's Kennison not. There. There's defenders there, so he there. just takes the one point. But that narrows the deficit again. It is six, four. GB four, Ireland six, and we have 30 seconds left in this one for GB to try and pull off a, mir a miraculous draw after being down by quite a way. There's the final play. It's going to need to be a short kick that they can regain. And it's gone all the way down the field to Rohan, who deals with it well. The hooter has gone, but the referee is playing on here. And we've got four seconds, three, two, one, left on our clock. And handed out now over to the left wing and into the hands of Keith Maloney, the vice captain of this men's 30s side. Rohan again. And the shirt possibly grabbed by Lombardo, but the tag made. And still the referee plays on. And Kennison with a kick that definitely goes over shoulder height of the referee. Mm -hmm. And I'm not quite sure whether maybe he's not heard the hooter. There's not really a reason to be playing on at this point. No. Uh, we've, it's not as though we've had any time stopped that needs to be added on. Anyway, Great Britain have possession. And if they were to score the game-tying try here, that would be a controversial final result uh, but the word has been got to the referee that time is up he signals it there and it ends here Ireland six Great Britain four for Ireland to take a lead in a third category and their fourth win oh sorry third win we've seen on this stream pitch including the men's 40s exhibition category so three categories Ireland lead in Barry uh, you must be pleased with the day so far now that we've seen uh, well, yeah. around for all of the teams <laughs> the, the bit the bits that I've seen absolutely yeah that was a real clutch performance by the 30s they put themselves in a win, winning position at 6-1 and uh, whilst GB came back a little bit to close the gap to 6-4 uh, that was literally only with the last uh, minute or so to play so you'd have to be happy with um, with that performance that's for sure uh, and it's a good start for them they take their 1-0 their lead and yeah overall so far so far so good Will but like it's early days yes it is early days and we, we have said it so many times during the games that we've had on so far that they're close contests and evenly matched teams none of the results I've seen so far would suggest to me that we're going to have a, a whitewash over the five tests in any of the series could of course happen we hope it doesn't we hope that each uh, category goes right down to the wire uh, and I think that um, I think that although we've seen three Irish wins on this live stream pitch, we know that there was one win for Great Britain in the Women's Open in the round before this. Uh, and we are awaiting the results of the Men's Open game that has just been played on pitch three uh, to see whether the overall category score is 3-2 Ireland or 4-1 Ireland with the Women's Seniors category, of course, drawn in that historic first ever nil nil result uh, but for now Barry Keary is about to bring you interviews with two of the victorious Irish men's 30 players well congratulations Miles and Keith thanks very much Barry yeah it's great to get the first win under the belt um, tough game GB lads didn't really give up at all there kept fighting all the way to the end and we're lucky we got a head start in the first half um, but uh, yeah, great start and looking forward to another few games against them now over the rest of the weekend. 
Yeah, it was nice that you allowed other people to score. Ah, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, look, you yeah. know, someone else, someone else has to get in on the uh, the action, but uh, yeah, got lucky early on. Like you know, maybe they're a bit cold after the the warm up, but uh, yeah, it's a lot to get on the score sheet. Yeah. No, it was, it was a great game. I mean, it's a great venue and these games are always competitive. You know, we, we got out early and got a couple of scores in. Keith got some, some great breaks, but it's just people flooding through the line. And I think, but GB, you know, they came back strong. They always do. So, you know, looking forward to the next couple of tests. I think there'll be a tasty couple of games in there and looking forward to another couple of games. Well, one game later on this afternoon. So, uh, great. Awesome. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Congratulations, guys. Thanks so much. Right, cheers. Yeah, we'll see you later. All the best. Thanks. And get down there without disappearing down a ladder. Yeah, of course, yeah. So the next match that we will be bringing you on our live stream pitch here on day one of the 2022 British and Irish Cup is round two in the mixed open category. Now, the game one of this was played on pitch three earlier on and it was won by Ireland. This one, the categories that they are currently leading in it was a, a bit, bit more of a uh, competent, uh, confident win than we've seen uh, in the tight games that we've had on pitch two so far ended up with Ireland taking it out by a scoreline of 12 points to six so 
as I say, a margin we've not really seen on pitch one. Great Britain will be eager to strike back in game two. These two teams met uh, just a, a month ago in the final of the mixed category at the International Tag Series. Uh, they had played at the start of that tournament and Ireland had got a very narrow win. Their mixed open side, Ireland's mixed open side, then lost to their own mixed seniors at the end of day one, while uh, Great Britain mixed open then beat Ireland mixed seniors to secure their place in the final. The final again, just like the first game of the tournament, was very closely contested, but it did end up going the way of Ireland, two of the uh, categories that they won, at, uh, one of the two categories they won at the International Tech Series there. It was the mixed one, the other one being men's 40s, with GB taking wins in men's and in women's. Uh, so certainly this category getting closer, but it is one that has gone in favour of Ireland the last two times we played the British and Irish Cup. In 2021, it was a whitewash when we were just playing three test series, Ireland winning 3-0. Uh, which was an even bigger scoreline than a 2-1 margin that they had achieved in 2019 in London, one of the only categories that GB didn't win in on that occasion. It was a fairly comprehensive overall result in favour of GB on home ground, the first time that they'd won the British and Irish Cup after five attempts and five losses. Uh, so that is something that will certainly be in the minds of the Great Britain teams and players this weekend is that the last time they played on home soil, they did come up with a historic result and they'll want to be replicating again, replicating that again this weekend. Uh, if they're going to do that though, they will need not only their women's open and men's open sides to win their categories as they have done at the last two B&Is, but they'll also need one of the categories that uh, has has lost uh, the last time out to turn that result around. So they're looking at the men's 30s, the mixed seniors, and the mixed open to reverse those results from 2021. Uh, women's seniors, of course, drawing that time and currently locked in a deadlock. Nothing, nothing was the result of their first game. Uh, so it's uh, currently all sort of as you were in 2021 across the categories. Ireland leading three, Great Britain leading two, and one shared as we go into the second round of games on day one at the British and Irish Cup here. Being brought to you from West Park Leeds RUFC, where on the, uh, the, the premier pitch, the first pitch that we'll be streaming from tomorrow, Leeds Tykes are warming up for their National League One game against the famous old Yorkshire Rugby Union Club, uh, formerly of the of the Premiership, now plowing their trade in National League One, will be uh, competing on uh, pitch one very shortly. And we're hoping that we'll actually uh, encourage some of the fans that have come down to see some Union to, uh, to turn their attention over towards the tag pitches and, uh, and maybe find some new audiences and new players from that. Uh, it will be a mix get match that they will have coming up uh, if they're headed down to spectate. As I say, mixed open where Ireland have taken wins at the last two British and Irish Cups and Great Britain have managed a solitary match win in the last six games they played against Ireland. Well, last seven now, including this one here uh, in, the, in the morning of this tournament. So no time like the present for Great Britain to change those results around and level up this category. And Barry Keery is just returning to the commentary box. The, a bit of a comfort break. Uh, pops his headset back on and the dulcet tones of Lord Geary uh, back on the airwaves with us here. I'm not the lord of anything well, as far as I'm aware. It's not what you've told me before, uh, but I appreciate that maybe on air you don't want to, to admit to the same things. Uh, but uh, Barry, this one I've been, I've been saying that uh, 
the mix open has gone in a, in a way of Ireland the last two British and Irish Cups and not only the category itself but fairly comprehensively in terms of games won how much confidence will that give Ireland mixed open heading into their second game of the tournament yeah I suppose they would have they would have been confident based on their track record but like to be fair to GB mixed open the GB mixed open team got to the final of the ITS and really put a look to Ireland in the final with Ireland being forced to dig a bit to get the result in the final so it'll be interesting to see how the second game goes especially considering the uh, the first game was close enough for a while I understand yeah close for a while but did end up 12-6 eventually to Ireland so plenty of, uh, of work for Great Britain to get their teeth into here as they aim to level up this category it'll be the captain Tom Entwistle who will take the kickoff wearing the number seven jersey and just letting his teammates know what his plan is for the kickoff two player coaches in this side Dan Ampel wearing number 20 and Charlotte Towerton who has been involved in the women's program previously but moved over into mixed this year to take on that assistant coach role with mixed open and it's a fast dart up the field to kick things off from uh, Ireland's captain Thomas Duggan and a bit of a break there through Rachel Healy she didn't realize she was through though and that just gave Great Britain the opportunity to have a second swing at her tags and a foot in touch just short of halfway brings an end Here's Rowan White, the former Saracen fullback, on the ball. And Ampau is through with Richardson in support. Wasn't able to find it, but she acts now at dummy half to Nick de Jong with pace to burn. Finds Richardson again. Just a little bit of a gap that was too small to go through there. And so, yeah, Ireland will take over. Davis just making sure that they are the full 10 metres in field as they must be for a, a roll ball when the ball has gone into touch. Ampel sweeps it over to De Jong who twists. He's over the line but tagged beforehand and now field. Sorry, uh, White at dummy half finds Ampel. The, the decoy line from Towerton but Ampel can't get away. White again goes for the dive through the middle and Davis just making his decision here. He says no try and in fact gives the penalty to Ireland for contact adjudicating that White had so actually strong. dived into the defender. And yeah, that would have given them great confidence as it is. It's Ireland now coming away with it and that little switch back inside nearly came off for them. Working the ball over to this near touchline and the kick but Ampau equal to it with the tag. Yeah, Alex Davis just checking with his touch judge, but it looked like it, it went forwards off uh, the arm of Entwistle accidentally, but then into Reese Walker. So uh, Ireland having made reasonable ground upfield, then get another set of six inside GB territory. 
Shipping the ball all the way over to the right-hand side. Richardson, the trichologist, making a good tag there, though, to keep the Irish out. Yeah, hard carry would be uh, a fairly apt description there, given the contact call against her as White takes it up and Great Britain just short of their own 10 metre line inside their half. And De Jong beats the first and the second and the third defender. He's through the middle, there's no one in front of him. It's a foot race to the line and he will get the opening score in this one. It's a box score as well. Great Britain two, Ireland nothing as we open in this second round of the mixed open competition. So that all coming from what had been an incredibly promising Irish attacking phase. Two phases they had the opportunity to, to score in after the GB offside penalty. Uh, unfortunately for them comes to nothing. And just a little bit of space given to Nick de Jong. He works his way through a load of defenders. Scores and then GB will get the roll ball after that uh, kickoff goes into touch uh, with an Irish foot Alex Ryan with the fake switch and the ball through the hands Lucy Riddler oh nearly over to Grace Brown but yeah forward pass from Riddler no matter the forward pass though it's fantastic to see her on the pitch in a GB singlet she uh, was playing at the International Tag Series and unfortunately in the penultimate game for them uh, did get herself injured and it looked like an injury that might rule her out the B&I as well so she's done fantastically well to get herself fit for this tournament as Ireland working their way up the field now that was O'Brien on the ball and just short of halfway they will come back to the right and the kick through O'Brien into space and it's had uh, had field and Riddler herring after it. They decided to go with the safe option, let it go into touch, and the ball now in the hands of Ryan, who was a real threat at the International Tag Series. Pops the ball to Milford, who injured himself the Monday before the ITS and was ruled out as a result. And unfortunately now, as we talk about injuries, we see an Irish player down. That, uh, that looks to be Alana Burns slow to her feet and in fact her coach running on and telling her not to get to her feet she doesn't doesn't want to take that advice straight up onto her feet and she's going to be carried off hopefully as we've seen a few times already today Barry uh, a bit of a twisted ankle that feels really painful at first but uh, people are able to come back on afterwards and we, we hope the same is, is true for Burns anyway the uh, play will continue with Great Britain on the ball and Riddler with a short sharp hit up there Ryan in the bucket hat finds Walker who has to reach for that one but does really well and puts in the kick but it is taken in goalkeeper style by McComb with the double zeros on his back Ryan involved defensively there on Connor Burke and again Ireland deciding to switch direction having not quite made it towards the middle of the field. McComb goes himself, dancing feet, but Grace Brown is equal to it. And what a calm head shown there by Burke. The pass was well behind him and pretty low, so control with the foot, almost Gaelic football style. And there's that kick down into the GB half, and Twistle, Freya and Twistle back to field it and here is Milford fully recovered from that injury that kept him out of the ITS and Walker to Ryan on a short sharp line and Powell on as a sub and immediately involved the ball backwards off his hand and Luce Brown is back to clear it up a good tag made on her pegs GB back Penalty though, Ireland. Uh, 
make sorry the Chiefs side went up on this great side that the Cleany makes yards. He makes yards the up for the offload. Looks like it could be a try for Ireland and it is in the corner. A try for Ireland for Debbie Tante Leah Cleary. So even the game up at two all. So one box try to Great Britain, one female try to Ireland, each worth two points. Great Britain two, Ireland two in this even contest. Yeah, it's very close here. Again, a bit of a knife edge, two all. Ireland now with the kick off. That's two all because it's a female try in it mixed. So two all, GB2 Ireland. Two. with the kick off, GB fielder. Coming up to Crazy Town, makes the tag. Crazy making the tag each day. Uh, plays plays uh, his tag for that with Ian Nimrick. I'm still here. Jack Higgins up very quickly. He makes the tag, puts the defence under pressure. He up to Chase. Back to make the tag again. He's going to get another go at it, I suggest. GB up to move the ball. He's good tag. It was, but it was really fast play from Great Britain and Ireland not really able to live with it and conceding the penalty as a result. Here goes Rowan White. She's been full of running so far and that spin gets her into the Irish half and loops around another defender. Gains a good 20 metres and Towerton now links up with coaching counterpart Ampau, but the ball then flung in front of the attackers and over the touchline. Ireland will clear it up. If they perhaps GB should have been potentially a little bit calmer there, possibly a little bit frantic. The ball ending up in the first of the game. Yeah, certainly too frantic. The, the, the play leading up to it, Barry, had been fast and had been uh, full of zip, and that was what had gained Great Britain all the ground and gained them the penalty. But uh, perhaps just uh, getting to their heads a little bit, and Ireland coming away with it instead. Can we get the uh, score corrected to 2-2 two, two, please? Uh, which one? Me, the British one or the Irish one? Okay, alright. He's just moved his mic back up, so hopefully we'll pick him up now. Just to shout if you can't hear anything. Yeah, so Ireland on the ball now, he can talk here and back again. Neve Doran passes inside to Rachel Healy. Dug into Orla Dixon, Orla Dixon looks to... Harden looked to attack in the corner with Jack Higgins on the ball. Harden looked to attack with Orla Dixon on the ball. She's going for box, but she's tagged well. GB defending well here, but they're under a bit of pressure. So Harden looking to move the ball. They go wide to Fenton. Fenton looks like he might be in, and Kira Lee just gets tagged just in the corner. So at the moment, it's 2 all with the uh, debut try for Leah Cleary um, and a box try for GB. Very evenly matched game with both teams going backwards and forwards, running through the tags. Few errors here and there, but a lot of good field position for both teams, and the teams generally defending well. Nice tag by Horda Dixon, just as GB tried to come out. Another good tag by Rachel Healy in the middle. And Michael Fenton feels the ball, so Ireland will get a chance to counter. Fenton looking for an option for offload. He passes to Higgins. Higgins back to Fenton. Fenton's still going. He's still looking for someone to run an option line off him. Barry Sutton obliges. Beats the first person, but's tagged by the second. Recycle to Neve Doran, and she passes inside to Jack. 
Higgins, Jack Higgins goes to Michelle O'Driscoll, but he's tagged in midfield. Feels like Ireland mixed open, possibly have settled now. Uh, they look to kick for field position, attempting to get 50-10. Uh, kick chase is good, Sutton makes the tag. Uh, GB now will have to come out from here, and that's tag one. There was really well fielded there by uh, Simon Welberg. Uh, good to see him involved again for Great Britain mix open. He broke his finger at this tournament last year. Uh, as Entwistle finds Walker with some lovely dancing feet. He's beaten two already, now a third, and ends up finding Harriet Field on the far side. And the tag made before the ball was then thrown forward by her. So Great Britain do maintain possession. About 10 metres inside their own half. Walker over to Freire and Twistle. Uh, decides to ignore her brother and it's worked well for her. Now she gets it to him and unfortunately spills it forward. It would have been a wonderful family try had Freire managed to find the hands of Tom and Twistle. Uh, but it was an excellent break from Freire uh, through the middle there. But Ireland let off the hook and taking over. And Very much so. Do nearly escaped there uh, she didn't realize she'd not been tagged that ball not forward brown clears it up and gb just inside the irish half will have six tags here goes tom newsom from bristol spins good tag by keenan o'regan brown to de young just over the hands of entwistle it's intercepted by ireland craig lynn on the outside to Leah Cleary and uh, it's, uh, Michelle O'Driscoll on the ball now as she gets tagged back inside to Leah. Lana Byrne looks to have a go, looking to suffer no ill effects from that knock earlier on. Craig Glynn from Galway on the ball, he opts to kick through and it's just a tag just after he gets the ball. Uh, Fenton taking the roll, he's looking for options. He needs options. He opts to go to Alana Burr and she goes outside to Connor Burke. Connor Burke opts for the kick through and he scores, I think, unless it's uh, simultaneous. Yeah, yeah so Alex Davis try. had called the late tag, which me meant that uh, Connor Burke was allowed to regather it. And because he still had one tag on, uh, that was the one that GB needed to get. Unfortunately, it was the far side of the defender, so it was a fairly impossible task without making contact. So that means Ireland get their second score of the game and their third point. Great Britain 2, Ireland 3 in this one. And uh, the Great Britain attack has been looking pretty uh, positive when they've got the ball. Certainly keen to try things, but as a result, some of the passes just not quite going to hand. And with the length of the field to go, they'll need to make sure that they do now. Yeah, Ireland look to defend the box and... GB look to come out. GB making good yards to be fair. Getting up to the 10 meter line. Close across the halfway line now. But Ireland making their tags. It feels like Ireland are a bit more settled now than they were earlier. GB up for the exit play. Looking for the 50-10. But unfortunately the ball goes dead. So it's going to be a tap kick to Ireland. 10 meters out. Yeah, dribble. It's just the wrong side of that corner cone from Entwistle's point of view. Um, to, to be a dead ball and an Irish tap on the 10 in this one that's separated by just the one point. Great Britain 2, Ireland 3. And we'll be getting the, the score on the graphic updated for you. Craig O'Brien on the ball. He gets tagged and now it's Tom Duggan. Tom Duggan inside to Rachel Healy. She goes outside to Craig O'Brien. Craig Glenn looks to go outside to... Leah again is having a fine game on her on her, her debut for Ireland this weekend. Uh, Duggan looks to go wide to clean O'Regan who uses her foot to control the ball. Nice hands there to catch that. Yeah, she did really well not to knock that one on. A very tricky ball to take. Lana Byrne looking to carry and she gets tagged in the middle. Uh, Tom Duggan now looking to kick 50-10. Unfortunately, the ball sits up. Allows GB to counter, but... Uh, Craig Lynn makes the tag. The Ireland line is up fast, so make the tag and it's made. Yeah, Alex but Ryan not able to get away there. Now Towerton tries a similar line to Ryan before her. And a darting back in towards the ruck. And Ampau with the long pass out to De Jong. 
Good tag by Keanu Regan now. She closed him down so well, which is crucial. Oh, uh, no runner as dangerous as De Jong. We've already seen what he can do in this one so far. He finds Brown on the wing in some space. But Davis brings it back. Forward pass against Great Britain. Ireland let off just as the British attack was starting to build. And that's a little bit the tail of this half for Great Britain going forward. Lots of promise, lots of go forward. Uh, but, uh, but not quite able to make those final passes. And Ireland obviously have been able to. That's what's got them into this 3-2 lead. Oh, and, good um, hands by Alana Byrne. Wonderful stuff there. As you said, clearly feeling no ill effects from that injury earlier on, which is great to see. Now she's grand, as we'd say in Ireland. Tom Duggan on the ball now. He looks to go outside to O'Brien. O'Brien to Glenn. Mixed open. Feel like they're sort of a bit more in the groove now. Yeah, some real pace in that attack there. Duggan looks to go himself. It's a good tag and it's a turnover. Nice defence by GB. Dealt well with Ireland's tag there. They've done well to see Ireland set out Great Britain and it's De Jong and Brown linking up once again. The pace on this left-hand side between the two of them, both involved with previous, with other teams in the uh, programme last year. Grace Brown with women's seniors and Nick De Jong with men's open. They moved over to mix to bolster the ranks and having a positive impact here as we hear the full the halftime claps and go just before Alex Ryan drops that ball. So we will go into the break. Ireland three, Great Britain two, another close one. Uh, and from the reports we had from game one, it was a close first half before Ireland uh, stretched their legs uh, and got into uh, got into a 12-6 winning margin in game one. But uh, just the point separating the two teams here. So I think Great Britain will be pleased with that. Certainly uh, Ireland will with the, the momentum and the margin having scored the second two tries. Great Britain scored first. A virtuoso effort from the flyer Nick de Jong to go into the box. Ireland struck back with a try in the far left corner, a two-pointer. And then got a second one uh, over on the right-hand side. A single point for that to give them the 3-2 lead. Thoughts on the first half, Barry? Yeah, I think Ireland mixed open started very, very, very slowly. Possibly maybe a little bit overconfident based on the way game one had gone. Um, but they settled into the game. They clawed back uh, the 2-0 lead with a try for Leah Cleary in the corner. And uh, then they got the, the score to edge 3-2 ahead. I felt like the latter part of the half, they were much more in the groove and much more in control and pushing GB a bit more. So it'll be interesting to see how the first 10 minutes of the second half go. Um, first score, I think, is probably crucial. If Ireland get it, it'll settle them even more, even further, and then you'd fancy them to, to potentially build on it. What do you think, Will? What do you reckon the chances of... Uh, GB mixed open, winning the second game and levelling it up one all there. Barry, uh, taking the opportunity to catch me there as I uh, just had a quick bite to eat. Uh, so thanks for the stitch up, Barry Keery. Uh, no, I think, I think Great Britain have a fantastic chance. They came out really positively. They weren't deterred by the result of game one. They weren't letting history weigh too heavily on their shoulders after the results of the previous two series. Uh, we saw some really enthusiastic forward thinking play from them throwing the ball uh, about lots of running uh, so if they continue in that vein it's just about getting those final passes to go to hand and, and to complete the sets uh, I think if they do that they have the players they have the experience in this side to take the win yeah it'll be interesting to see what happens first five minutes absolutely crucial Ireland continue in the vein that they were in the first half then I think they may they may well pull away again in this game we'll just have to see how it goes and as you'll see from the the banners in in front of you just above the Great Britain uh, 
name on the score line there. We have Oakland with us this weekend. Great Britain Tag Rugby's new associate partners. They're on the backs of uh, the, some of the jerseys here this weekend. And uh, we had an interview at 10 to 1 earlier today with Grant Layton and Josh Carhart, who were up this weekend from Oakland, to tell us a little bit more about the company, about what they do as management consultants, uh, and why they decided to partner with Great Britain Tag Rugby. Uh, so if you'd like to have a listen back to that, it's, uh, it's an interesting chat with the two of them. Uh, Oakland uh, are certainly a forward-thinking company and one that's going places and that has a wonderful set of shared values with Great Britain Tag Rugby. So we're very pleased to have them alongside us as we look towards the Tag World Cup next year in 2023 when Barry will be back over in Ireland and back at the University of Limerick where we were for the International Tag Series at the start of August. It's a fantastic venue and one that uh, the, the sides will be that are travelling from all over the world will be incredibly well looked after uh, as they uh, compete for the biggest prize in tag. Yeah, no, the University of Limerick has fantastic facilities, uh, plenty of pitches and uh, lots of accommodation within walking distance of the pitch so there'll be no, uh, no transportation costs once you get there and there's plenty of facilities on site. And there's a, there's a decent pub that does ge decent Guinness, Will, because as you know, Guinness doesn't travel, right? Sadly not, it is always better in Ireland, I, I definitely have to say that. Uh, and it clearly was good at the University of Limerick from uh, the amounts I saw you put away at the, the International Tag Series. Uh, maybe that was just the, the stress of having to see Great Britain lift two trophies at that tournament. Uh, no, no comment, Well, no comment. <laughs> Did that actually happen, or did I just imagine it? Great Britain certainly did win two of the categories. The men's and the mixed... Uh, sorry, the men's and the women's. It was the mixed category where we saw these two sides contest the final with Ireland just edging out their British rivals by a scoreline not too dissimilar to the one we're currently seeing in this match. Very, very close. Separated by just a try. And this ball being kicked by Great Britain falls about three metres short of the 50-10 so Ireland take over and have their first opportunity of the second half to extend their lead yeah yeah with uh, Barry Sutton passing inside to Jack Higgins and Higgins getting tagged and now Sutton getting tagged he goes to Orla Dixon Connor Burke on the inside Hawkins offload to Mark O'Brien but luckily for him he was tagged before he made the offload it would have been a, a turnover otherwise. Mark O'Brien offered himself as an option. Orla Dixon running the hard line, she gets tagged. So now it's Connor Burke again, up for the exit, going for 50 10. Looks like a good kick. And it looks like it is, in fact, 50 10. So Ireland will get a chance to attack down on the GB line right at the start of the second half such a crucial play to be able to achieve in tag rugby obviously people that have been involved in the game of tag or the sport of rugby league throughout their life will be very familiar with it those of you that come from more of a rugby union background will have recently seen the impact it's made on that sport with 5022s being brought in in the last couple of years and ireland using it to great effect here to give themselves an attacking platform just 10 meters out from the british line and plenty of tags in which to extend their lead. Yeah, Michelle O'Driscoll opts to pass inside to Connor Burke. Back to Michelle O'Driscoll. She tries to get through. It looks like she fended, blocking the tag. So it's going to be a penalty GB. And nothing comes from that territory for Ireland. Good tag by Michelle O'Driscoll. Mark O'Brien. But there's a nice play by GB. They work the overlap. And uh, Miss Tag in the middle. Yeah, not for the first time. We see Reese Walker beat two or three defenders before he finds uh, a way to get the ball all the way over to Dan Ampau. A world record holder in Mario Kart 64, apparently. And then Twistle now to Towerton. Finds De Jong. Does really well to clap, uh, clasp a hold of that ball. Yeah, Ampau like again just delays the ball and 
links up with Entwistle fantastically. But this is fifth and final for Great Britain and still a fair way to go to the line. Walker looking for a bit of brilliance. He goes for the kick. His progress is impeded by the Irish defender, but nothing uh, called by even. the referee. And I would probably agree with that, that she uh, just held her ground. So it is Ireland on the ball through O'Brien. Yeah, tallest man on the Irish mixed open team, Mark O'Brien. Played uh, mixed open in the 2018 World Cup as well. It's one of the more experienced players on this open team. Rachel Healy now on the ball, and she's tagging the field. O'Brien ups for the exit. Knock on by GB, so good exit by Ireland there. They get the ball back on the halfway. Yeah, straight at the young and forwards, he kicked it away in his frustration and then ran back to the line, allowing Ireland to play the ball forward and set up another attacking opportunity which nearly led to a try if it wasn't for a great tag by Freya Entwistle. Rachel Healy on the ball now, she looks to go inside but she's well tagged. McCoom throws that ball backwards and to no one in the end so it has to be scooped up behind the attacking line and suddenly that opportunity Disappears for Ireland. About 15 metres further to go, maybe 20 now. Just the pause on the play. McCoom with the dart, but tagged by Richardson, who's taken a weekend off from the Fulham Scalp and Hair Loss Clinic. Fenton goes outside to, to Duggan, Duggan to Jack Higgins, and I think that might be a try for Ireland. Is this? No, no, no try. try. Good, good, good signalled by Alex Davis. A valiant diving effort by Dan Ampel yeah, to just about. hold Ireland out. Good tag. Very close. Very close indeed. Ampel to Walker finds Ryan, and they linked up so well together at the ITS. Nearly getting away with one there. Tower turn with. Milford outsider and Milford goes down painfully there you'd see immediately as his ankle went out underneath him and I'm concerned that that's the ankle that he injured the Monday before the international tag series he's gingerly back to his feet but yet another twisted ankle that we've seen today and it's nothing to do with these pitches they are beautiful pitches here at West Park Leeds RUFC and much better than uh, our London players may be used to with uh, the, the weather we've had in the capital this summer, which has dried out the ground so much. Lovely covering of grass here, though. Really well-maintained pitches. And Walker with a flat pass to Ryan for the Irish defence equal to Morgan. it. Conor McCune with the intercept. Ireland on halfway with the ball. Alana Byrne looks to break, but she's well tagged. Ireland really struggling to break through this British defence now. Able to turn the ball over, but not able to really create chances close to the line. But again, they do have the territory, which has been a theme in these close games. Ireland tending to have the advantage there. And if you've got possession, and you've got field position, the other team can't score. So uh, it's one That's of the true. big things that has, has given Ireland the advantage in the games that we have seen on pitch two so far today with our streaming. Tom Duggan looks to go inside himself. He offloads to, to Glenn and Glenn's in for a try. Yeah, that broken play really bamboozling the British uh, defenders. They were pulled in different directions and it meant a huge hole opened up uh, for Craig Glynn to go through and puts in the gratuitous dive over the line uh, yeah, just to make sure a of it. A little unnecessary, Will. But it looked good. It, it looked good and it shows the enthusiasm uh, that he had for, for scoring a try for his country at this prestigious tournament. And so Ireland now extending their lead to four points to two. Yeah, Ireland needing 4-2 at the moment. 
as Entwistle thought he had managed to find Walker on the little break. But no, they called that for the tag and Towerton takes it up into the line. Here goes Rowan White. Walker with a lovely step and again beats the first two defenders. Generally he's beating them laterally rather than actually towards the Irish line. But it is still creating chances for Great Britain as this ball is worked all the way over to Simon Welberg and a gap opens up for him and he exploits it into the Irish half. Tag made on him just before he spills the ball. Newsom at dummy half finds White born in South Africa. And Twistle calling the play at middle. And decides he's going to go right. He's going to go himself. And he have to, if he has the pace, he will score. Alex Davis checks with both touch judges. It is a try for Tom Entwistle. One point. Brings it to a 4-3 scoreline. With 10 minutes, 10 and a half minutes remaining in this one. So a much closer game than round one between these two teams, which saw Ireland, the victors, 12 points to six. Yeah, uh, this game's very evenly matched and could go either way at the moment. Score in the second half is one all. Oh, a bit of footwork there, but unfortunately the ball just spun away from uh, Barry Sutton. So it's going to be GB ball. Just Moments like that in games with margins like this that can potentially decide them. Alex Ryan, he's got rid of the bucket hat. We'll see whether that makes him even faster. Amp out with the little fake. It's a good tag by Michelle O'Driscoll though. Lucy Riddler. I think GB might have numbers on either side though. The yeah, Irish defence up so Sutton. fast and so comf confidently that the attack is shut down. Ryan again with a Driscoll. bit of a fake towards Lucy Riddler. And GB will come right through Freya and Twistle and Reese Walker now steps back. He felt nothing was on. And the ball being called for by a number of his teammates and in the end he throws a bit of a loose pass. It bounces up for Alex Ryan who kicks it forward and maybe played at by Ireland, is it? I think it probably was. Oh, I would call that as played. Don't know if the ref did them. Amp out. Through a gap. It's and good tag just by Orla Dixon though. Yep, yeah, she takes tag and shorts. And Freire and Twessel looking to go through as her brother did only moments ago. Riddler. Last tag. Orla just needs to turn it over here. A bit of a messy ball for GB. Yeah, Ryan really was not expecting that. Luckily, manages to clear it up and find Walker before being tagged. And Walker puts in the kick. It's fifth and final. And Alicia Ahmed herring after it. And that has been kicked. Oh, no. The decision of Alex Davis is that Ahmed made contact with the Irish defender. She was going back to try and clear that one up uh, which means it's a penalty island 10 meters out from their own line and it Keira is Kira Lee she just gets tagged Craig pops it to Michelle O'Driscoll who gets tagged and Craig uses the show and go opts for the kick but unfortunately for him he kicks it directly into touch which gives GB field position just on the halfway line So what was uh, an encouraging passage of play the last time they had the ball by Great Britain wasn't quite able to see them cross the line. And there's something they'll want to build on here as Freire and Twistle urge to take the ball in to the tag by Ampal. And now GB shipping it all the way over to the left. Here's the danger running of Nick de Jong. Ireland equal to it. Brown at dummy half. We'll find White. Good tag by Alana Byrne in the middle, shutting down the move quickly. Towerton goes herself and contact made on her. Okay, the gap closed. For closing the gap. Towerton appealing to her teammates to just calm it down. They're in a very good position here. Yep. 10 metres out. Five tags now remaining in this set. Amp out. 
to De Jong, flips it back to Brown, who does well to pick it up behind her. No knock on, play continues. Good tag by Connor Burke, though. And Powell looks right, goes left, De Jong with pace, and the dive! Oh, I think it's a tag by Connor Burke, a great tag. That is a sensational tag, if it is. And yeah, that was a great diving tag. Yeah, that is what has been given. I've said dive from distance by De Jong. The athleticism of the man allows him to do so. Uh, but uh, Ireland doing really well to keep Great Britain out. Still they come though, still they work that left hand side and De Jong with another diving effort and yeah. another tag is made, Quite fifth and final. Again. Connor Burke is having a hell of a time in defence, really, really well. Great Britain, they've got to do something now, again Reese Walker not wanting to take the ball in, flip, fired over to the right hand Tyranny side but kick Leahy kicks kick. through. And then that's going to be apparently not spilt forward by Ireland, and they will continue. Three Nine burns. Burn on the go. Tom Duggan nice. looks to break the line, but he's tagged well by GB. You know, Regan inside to Alana. Alana looks to go again. She's tagged again. And Rachel Healy on the ball now. She tries to break the line, but she gets tagged. Alana Byrne on the ball again. She ups off low to Clean O'Regan, but Clean O'Regan is tagged and they come back inside again. Michael Fenton on the ball. Fenton looks off low to Sam Duggan, but he's tagged before he can get the ball away. GB defending really well. Ireland struggling to break down this GB defence. Towerton did well there as the ball bounced up in the air to get her hands to it and Great Britain take over. De Jong spinning, but Duggan does manage to get back and take the tag. Tom Entwistle, the most recent try scorer, back on the field. Walker stops his progress, pops it back to White was the plan anyway. It goes loose and White has to do some work to pick it up tidily. Leaf field now at dummy half. Flick it in field to Entwistle and then to Walker again. Twists and changes directions as options close in front of him and a scrappy pass, but Towerton clearing it up. It's a good tag by Ireland. They need to hold GB here and not miss any tags as they need to turn it over. Good field position and try to get the clinch and score. Yeah, well, it's fifth and final here, but that's played at surely in the dive coming in from oh, Rachel Healy Rachel to Healy. secure that loose ball. Alana Burns will just look to keep this here. Oh, she opts to go for the offload, but she's tagged before. Luckily for her, because I don't think there was an Irish player that was going to be close enough to get the ball. So Rachel Healy on the ball now. She looks to break the line. Tom Duggan opts for the kick through to himself, but I think it's a knock on. It's going to be GB ball. GB will get another chance. Just over three minutes to go. One point the margin as Tom Newsom. A nice jinking run over on Ireland that down far to side. Welberg finds Riddler and the interception. No tag made beforehand. GB get away with that one. Yeah, GB a bit lucky there. <laughs> Very lucky. Just as the attack starts to build. Good tag by Alana Byrne in the centre. Wilberg pinned on halfway as a result. Riddler with Walker outside her. And not for the first time. He feels that his options on the outside have closed. So Good defence by field. Ireland up nice and quick to make the tags. Great Britain were appealing for six again. They felt there was an Irish hand in there. Tricky to see. Walker tagged on halfway. And GB being pinned to this middle of the field now by Ireland's calm defence. And in fact, it will be Ireland getting the changeover. Yeah. Just over two minutes to go. Still looking for the decisive score in this one. And Ireland preserving their narrow lead as Duggan. And now Burns. 
Inside to Tom Duggan again. Rachel Healy opting to run. Duggan opts her to kick through. Brea Entwistle calmly fields that one. That left back, as it were. Entwistle with the long pass over the head of Walker and somehow Great Britain with some volleyball skills between Field and Walker managing to avoid that ball ending up in Irish hands but then like a forward okay. pass and it is going to be Irish possession just 10 metres from the GB line Davis making sure that Ireland take it back they can't play it closer to the line than that when it's a knock on we're inside the final minute with only a one point margin here and Ireland doing everything they can to take a 2 nothing lead in this mixed open category which would mean GB no, would have to McCoom win. And he's in. Coombs is in. McCoom yeah. is in. McCoom is in for a try in the corner. 5-3. Five, 5-3 three. Five, three, that will be the deciding score unless Great Britain so. can come up with something absolutely stunning. GB on will have one chance to respond. Yeah in this final 30 seconds. So, Ireland, all they really needed to do was close it out with ball in hand down in the oh, Great Britain end. It's going to be penalty halfway. In the end, they scored the try to extend the lead. The ball will return to the halfway line for a tap after that ball was kicked dead on the fall by Ireland. One chance for a miraculous piece of play that needs to end up with a two-point score for Great Britain. Entwistle hopping around in midfield. What's on? Walker goes to the boots. But it is fielded by Duggan. Knee on the ground with GB in tagging distance. And that will bring an end to this one. Ireland winning five points to three. Yet another win for the Irish on this show pitch today. And a second win out of two games in the mixed open category so Ireland uh, they can uh, reflect on a job well done in this category only two games played by the sides uh, in the, the six ca categories counting towards the BNI today so early bats for the mixed teams uh, and one where Ireland will be able to, to look back with with uh, confidence of what they've achieved a solid win in the first game and then a really gutsy one there as uh, they had to come from behind initially after Nick de Jong's opening score uh, and then held on to a lead when Great Britain threatened to come back. Yeah, that game, was, that game was very tight. GB very close. Ireland only really getting the clinch and score right at the end from McCoom. Up until then, it was anyone's game because there was only one point in it. Um, the mixed open coach would be happy to go two from two, but he won't be happy with the, with the score in that match. He'll be a bit disappointed that the team didn't play better. But that's credit to GB who pushed Ireland hard and um, ran the lines, made them work and like could really have gotten a result there, Will, to be honest, I think, myself. They absolutely could have done. Uh, and that's one of the things that uh, Dan Ampau and Charlotte Towerton as coaches, uh, Tom Entwistle and Rowan White as captain and vice captain of the side will have to be saying to their charges following this one that they really were in that one. They had every opportunity to win. And sometimes it can make a loss even more disappointing when you know you had the chance to take the spoils yourself. Uh, so Great Britain will have to really focus on the positives in that one rather than the end result and believe that tomorrow they can come back and win three games on the bounce to secure the category for the first time uh, in a long time. And Barry is about to bring you another interview with two of the victorious Irish players. Hi, joined by uh, Tom Duggan and Rachel Heaney uh, from Ireland Mixed Open. First of all, congratulations. Thanks. Thanks two from two. Yeah, we're delighted with it. Um, GB really put us up to it there. Uh, first win was a bit easier, but this one's really tight. They really came back at us. So we're delighted with the win. Glad to be back in an Ireland jersey, Rachel. Yeah, I took a bit of a sabbatical, I suppose, uh, after being I last year, but came back just in time. Um, but. Yeah, the teams, um, I think it was a step above even where it was last year, so it's great to slot in 
and uh, they're already game ready. She's got her first try and like 20 caps. 22 caps in 20. the first try. So <laughs> yeah. uh, delighted with the day, to be honest. <laughs> you haven't scored a try? Before. Never for Ireland, never for Ireland. 22 oh, right. caps. Okay, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah, five well, BNIs in the World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. <Nice. laughs> That's not all about the tries. It isn't. Well, obviously, my first 21 <laughs> caps were. <laughs> he thinks it is. All right. <laughs> so, how do you think the rest of it's going to go? Um, I don't know, I think it'll be really tough. I think tomorrow, you know, it's going to be tired bodies and it, every game is a bit close. Um, I don't know really which way it's going to go. It's been very tough. Um, yeah, I think the most important thing for tomorrow is to get out and win that first game, win the series. Um, and then we can like loosen up in games four and five and maybe try a few things um, that kind of prep us for the World Cup next year then. Um, but first of all, just win the series is number one goal. Yep, sounds good. <laughs> very good, all right. Congratulations, guys. Best of luck in the rest of your games. Thanks very much, Barry. Thanks, Barry. So I'm pleased to say that we are joined by Bobby Donville from Tri Tag Rugby Yorkshire. Bobby, it's an absolute pleasure to be back up in uh, God's own country to, and to bring the British and Irish Cup here for the first time. Uh, so Tri Tag Rugby Yorkshire has uh, followed in the footsteps of TTR London, where, where the, uh, the game of tag was properly started in this country. But how long ago was the region set up as a, as a TTR franchise? Yeah, so in Yorkshire we started in 2015. Uh, it was actually about half a mile down the road from here. So we started with five teams in that league back in summer 2015. Um, and we've actually got up to 89 teams this summer. So yeah, over the what the six years it's been quite a quite a growth really so yeah going really well and we started in Sheffield a couple of years ago um, and as well as that we started in Manchester as well so yeah all always expanding and uh, yeah growth has been good so far. That's brilliant to hear I mean I've uh, yeah I hear a lot of good things about the, the Yorkshire leagues and we've obviously seen Yorkshire do really well at nationals mm. but what was it that made Yorkshire the ideal place to expand to first outside of London? Yeah, it was actually my colleague Carl who uh, first started it up here. And uh, I mean, obviously Leeds and Yorkshire is such a hotbed for sport anyway. Uh, not only rugby league, but um, a lot of sports. It's a, it's a grown city, it's a thriving city. Um, it's got three universities, it's got a lot of young professionals. So yeah, it's a perfect place to, to play tag rugby really. Absolutely. It's, uh, I know uh, that uh, myself as a, a bit of a Leeds United fan as my second team in football. Uh, that, yeah, I do, I do enjoy following Leeds fortunes in different sports. Uh, definitely a, a strong city. Um, 
But could you tell us a little bit more about your role at TTR Yorkshire, what your day-to-day -day is like and, and how your involvement has developed since the, uh, the region has grown? Yeah, so my kind of day-to-day -day role, I'm the operations manager of Yorkshire and Manchester and we include Sheffield in Yorkshire as well. Um, and I mean, I started back at TriTag Rugby in 2016, early 2016 in London um, as a league organiser. So I'd go out to the league, set up the cones, oversee all the leagues. Um, then I became an operations manager in London for a couple of years. And then the opportunity came to take over Yorkshire and Manchester. So I kind of oversee all the leagues um, with a, you know, Lewis is my colleague as well. He works full time up here. Um, but yeah, I mean, we, we oversee the leagues, we try and grow the sport. Um, obviously, you're seeing the top level tag today, um, but there's a big social element. Um, and people love just playing on a weeknight evening uh, and going for a drink after their game. It's a really social sport, so that's what we try and promote. Fantastic. And this year we've had the two highest level tag tournaments within the UK being played up in Yorkshire, obviously the British and Irish Cup this weekend. But in May we had the UK Tag Nationals, the highest level domestic tournament, and Yorkshire were able to enter seven teams across the four categories. What does it mean though to the staff in Yorkshire, the referees, and then of course the players to have tournaments like that being played up here? Yeah, it's fantastic. I mean, because of the spread of players historically, um, it's made sense to have a lot of these tournaments down in London. Um, but as we're growing in different regions, not only Yorkshire, um, but different regions around the UK, it's great that we're able to kind of host these tournaments, welcome everyone up to Leeds. Um, and we've been really fortunate to have, like you said, two big events up here. So, I mean, it's a good opportunity as well for the social players to come down. And a lot of them have done today. They will do tomorrow as well. And just it shows that there's a bit more kind of outside of just playing on the league night if they want to. So, yeah, it's, it's been fantastic to have the tournaments of it. And of course, we don't want to just come up for a day or two at a time and, and bring a big tournament like this and then there to be no legacy from it. So what, what do we have to do going forward to ensure that tournaments like this actually really uh, encourage the growth of TAG long term? Yeah, I mean, it's great to have these tournaments. And I mean, today we're playing right next door to Leeds Tights, who are the best rugby union team in Leeds. So it's just great exposure for the sport. Um, and we've obviously got it on the live stream as well, which has been a kind of recent thing over the last two years. So, yeah, as I think the more tournaments that we can get up here, the more interest there will be up here. And hopefully we can go from strength to strength. So. I'm sure you will go from strength to strength, uh, especially if the weather stays like this. We did have a, a pretty worrying forecast uh, for most of the week, and even last night it was saying we'd have thunder throughout the day. I actually dreamt about thunder because <laughs> I was so worried about what it might do for our matches. So far the rain's held off. Uh, would you describe this as a typical Yorkshire day? Well, yeah, I mean, like you said, we were speaking yesterday and I think we we're a bit concerned about the forecast, but I mean, touch wood, uh, it's been fairly dry so far um, and it's actually been really warm to the point where we've had to cancel a couple of leagues quite recently. So um, today I'd say is perfect tag playing weather. It's dry, it's not too hot, uh, so it's not too exhausting for the players. So as long as it stays like this, I think we'll be happy. Okay, great. And final word is that as we've seen uh, Tag Rugby grow in Yorkshire, we've seen greater success for the Yorkshire teams at Tag Nationals. We then get more Yorkshire-based players into the Great Britain setup. So uh, are there any players from Yorkshire that we should be keeping a real eye out for this weekend? Uh, yeah, all of them really. Um, if you kind of drill me to pick one or two, um, I saw Aidan Wilkinson, he made his debut in the uh, men's seniors, I thought he played really well. Um, we had a couple of kind of hype players in the different teams as well, so we had Rach Livingston and Haf yeah. Kareem, um, who are both quite experienced at this level now, um, but yeah, they, have a, they obviously have quite a big impact on the GB team, so it's good to see them doing so well as well. Yeah, as, uh, as I mentioned earlier with my uh, links to Yorkshire, my loyalties to, to Leeds, it's always great to see uh, more and more Yorkshire players getting into the side. And we, we hope that continues in the years to, to, to come. They do make a fantastic contribution to, uh, to the sides, but of Northern Steel uh, added into the mix. But if you're watching this uh, somewhere else in Yorkshire, you've not yet got involved in tag, or maybe you've seen it being played in one of your local parks and you're thinking about getting involved, do go on to the Tri-Tag Rugby 
Rugby Yorkshire website, do go onto the social media and see what it's all about and, and come and get yourselves involved at one of the leagues so we can continue growing the sport in this part of the country. But Bobby, thank you for joining us. Uh, enjoy the rest of the tournament and yeah, hopefully the weather stays as it is. Yeah, yeah. Cheers. Thank you. Sheep was yours. So second game of the day here between uh, Great Britain and Ireland in uh, Women's Open. Great Britain having secured the spoils in the, fir in the first match. 8-8-4. Uh, uh, so good start for uh, GB Women's Open who were also the recent victors in the International Tag Series in the University of Limerick. Coming out on top in an all-British final where they beat the British uh, senior team. Uh, who I'm sure took it very well, Will. I know uh, as, our, as, as our seniors would if they lost, to, lost to, to, to the open side. So again, here today, um, Ireland would have like uh, some new players playing for the first time against GB. And a lot of players on this open side would have started uh, this year or last year. And uh, would be would be slightly younger than, than the norm. So it'll be interesting to see how, how today goes. So it's a decent kick off to start with. It's a good tag there by Ireland right at the start to hold GB, to hold GB back. And the break there from Emma Jackson up towards halfway. Snowden stepping up to captain this side in the injury absence of Hannah Wilson, the key player for Great Britain, as Emily Rona Roper, who was player of the match in the first game, with a wonderful half field effort to go over and score first in this one. And uh, I was just about to say as she got on the ball that while GB Women's Open are missing the experience and the cool head of Hannah Wilson. They have been able to bring in Rona Roper, who missed the International Tag Series. Uh, and in the end, she just, well, she did all the talking I needed to do with her play on the pitch. A wonderful score to open this one up as GB lead 1-0. Yeah, and Ireland looks to counter now and feeling the kick off well. It's good start by GB though and very good, uh, very good try. And anyone concerned about the stomach of Barry Keary will be relieved to know that he's having food served to him uh, wonderfully by Michelle here, just to keep him going. He's had a, he's had a tough day at the office so far, uh, having to watch so many Irish wins on this show pitch. Well, I don't, I don't know about that. It's never a tough day when I'm spending it with you, Will. You always make it so much fun. But, um, so Could have far. said that with a bit more sincerity, Barry. <laughs> well, I wouldn't have meant it, so you know. We wouldn't want the audience to think we get on or anything like that. Uh, so Ireland look to counter as they look to move through through the hand, but GB are, are defending really well. Ray Lawless on the ball. She breaks the first one and the second, but... It's um, yeah, a lovely bit of Megan. play by Ray Lawless. And back to Rebecca Conway who's the youngest player on this team ball goes outside Ireland again looking to attack they up for the kick will the chase be there chase is up quite quick and nice tag made in the corner by Fiona O'Shea did really well to go herring after that kick. It was bouncing awkwardly for Lucy Saunders and, and that did probably just hand the advantage to the chasing Irish pack. As Broadley receives a ball there from Snowden but is immediately tagged and Snowden now to Bruton and over to Jackson on the left wing. 
Bruton, the youngest player in the Great Britain setup at the moment, just 16 years of age, and a real star of the future, but one already performing at the highest level within tag. And Lawless takes over for Ireland. Who are already comfortably inside British territory, and this will give Ireland the confidence they need that they can level this series up after their loss in game one. Yeah, Ireland looking, looking good here at the moment. They, they the were. They had numbers there on the right-hand side and they could have kept contrived going, yeah. to lose them. And then that kick. And the up and hands of Snowden who did really well to get away and find Rona Roper who could be in for a second breakaway That's try like here. The again. last one was a half of the field effort. This is at least four fifths of it and into the box as well for Rona Roper. What a return to international duty she is having today. As I mentioned, player of the match in game one and who would bet against her being player of the match in game two as well with well, tries like that. Will. And once again, it was it was uh, pass coming to her from Anita Snowden, clearing up the kick from Ireland just as they were closing down on the British line. Yeah, super try there by GB again. GB into an early three nothing lead, and Ireland with it all to do here. Really need to move the ball, put GB under a little bit of pressure. They actually had some territory, and uh, we're looking good there until. Uh, GB um, just got the breakaway, just nice uh, finish by Ron Roper, as you say, from her own half. Two very matching tries, and she's obviously trying to win player of the match for as many games as possible throughout this series. As Looney uh, needed to control with her feet and then play a little bit of basketball, and it ends up going forwards and over to British possession. And then knocked forward by GB, knocked forward by Ireland. And the long and short is Ireland will have possession again as the roll comes in from Penny Father. Yeah, and Ireland look to break again now. Get down the pitch. Yeah, O'Connell's done well. Looney. Can't have it on the ball now. She looks to offload to. Um, Kate O'Connell inside again Ireland looking to break the line but GB are up very quickly and this will still be Irish possession and a new set of six for the girls in green as Brown Easton goes down that left wing. Yeah, Fiona Burson making her debut for Ireland this year. Plays for one of Jack Lee's teams, actually. And Tina Torrington on the ball now. She gets tagged in the middle, back to Lawless. Lawless sucks to go outside to, Car to Megan Carroll. Megan Carroll opts for the kick. Looked like it might break for a moment there to one of the Irish players, but unfortunately ends up in GB hands. Britain having worked it to the right then come back left and it gets a little bit scrappy but tag was made just a, a little bit further upfield on Eleanor Hawkins and Rona Roper finds Laura Richards who uh, wanted people to know at the ITS that she was a world beer marathon champion and uh, she then put that uh, that reputation to the test participating in the post-tournament boat race between Ireland, GB and South Africa, where she downed a pint faster than I think most humans would believe possible uh, and has secured instant fame for herself within the Great Britain programme for her abilities to do so. But uh, her abilities on the tag pitch are just as impressive as Rona Roper works the ball to Hawkins, goes for the kick just over the head of the Irish defender there that was uh, Kat Galvin who wasn't quite able to keep it in 
but uh, no bother because it will be Irish possession. It's good. It's good play by GB. Nice exit, and Ireland look to look to move the ball now. Good pace shown there by O'Sullivan. Good ball inside to uh, Cara Coleman, who's making her debut this weekend. Well, unfortunately, the pass doesn't go to hand to Lawless, and it's a turnover to GB. Rona Roper, Snowden, and they link up together. Riches to Anne Broadley, stepping into the vice captain role this weekend. Snowden moving up to captain, it's Snowden who breaks through and finds Rona Roper for what will be a first half hat trick as she gets in here. She does. We're just waiting to see whether it was a bonus box score. I think it was outside. I think it was just outside the box, but it was a great line. It was. Lovely run and nice finish. She's having a go as good a half as Keith Maloney had in the men's 30s game. She really is. It's currently Ireland nothing. Emily Rona Roper four. And Great Britain along for the ride. Pretty much looks like it so far, Will. As broadly, I think we can see. Restart. I think we can see why she won Player of the Match in the first game. We can see why uh, Women's Open felt they had an uphill battle at the International Tag Series without her and some of their other key players. Uh, they managed to deliver on that occasion, winning the tournament, dropping only the one game through the weekend against Great Britain Women's Seniors in a round robin before winning the final against the same opposition. And they started off in the same positive vein today. A nice 8-4 win in game one. 4 nothing lead at the moment as Lucy Saunders goes the long way round at the back. But a good tag in the end by Hannah O'Sullivan before Saunders had run the width of the pitch. Hawkins at dummy half. Decides to go right through Rach Livingston. One of those Yorkshire players that we just had Bobby Donville mention. He came on to tell us a little bit more about this booming tag rugby region. Do you have many players from Yorkshire? But... More and more every year, Barry. Uh, I think most of the squads would have one now. We've got uh, Alex Ryan in mixed open, half a career in mixed seniors, Cheryl Woodman, she's also in that team. Uh, men's open have a couple, Andy Harkins and Dan Waters. Mancini's, the two Wilkinsons that were that were mentioned, and see, as we say, Rachel Livingston in this women's open side. So, uh, lots of Yorkshire ability across the Great Britain squads. Hard enough for the exit play. It's good. It's good. Oh, balls of hand. Just. I think uh, person might have been tagged just before she got the ball, was she, or did she knock on before she was tagged? I mean, it's the same end result. Great Britain taking over about 10 metres out from their own line. Yeah, first half's going very well for, for Great Britain. Ireland with a little bit of field position, but not really. Lovely first. pass over to Emma Jackson in space on the left hand side she beats Looney and she will go over for a score herself the first name on the score sheet that isn't Emily Rona Roper and Emma Jackson has certainly earned that she's shown some real bursts of pace down this left hand side in the first 12 minutes of this game and she really deserved that try but she had a lot of work to do when the ball came to her from Eleanor Hawkins it was a wonderfully threaded pass through the outstretched hands of the defense Jackson had Looney in front she weaved around the outside and brings up the fifth point for Great Britain in this one yeah nice for someone to share the load with Rona Roper eh Will that was a good finish and a really good really good pass to set up the break GB in total control in this game so far. A bit similar to uh, the Mick Senior game earlier. Uh, nice break by Ray Lawless there and good little offload to Kat Galvin who just gets tagged. Yeah, Ireland uh, certainly have the players to, to mount the comeback here, to compete with the GB women's open side. 
so we we do hope that we will get to see them fire, uh, whether it's in this game or in the latter stages of the competition. And a half break from Ellie Boyce. Yeah, hard enough to break down the wing, but again, GB have turned it over. Yeah, six tags taken by Great Britain. Gives them the, the opportunity on the ball. Are in the field position, but they're not able to break down the British defence. Flory Greenhill was looking for the loop with Snowden, but Snowden looked up and said, I'm going to do it myself. Now Greenhill's involved again. Back to Snowden. Wonderful play between these two. Good tag by Ray Lawless. Greenhill waits for the perfect moment to make that pass and it ends up in the hands of Emily Golvin. Hawkins with the reaching effort but tagged short of the line. So Britain bring it back to the left, Greenhill. Snowden not an option now. Ellie Jones, she made her debut at the International Tag Series. Snowden, Rona Roper and sixth tag. Ireland see that British attack out and that will hopefully give Ireland some confidence there after a really good attack from Great Britain that's gained them you know up 60 meters down the field and given them a really promising opportunity to score uh, Ireland managing to see it out and now break down the field themselves through Looney referee uh, judges her to have been tagged before the kick so quite a way that she has to run back I think the ball actually might have been gone there when she was tagged. I, th I thought it was at least simultaneous, I have to say, Barry. So a bit unlucky. I would agree with that. It's a good kick. She, she looked to have the beating of, of uh, the British did. player. He'd did, had yeah. to turn and chase. It's always hard, though, when your team kicks and your, your momentum is taking you forward and then you have to go back. Snowden and Broadley. Knock on there by Thornton, so it's going to be GB ball again. GB looked to go in here, but there's no tag. Unfortunately, tag fell off before. Um, she got the ball. Yeah, so go back to where she received the ball. Just the one on. There goes Golvin. The Irish defence keeping GB honest, and Saunders doesn't take the ball with it. So Ireland will take over. And again, let off after a British attack. outside Lawless carries well carries towards the gap she looks off look good hands back inside to Lawless who was tagged so it's going to be a penalty for late tag on Lawless Keenan Torrington looking to take it quickly she has options she goes for the gap she breaks the first one but the second person tags her looking to get back involved inside and that's Zoe Carroll on the ball, another of the uh, recent Irish returnees, having played in a, a lot of her tag in London, like Dara Conway and Rachel Joy. She's returned to the country of birth to represent Ireland at the top level. And Britain having an attack breakdown inside their own half. So one of the best opportunities for Ireland in the game so far. Lawless though, tagged before she gets going and we know how dangerous she is once she has got some space in front of her. Here's Penny Father to Carroll again. <laughs> yeah, did really well, O'Sullivan to take that. The pass was behind her. Velcro hands and it's now Conway. Inside. 
Wonderful diving Carly effort from Laura headed, Richards. Had an overlap there. It's good defence by GB as they managed to hold Ireland out. Walk it through the gap and then a little bit of contact after. Ref plays on. And there goes Rachel Livingston. Broke her nose at the British and Irish Cup last year. So she'll be hoping uh, not only for the same result for Women's Open, but she will be hoping for a different result for her own nose this year. Can't imagine she'd want to break it again, all right. No, it would be a bit of an unfortunate record to have. It certainly would. Good pressure by Ireland forces the turnover. Now Ireland with a chance yeah, and at proof, field position. Proof that Emily Rona Roper is human. She does throw that one into touch. Immediately makes amends defensively with that tag. is just a little bit short unfortunately and results in a knock on promising field position uh, goes back in there for Ireland unfortunately Lear Alexander on the right hand side feels like Ireland have been down here a bit but not being able to get the scores that possibly their play deserves yeah certainly would agree with that one Barry Marina Roper Greenhill outside there. her tag Good made tag well by Conway by Rebecca Conley there because Ron Roper looked like there was a little bit of space there and she might be gone again. And the Hooter goes in this first half as once again a bit of space opens up but Greenhill is tagged before she can break too far away. And Great Britain looked to have enjoyed that one. Five points scored in the first half and four tries three of them to Emily Rona Roper one to Emma Jackson uh, and many of them distance efforts Rona yeah. Roper running in half a field for her first one most of the field for her second one and Jackson over half the field for hers so scoring from distance Great Britain which uh, will concern Ireland a little bit it's not even yeah. a case of they just need to hold uh, Great Britain a bit down the field they will score from anywhere um, Ireland however they are working their way into it creating some more promising field position just not quite able to get the end result yet yeah I think Ireland need, really need the first score the second half a little bit similar to the mixed senior game earlier on to get back into it had the field position but unfortunately just didn't get the scores has to be said well having seen that happen a few times today to the British sides. I'm fairly all right with it being the other way around for once, Barrett. You like the shoe on the other foot, is it? It's, it's, it's nice, yes. Um, and certainly nothing less than this Women's Open side deserves. They've come so far in, uh, w relatively speaking, such a short length of time. In 2018, the strength and depth in the women's programme was such that we were only able to send one women's team to the World Cup and they achieved extraordinary success meddling at that World Cup uh, with many of the players that are still involved in the programme to this day and, uh, and much of the coaching setup as well. Since then though we have been able to, to go back to having two sides and this women's open side, one of the teams that won their category at Britain's first victorious British and Irish Cup in 2019, winning on that occasion 3-0. Uh, they, they were 2-0 up in Limerick last year before a, an incredibly tight third test. Some interesting uh, decisions as to whether to award or not award some tries. Ultimately ended up with Ireland winning the third game by a point. Uh, oh no, so drawing the, the third game to win to nothing overall, GB. That's because you didn't pay the refs enough. We discussed this before. Like, if you want the right decisions, you have to pay them the money they deserve, right? Well, you heard it here live on air from Barry Keary. There's no getting out of that one. I'm, I'm all for Ireland, Will. I need to fix it, I'll fix it.
I'll uh, I'll leave that one there, Barry. So uh, I'm not I'm not going to investigate your conduct any further at this point. That's good to know, Will. Investigations are overrated. <laughs> so just the one and a half games remaining on our live stream for you today at the 2022 British and Irish Cup. We've got 20 minutes remaining in this Women's Open contest. Great Britain leading 5 nothing at the moment with the hopes of being the first British team of the weekend to win on the live stream pitch. And then we will see Great Britain Men's Open play after this match here. Uh, another category where Great Britain has won the last two tournaments and another team that won their category at the International Tag Series a month ago. Uh, at that point, the, the fans will be headed to the bar. The players will be headed to the showers and the ice baths, no doubt. Uh, today was a long day for them. Two tough test matches. Tomorrow will be even longer. Three that they have to play in the biggest British and Irish Cup we've ever had. It's always previously, or, or almost always previously, been played with three test series over one day. For the first time this year, we are upping that to five tests. It's the ultimate challenge for every team involved. And... Great Britain get us back underway here with the kick down into Irish territory. Tara Coleman looks to have knocked that ball on, but the referees and touch judges, referee and touch judges, happy with it. That one can't be ignored by Rebecca Conway. And so Great Britain have their first opportunity of the second half well into the Irish territory. And Jones ships it to Hawkins and a wonderful line from Rona Roper. She starts the second half as she started the first, breaking through the gap and moving Great Britain into a six-point margin. Yeah, very strong start by GB to the second half, exactly what Ireland didn't need. Turnover forced and, um, yeah, good line again and straight in. Corona Roper as she continues her one-lady show. How many tries has she got now? Five points, is it? Out of the six? Five of the six points are hers. Four of the five tries are hers. And uh, Ellie Boyce did her best there to drop that ball backwards as Livingston goes over now. So, kind of carbon coffee tries there. Great Britain kicking off into Ireland's back left corner. A knock on coming from the Irish players and then Great Britain scoring within a couple of plays as a result. GB7, Ireland nothing. Yeah, Ireland just need to secure the ball from this one and just try not to knock it on. Just try to settle into the second half. Well, it's a big Fourth kick team. that's been... Well done, Megan Carroll there to secure possession. It's Ireland enough to break out with Thornton on the ball. She gets tagged. Uh, potential late tag on uh, Kat Galvin, Tina Jordan looks to break the line, but she's tagged by GB. Kat Galvin on the ball now. She goes outside to Megan Carroll, who looks to play in uh, Lydia Looney. Harden sticking to the right hand side. Kat Galvin opts for the kick through, manages to re secure her possession, but tagged just on the far wing. Back in by uh, Megan Carroll to uh, Lydia Looney, who looks to pass then back from the roll into Thornton. Thornton to Ray Lawless, who's carrying a lot of ball in the middle for Ireland. Attempted kick into the corner, and since to touch it, here GB ball. Great Britain will take over then. Set out from their own line. Greenhill rolls it back and it's Broadley, the vice-captain, who takes it up to the defensive line. There's Rona Roper, dangerous from every part of the pitch, as we've seen. Snowden 
decides to change directions, links up well with Broadley, Greenhill, Riches thought about the pass, saw the gap and went for it, but then the pass just wasn't able to find the hands of Lucy Saunders, and Ireland will have possession here with a roll for Fiona O'Shea inside Great Britain territory. Tara Coleman looks, looks to off out into the middle, she gets it away, Lawless on the ball, Lawless carrying really strongly again. Been a standout she's, she's player for Ireland. Today. Torrington looks to go wide. Joe Sullivan back inside, Torrington again. Making Carroll off to try and break inside, but she can't quite manage it. Ball not quite to hand. Nowhere ready to go there, no gap there, so that's going to be penalty contact against Ireland. Yeah. O'Shea just running into Riches, so Greenhill will bring this ball out 10 metres for the tap. Simple settle on the first tag. Rona Roper to Snowden. Of course, you'll have heard the name Rona Roper in an earlier game today, even if you're new to tag. As the break down the left-hand side, it's going to be Emma Jackson again. It was Bruton who found her and was... There in a supporting line, should she be needed? Oh, Emma that Jackson. Was unfortunate. Fortunate. Covering defender didn't, just didn't get the tag, and it's another try for yeah. TB. There's Emma Jackson up towards the box. There was nearly the opportunity for the tag, but it is a box try. It is two points. It is Great Britain nine, Ireland nothing now. So yeah, as, as, as I say, Rona Roper, a bit of a power couple name within TAG and within Great Britain TAG as well, Kirby Rona Roper, uh, the partner of Emily, representing Great Britain men's 30s this year, having been in the open side before. And you'll have heard me call Greenhill in this match as well, Flory Greenhill, her partner. Ollie Greenhill will be up next in the men's open competition. Ireland up to go wide here and he feel that Ireland really need a score. And possibly deserve one. They've had enough field position, they just haven't had much luck, unfortunately. Good, really good defence by GB as well, though, to be fair. Got Calvin off for the kick through. It's nice, pr nice pressure and kick chase from, Ar from Ireland to get the tag. Bruton step, not enough to get her away there. And there's Kendall. Hawkins. Snowden tagged as soon as she got the ball. Uh, Connor. Tag five, so Ryan looked to force a turnover here now. DB up for the kick. It's a challenging kick by Hawkins, but really well dealt with by Carroll. Land penalty. So the late tag. She gets tagged, Kat Galvin on the ball now. Nice half break by Ireland. Ireland again with field position, a little bit of momentum. You feel maybe if they can get something here. But it's a good tag. It's a good tag on Lydia Leone again to stall Ireland's momentum. Ireland look like they might have time and space outside. Checks the run quite well. There's a tag made. Ireland will look to go back inside again. Rebecca Conway on the ball, but she gets tagged just before the line. Right, Sullivan back across. Fortunately, the pass doesn't go to hand. Lady Looney looks to try and get in, but she's well defended by GB. Ball's here in the hands again. As Ireland goes side to side, looking for time and space. And good tag by GB in the corner again on Fiona Burstyn. It was a really good tag by Greenhill, but wonderful passing uh, from Ireland to create that opportunity. 
And as I say that, the passing breaks down and GB take over. Commentator's curse again, Will. But I agree, Ireland's passing was very good there. They were a little bit unlucky not to get in. They went side to side a couple of times, but they just couldn't get across the line with GB making a couple of very good tags pretty much on the line to hold them out. Ireland doing really well though to hold GB in here, so you'd kind of hope that they're able to able to hold them up there. Just spilt backwards by Ellie Jones. Fifth and final already Good for GB. By Ireland now. Can they keep them down there? Decent defence by Ireland. They look to have field position with the ball going into touch. Yeah, Hawkins did the best she could there with that uh, pressure relieving kick, but it falls just short of halfway. So Ireland's uh, strong defence paying off for them and giving them good attacking platform now. So they ring the subs for this next set. Conway in midfield and then they decide to go back to the right through, through Lawless who has been full of running all day. Yeah, Ray Lawless had a very strong game. A lot, of hit, a lot of hard running and a lot of offloading and really driving the team forward. But again, turn over here. GP. Oh, Alexander with the break. Oh, she looks like now no one in front of her. It is just about pace. Marikova Has she got it? She there. will have enough in at the corner. It was a valiant chase by Tara Coleman. But in the end, she just couldn't live with the pace of Alexander, who had stepped round the first defender, swerved round the second, and then comes up with a wonderful score for Great Britain to take them to 10 points. Now, some, sometimes in tournaments before, you will have seen the Mercy Rule be implemented at a scoreline of 10-0. We are not playing the Mercy Rule this weekend. It is optional now, and according to the latest International Tag Federation rules. And it has been decided we will not play it at the British and Irish Cup. Cl at the British and Irish Cup as potentially points difference could come into play uh, to decide the entire trophy if the categories and the wins are level. So every point could potentially count and therefore we will continue with normal rules despite the 10 nothing margin. Yeah, I think that's fair enough at international tag level. Good break. Good break by O'Sullivan. She's tagged Ireland with time and space and Lawless on the ball again. Got to say, Ireland do deserve a try for their efforts. They spent a lot of time in the British R. They've strung together some really impressive passages of play and this is another one as uh, Coleman nearly breaks through and then draws the penalty for the shirt pull. The dive coming in there from Thornton, the captain, but just short knee down before the line. Referee just explaining a decision here. And wants the roll ball to be taken again. He wasn't happy with that one. <coughs> Coleman tagged before the line as well. Right, nice Sullivan. Lawless, space on the outside if they go. Oh, it's good tag the through the hands to Carroll. Yeah, but Jackson, the double try scorer. Working hard in the fence as well to get across. Lawless spins, not through. Martin on the ball again. She looks to go outside, but it's another it's great defence by GB. Yeah, Saunders making the tag on O'Shea. Not a great pass, but O'Sullivan did well and finds O'Shea. And O'Shea will score. Ireland finally on the ball. 32 and a half minutes it's taken, but their efforts are rewarded one point for Fiona O'Shea to match the number on her singlet. Yeah, Ireland deserved the score there. They moved the ball really well, moved it side to side. They'd been up there a couple of times in the last few minutes and they got the score that they no doubt earned, eventually breaking through that very strong GB defence. Mm -hmm. 
And Great Britain, while it won't, obviously won't bother them on the scoreboard in this game with seven minutes remaining, uh, it's not going to threaten their victory to concede one point. I think they would have enjoyed the pride of, of, of winning this game uh, with a clean sheet. So they will be slightly disappointed uh, to, to have conceded that point. But as, as we say, Barry, really well earned by Ireland to break down the British defence. Ireland possibly should have more than one point, to be honest. Probably should have maybe three. But GB definitely good value for their victory at the moment. Much a better team. You have to have it to Ireland, like they're still giving it socks. They're still trying to score. They're still running the hard lines. They're still supporting each other. Option. Gavin on the ball, she opts for the kick. But unfortunately, it goes dead, so it'll be a top kick to GB, out 10 from the line. I'm pleased to be able to report, Barry, I don't know whether you noticed that. J just then, we did have a male uh, rugby union fan here to watch the Leagues type scope of a uh, senior age. So maybe one that you might traditionally have expected to turn their noses up at, at women's rugby. Leaving the Tykes game to come over and have a look at what was going on on pitch two here at West Park Leeds. Uh, so we are starting to get there with uh, broadening our reach to new audiences, attracting new fans to the game. It's great to see everyone that uh, turns their attention to this wonderful sport and gets hooked by the pace and the skill that is on show for all to see. And unfortunately there, an injury to an Irish player. Good to see GB head coach Dave Shipley just going over to check on the player and make sure that she's okay. Hopefully we'll see her return to play without too long on the sidelines. Looks like it might be just a little bit of a stinger on the wrist. Yeah, it looks um, that way. Great Britain penalty here. Bruton takes the tap. And Kendall to Hawkins. Snowden, great pace at the line, and she will be through, and she will get into the box as well. Two points more to the GB tally. They move out to 12 points. And there is very little stopping their rampage in this match. Four minutes remaining. It could only be the clock that's able to stop them. At this point, it looks that way. As soon as they get down, they're just more clinical than Ireland. They get the field, the field position, and then they just convert it into scores. A couple of the tries have been breakaway scores, but a lot of them have well worked ones once they get down near, near Ireland's line. Yeah, Great Britain 12, Ireland 1, and that 12 points for Great Britain. Those 12 points for Great Britain, they say, coming uh, often from box tries. And they were able to be got because a lot of those tries have been breakaway ones that have seen the GB players able to arc into the box uh, with the distance downfield that they have run. And GB taking over here inside their own half. Oh, no, the referee does not agree um, so Ireland have to reset themselves from a defensive line to an attacking one but instead they decide to go for the kick while everyone is relatively flat up Alexander deals with it well and through the defence and we saw what she could do the last time she had space in front of her she keeps beating the defenders that's three of them snatching at the tags and missing over halfway now Flory Greenhill round another defender finds Riches who finally is caught by Kate O'Connell no, we're actually going back to Greenhills and the tag on Greenhill by Penny Father. Yeah, I thought so, but Hawkett's now with the kick and it's going to be a challenging one for Brown Ison to deal with. But she did well. Yeah, well, well, done, like it's well Looney well gains a little bit of ground on that counter. First hit. And that's not forwards by Hawkett, so it will be six again, Ireland. Two 
through the hands. By the side. Oh, unfortunate. There for any boys. Pass was just a little high and difficult to catch. Unfortunately, she knocked it on. GB again with the with the ball and an opportunity to attack. Jan O'Shea makes the tag out. It is Rona Roper for a fifth score, a single pointer this time, 13 up for Great Britain, five tries through the hands of Emily Rona Roper. Wonderful bit of play there as she received the ball from Flory Greenhill, went through the first gap, but then you can see on the replay, winding her way past the final defender. So none of these scores have been easy ones to come by, uh, but all of them have been very well earned. Half of them by Emily Rona Rota. Yeah, she's having a fine game. I think I know who player to match in this match is going to be Will. And of course, player of the tournament uh, decided by the player that receives the most player of the match awards. So Emily Rona Roper having a fine start on this Saturday uh, towards the, uh, re the receiving of the player of the tournament award. And there is the hooter for final play. The referee calls it there as the tag is made. And this one ends with the biggest scoreline differential we've seen on the stream so far today. Great Britain, 13 excellent points. Ireland, a really uh, unfortunate one point in the end when they had such a, a wonderful effort through the game. I think they, they would have deserved to get a few more than that, Barrett. Yeah, they probably would have deserved, to be honest, to get maybe three or four points, but Britain, good value for the victory, and 13 points doesn't flatter GB. Very clinical once they got down there. And very clinical on the breakaways as well, punishing every single mistake. Uh, good win for GB, good, very good value for the victory. They definitely deserve to win. They really did. And we'll shortly bring you an interview with a couple of these Great Britain Women's Open players before the final match of the day on pitch one, the Men's Open contest. Uh, but just to bring you up to date with some of the results from the other pitches. Since uh, since we last gave you a roundup, we saw Great Britain uh, men's 30s come up two points short in their one o'clock match on this pitch against Ireland. 6-4 the final score to Ireland in that one. The men's open game on pitch three at the same time ended in Great Britain's favour. Five points to two. Men's 40s, that was won. The first round, of, first game of the day was won by Ireland. Great Britain managing to level things up in the second game of the day in that exhibition category 5-3. At the time that we saw uh, Great Britain mixed open, nearly mount a wonderful comeback win against Ireland, uh, ending up ultimately three points to five down. The mixed seniors played their second game of the day. Uh, and it was an even closer affair than the first one. Ultimately ending Ireland 8, Great Britain 7. So Ireland taking a two game to nothing lead in both of the mixed categories. Um, one more game left on pitch one. But before that, as I say, an interview with two of the Great Britain players. You were able to bring from yeah, touch into, into tag. Nice. Mm -hmm. And 
then we'll finish up with who you're tipping in the men's open. Oh, okay. How yeah. did that first one go? Uh, they I won 5-2, I think okay. it was. Yeah. After going down 2-0 first. Okay. Oh, did they? I hadn't heard so. of that. You good? Okay, so after that wonderful 13-1 victory for Great Britain in the Women's Open there, I'm joined by two of the superstars of the team, Anita Snowden and Emily Rona Roper. Emily, let's start with you because we were calling your name out so much during that game. I think it was five tries you scored in the end, including a first-half hat-trick. How did it feel being back out on the pitch in the GB singlet? Uh, yeah, no, it was uh, yeah great. Um, yeah, I think the first game we were finding our feet a bit, so nice to see it open up a bit more in that second game. But very much a team effort. I can't finish off things that the girls can't create. And um, yeah, you know, we spent a lot of that game in our half as well. So some great sort of resilience and defensive efforts as well. So yeah, it's nice to be the one to run it in. But it's more, much more than that, as I'm sure you know. <laughs> Great, and as you, you know, you mentioned uh, only being able to run in what the the, the rest of the team is able to create. We saw some wonderful interplay between the two of you, uh, but that that allowed uh, Great Britain to get to two wins from two games. Anita, how does it feel? Day one of the British and Irish Cup, three tests tomorrow. You you're you've complete the perfect job on day one. Now you've got to back it up on day two. Yeah, I mean, I think that one was a lot, uh, was a bit our whole performance. Our first game, we went up 6 1 and then we lost the second half. So it was good to get a whole game together yeah. and it'll be good having that confidence going into tomorrow, I think. Um, plus a, uh, an extra player coming tomorrow, which is always good too. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was you last time at the ITS, wasn't yeah. it? Not able to play on the Sunday, but uh, on the Friday, but there on a the Saturday. Mm. Um, and talking of the ITS, Emily, you weren't able to play then. You were actually involved with the European Touch Championships. What I was interested in is, is what skills, playing touch and playing tag, what skills you're able to bring across from one sport to the other to help you get to the level that we've seen you're at? Oh, I mean, I think the skills are very transferable between touch and tag. I think what touch teaches you, especially is sort of eyes up looking at space. Um, also with touch, the ball can't hit the floor, it's a turnover. So actually that the ball security and the handling skills. Um, very you know very important. But on the flip side, tag, the reason I started playing tag is that touch can be quite um, almost systematic, quite policy driven and actually sometimes you stop looking up and seeing space and actually what tag teaches you is that you can go one on one and you never know, mix and miss tags happen so they complement each other quite well and I think playing tag is maybe a better touch player uh, but having those foundational skills from touch obviously also helps with the tag as well so yeah two great sports <laughs> Fantastic, if only hearing you talk about those transferable skills allowed me to just uh, develop them in my, myself uh, <laughs> then may, maybe, I, maybe I'll be less a, a bit better than the average touch player or tag player that I am um, so uh, Anita we, we've seen uh, obviously two wins from two for women's open men's open won their first game they're about to have their second game of the day who are you tipping in this one? Oh yeah have to back GB yeah great any uh, guesses who might be amongst the scorers? Uh, Baron's always good for a try or at least setting one up so um, otherwise maybe Elliot yeah he's playing pretty well at the moment yeah it's a, it's a team stacked with talent we did actually see at the ITS Baron with some wonderful celebrations I don't know whether you caught that on on the stream he got very excited so maybe watch out for that in this one but a, a wonderful first day for the team uh, and for the two of you two from two enjoy the evening and uh, we'll look forward to seeing uh, the same performances tomorrow
Here we go now with uh, Men's Open, GB versus um, Ireland. Ireland, GB. <laughs> Thanks, Will. Wasn't sure if you'd forgotten for so a moment there, Barry. Just uh, it's, it's so the, the, the easy way to remember is it's always GB and Ireland in this tournament. We, oh, we don't, we don't have to remember South Africa, or Australia, New Zealand, any of them. Uh, this time, anyway. Yeah. So our first glimpse of the men's open category on live stream pitch the first game ended 5-2 in GB's favour so they hold a 1-0 advantage in the category a 2-0 advantage in women's open the two categories in Ireland's favour so far at the end of day one uh, are mixed seniors and mixed open leading both of those 2-0 going into this final round of games. Men's 30 is currently 1-0 in favour of Ireland. Men's 40s is currently 1-1 going into their third game of the tournament. And then you will be, well I don't know, will they be shocked Barry or will they be unsurprised to hear that after the 0-0 draw in the women's seniors category on the show pitch those two teams went to pitch 3 and drew 3-3. Yeah. Meaning that from two games, neither team has got on the, the overall scoreboard. It's nothing, nothing. And they will play a three-game series tomorrow with winner takes all. Yeah, that's it. Best out of three tomorrow wins the category. So at the moment, there's nothing between the teams. It's an illustration of how close they are to each other, which is the way their results have been over the last couple of years. So it'll be interesting to see how tomorrow goes for those two teams. As we look to watch uh, Men's Open here and making his debut for Ireland in this match will be Adam Cunningham. Make his debut for Men's Open, or de sorry, debut for Ireland, you say, not played at this level before? He hasn't played international type before, no. So this is his first international tag. So is he looking. new to the game of tag, or just uh, has worked his way up to this level? He's worked his way up to this level. He definitely isn't new to the game of tag. But he's a man with boundless confidence. The best sort of player. So Ireland will be looking Reminds to claw this Reminds me of back. an Irishman I know, Barry. Oh yeah, who would that be, Will? So GB looking to kick off here, and Ireland will be looking to get on the score sheet as quick as possible. Having lost the first game 5-2. The games in the ITS between these two teams was a 5-4 uh, game to GB in the group stages and then GB won the final comprehensively enough to win the ITS um, and also won, won um, the BNI category. 
in UL and also in London. Going 3 0 in London. Torn will be looking to improve on that today. He looks to go wide through Maybury back inside to Kevin Cook. Kevin Cook goes wide to Keegan Bradley. Keegan Bradley yeah, tries to go down the wing. Uh, doesn't quite manage it. It's inside to Rogers. Rogers to uh, May, uh, to Maybury to Cook. And now it's McCullough. McCullough to Jordan Finnegan. Made his debut in the ITS in mixed open. This is his uh, first uh, set of games in men's. Uh, McCullough offs for the 50 10, but the, the kick is blocked by GB. And GB looks to counter. Ireland want to be up fast here to make the tag to keep GB in that corner. John Rogers makes a nice tag, uh, closely followed by Keegan Bradley. Ireland now up, nice and quick. Their tempo's good at the start. Yeah. And they look to hammer back GB. That was Kieran Pointer on the ball, and I, I wish I could explain to the people watching why he's wearing that hat, but other than the fact that it's Kieran Pointer, uh, I have no further explanation, Barry. I can't imagine you have any more insight than me. I am unaware as to why he's wearing that hat or why he's such a unique personality. Nothing wrong with being a unique personality, uh, that's for sure, especially when you can back it up with virtuoso performances on the pitch, as Kieran often does. Fair. Uh, but it is Ireland that so far have had the running as Torfin Newton looks to break through. But Ollie Greenhill, the GB captain, is the one to make the tag. Kevin Cook looks for options, McCullough offering them. McCullough offs for the kick through. Doesn't quite come off. It's blocked by GB, blocked by Pointer, but uh, Rogers gathers the, the restart and Torfin Newton looks to go again. Fuller looks to go to Cook. Cook to Mabry. Mabry attempted to make the box, but he's tagged. The show and go not being bought by the defender. McCuller goes wide to Torfin Newton. John Rogers looks to go in, but again, he's tagged. A lot of early pressure from Ireland, but GB defending quite well on their line. Ireland looks to go wide. Staying narrow. Back to McCuller. John Rogers looking to go in, goes for Keegan, but uh, Keegan's tagged in the corner. You have to say GB's defence is very strong here. Harden not really anything to show for it. They have to go wide. They look to go. Cook off through the kick through. But it's a bit messy. I think it's going to be GB ball. I'm not so sure it is no, from Alex Davis staying where he is. County for contact to Ireland. Good tag by Harry Young. As Newton looks to wind his way through, Cook winds up the pass. And Rogers spills it. But he was tag tagged made by Pointer. Luckily for him. McCullough looking to go in himself, but he's tagged in the corner. Gordon probably should try to go wide now, potentially. GB having all their players down there. Harlan look to still go to the corner, trying to draw GB in to create the space outside. Now they look to go wide. Carford Newton looks to go. Again, he darted back inside, though. Ireland really sticking to this tight game. And the changeover. GB hold out. Just making sure he brings the ball out 10 metres before the roll. And here's McDermott. Oh, that's unfortunate. He lost his yeah, there. Very unfortunate. Greenhill to Young. He's Dante O'Reilly outside Good him. Decides to go himself. Though. Greenhill to McDermott. Good tag by Torfin Newton. Sorry enough to defend. GB and try to keep them in their half of the pitch. Harry Young with a oh, wonderful. Oh, that was Young looked like he was away, but Cook made a diving tag. Yeah, it was a wonderful defense. run and an e absolutely equal tag. But Dante O'Reilly, he is through and he finds Josh Roberts. That Good was nearly tag. a break. Good tag by Morgan Coughlin there. Took both for good effect. And the pace of Miles Turner Morgan through the Cochran middle. Makes but another really good tag in the middle, and that results in the turnover because it's sixth and final tag. Ireland with a chance now to come out from the line with Jordan Finnegan on the ball. 
Jordan looks to break the line. Cole looks to play it out, but he's well tagged in the middle. It's for Newton on the ball. Mabry again now. Mabry opts not to pass to Cunningham. Opts to take it on himself. Paul kicks long. He wants to chase it. He needs the ball to slip, but unfortunately it's gone behind the line. It'll be a tap to GB out 10. Zero tags. Waters gets it quickly to Fox Edwards, who takes the tap on the 10, but Davis tells him to go back. He wants that Irish defensive line to be set. Fox Edwards takes the tap for a second time. Good tag by, by McCullough, stopping the attack. Ireland stepping up again really, really well with Karen Cunningham making a good tag. Pointer fakes the early kick and he's through, running backwards, waiting for support. Pops it over the top, netball style to Ollie Greenhill, who makes good ground himself. And the interception for Ireland. And it's uh, James it, O'Donnell. He it, has the pace to make the corner, I think. He will make it. Ireland get the score. But yeah. I think Ireland might have been a bit lucky there. I think there might have been a knock on in that phase of play. Potentially. I'm not sure before the interception. Well, the Great. record books aren't going to care about that. They are just going to record the opening score, a one-pointer to Ireland, as Great Britain were looking very dangerous through the creativity of Pointer and Greenhill, but O'Donnell read it really well to take that interception, put his head down and go all the way to the line. Here is Vice-Captain Nick Wilkes. Dean Irvine links up with Harry Young. Good tag had a strong there, opening, there. Young, and draws the penalty. the penalty. Again, it's another good tag by Kieran Cunningham in the centre. Barron, the head coach of this side on the field now, looking for the nice loop Chris Cole. with Wilkes. And Irvine. Kieran Cunningham does. makes another tag with the rest in the penalty. Yeah. Crossbody. Young to Barron, Wilkes, he has the auctionman Andy Hawkins Good outside him. Nathan on the outside just before the breakaway. And Jones in field to Wilkes. The switch with oh, nice Barron play. and Young spies Jones. Good tag. It will be a penalty to oh, Great David Britain. Again. Young to G with Jones G attempting to, to get over the line. Another player in this uh, program who missed the BNI last year due to injury as Wilkes closes in on the Irish line Harkins now at demi half he's going to go left through the hands of Barron Irvine Barron again and well controlled with the feet there by Miles Turner some calmness shown and then sure Russell is. Reed diving into the defender and that will certainly be a penalty against Great Britain you can dive for the line in international tag, even with a player in tagging distance of you, but not if you just dive straight into that play. Yeah, so diving is fine as long as it's not a dangerous play. So it's Ireland that take over, and Rogers with a nice first hit up. And good pace shown across the board now with David Ahern. Peter Connolly moves it inside to Karen Cunningham. Chris Cole outside to Kev Ahern. Kevin looks to make a break, but looks like he put his foot in touch, unfortunately. So it's going to be a turnover GB ball. Edgecombe, the touch judge, making the decision that the foot in touch came before the tag by Jake Jones, which Great Britain will be more than happy with, as it gives them possession. Hawkins to Barron. There's a possibility of surrender there, Will, I would have thought. And Harry Young spins through, good meters. O'Reilly goes to the blind side himself, can't find Dan Waters and they are calling for that having been knocked forwards by Ireland and that's the decision that Davis is giving so it will be another set of six for GB, 10 meters out. Young at dummy half, picks and goes himself, the former rugby union scrum half. Uh, 
and Wilkes attacking the box but the Irish defence holding firm as we still look for the first score for Great Britain in this one Ireland with a one nothing lead and I'm told that uh, in the game we, you know, we were only getting the final scores through from the other pitches Barry but I'm told that Ireland went into a 2 nothing lead in that one and they nearly were going to go into a 2 nothing lead in this one if that had just been uh, allowed to go ahead Keegan Bradley had no one in front of him and you would imagine the pace to get all the way to the line and probably into yeah, the box Kieran, Keegan Bradley is, uh, is pretty quick alright he would have definitely made box I would say there Wilkes so that was fielding fortunate. that one well and Hawkins with the diving effort the tag is awarded Into the hands of Irvine, Jones and Harkins can't quite grab that one. Knocked on just before the line and Ireland again escape with their score sheet intact. Yeah, David Hearn looks to carry hard in the middle. Up the pass from Peter Conley. Jack Nathan back to Rogers. Rogers looking to break the line. He beats the first one, the second defender gets him. Nathan on the ball again, now back into Conley. On the apps for the kick, looking for 50-10. Does he have the legs? It looks like he might. And it's a knock-on, unfortunately, for GB. Yeah, it's basically, you know, it's the same end result as the 50-10. Waters had done so well to get back there and was trying to knock the ball up to himself one-handed, ends up spilling it forward. And Ireland with a great position. And five more tags, four more tags remaining in this set. Contact there though, it goes against Ireland. And GB let off. What could have been a very threatening few passages of play from Ireland. And spilt by Wilkes, spilt backwards according to Davis. Good hands by Dante O'Reilly. He's moving to Cape Town in September to get some inside information on the South Africans ahead of the 2023 World Cup. As McDermott puts boots the ball down deep into Irish territory. Gary Cook fields it well. Kevin Cook, sorry, fields it well. Harkins makes the tag. Morgan Coffin wants to carry hard. Nathan's going to have a go here. And he he's best to beat the first one. Back to Cochran again, it looks to go inside to Cook. Cook opts to go to Mabry. Mabry with the tactical kick. Needs the ball to sit, but I think it's going to carry. And it does carry with Bradley chasing. It did, it took a big arc on that one. You know, he's looking for the 50-10 and it's ended up in the bonus box, which is sort of the equivalent of, uh, of an attempt on goal in football, ending up going for a throw-in. So not the desired result for Ireland. Another let off for GB as Fox Edwards is tagged. McDermott looks left, nothing on. So goes right and through Miles Turner who loses his hat in the process. Kieran Pointer sadly still has his on. And a little chip kick. It works for him in terms of keeping possession. Not quite the break he would have been hoping for. Turner with pace and Roberts with even more outside. Good tag by Morgan Cochran though. Stopping what would have been a certain try. Ireland equal to everything that GB have thrown at them so yeah. far. Fifth and final. Greenhill to McDermott. Pointer can't hold on. And again, Ireland see out a GB attack. Yeah. Maybury. Ireland up to exit now through Cochran. Nice little pop from Maybury to Cochran. Cochran doesn't beat the defender though. Now McCullough looks to have a go. Cook off for the kick. Yeah, I think too that high. May have been over shoulder height, unfortunately. Certainly would have been over hours, Barry. Yeah, we're not the tallest. Right. Might not have been over Maybreeze. He's not 
Going for F down, fortunate card. It's a good tag by McCullough. First tag. GB just inside Ireland's half. Probing, looking for a score. Oh, nice play there. Yeah. Snip of an interception again for Ireland. We know what happens when they get one of those. Pace down that left hand side, but the pass from O'Reilly not able to be clawed in by Reed. Is O'Reilly Irish at some point, is he? I think if you had spoke to him, you'd struggle to know where uh, <laughs> he was Irish, but uh, I guess somewhere along the way. He was certainly enjoying Ireland when we were last over there for the ITS, off to, to play a few rounds of golf after the tournament and a nice kick here from Ireland, but it's fielded by Turner. Coughlin will be slightly disappointed with that one. He was very oh, close to getting Martin to it. Good Coughlin, resulting in the turnover. Martin Coughlin's having a fine game. He is. That wing. Making lots of clutch tags and nice little breaks as well. Ahern, conscious that he was going to knock it on, has a go. It looks like he could be in. For a box. For a box try. And he is indeed. And Ireland take a 3 0 lead. Good decision by Ahern there because he was able to control of the ball. So he opted for the kick through. Popped up nicely for him and he took the score really well. This is a category that Great Britain won 2 0 last time out. 3 0 in 2019. Uh, and GB were very disappointed with that third and final game at the BNI 2021 where they drew with Ireland on the final play of the game. Ireland scoring the decisive try to get that draw. Uh, was Ireland's best result against GB since uh, before the World Cup, the last World Cup. So a, an undefeated run, now stretching seven games since that World Cup for GB Men's Open. Sorry, nine games actually, if we include the ITS last month. So this would be a historic reversal if Ireland can preserve or extend this 3 0 lead through to the end of the game. Yeah, so far so good for men's open. The coach will be happy. He's got a lot of new players this year, like so. New game plan as well, so he'll be happy with how things are going in this second game. Chris Cole on the ball now as he looks to break down the wing. He kicks to himself. Oh. Ireland on the ball inside to Finnegan. Finnegan outside to Peter Connolly. Connolly looks to fix and go. He opts to pass to O'Donnell in the corner, but he's tagged. Rogers on the ball now. Greenhill did excellently to get across there. Ireland really threatening. GB just looking a little bit ragged at the moment, and it's going to be another try for, for Ireland. Ahern, for Ahern again, in off uh, pass from Peter Connolly. Puts Ireland four up just before half time. Wonderful game for Ahern, and suddenly, really quite a significant hill for Great Britain to climb to turn things around. A minute and a half left in the opening salvo. Yeah, you'd say GB may be a little slow off the line there at that time. For the first time in the game and they were punished for it. Attempt at the 50-10, goes into touch. About 15 metres into the GB half. GB get the counter. Key for Ireland now is not to concede before half time. Haven't done so well up to this point in the half. Well, with scrappy play like that from GB, there won't be any danger of Ireland conceding. Keegan Bradley with a run. Oh, well done, Bradley. Good tag by Jake Jones, because well Bradley was looking very dangerous. Mabry looks to go outside to O'Hearn. O'Hearn looks to get in, but he's tagged. Finnegan now has a chance to pass to Cole. Cole looks to step the score, but he's tagged. So Jordan Finnegan is going to get the ball here at the roll. He'll go inside to Mabry, Mabry to Rogers, Rogers to to Mabry again, and Newton to Bradley in the corner. Is that a try? Sniff of a forward pass, but uh, the try is given. awarded. Yeah, Bradley scores for Ireland, and Ireland stretch their lead to 5-0, and it's almost half time. 
Well, we're nearly seeing the margin we had in the mixed seniors game here. As Alex Davis calls time on that one, the Hooter goes before the kick was taken to restart the game. Ireland 5, Great Britain nothing. And I'm not sure, even with your chronic optimism, as you call it, Barry, you would have uh, predicted a scoreline like that at half time in this. No, I think that's fair contest. to say it's a big surprise. But Ireland are good value for it at the moment. Uh, GB a little bit scrappy, not as usually as polished as they usually are. Maybe guilty of being a little overconfident having won the first game and haven't done so well at ITS. But as we saw in the mixed senior game, anything can happen in the second half. And uh, I wouldn't put it past GB to come back into this. It'll be hard for Ireland men's open to keep that standard of play up for the entire game. But it's, it's good so far, so they just need to keep it going now. Yeah, well, I mentioned the, uh, the mixed seniors contest earlier on when uh, Ireland were leading 7-0 seven, seven at halftime and GB brought it back to a 7-6 scoreline at one point. Uh, so uh, there's, there's form within this GB program for pretty impressive comebacks. Uh, and Great Britain, men's open, certainly know that they have the capability to score five or more points in a single half. But at the moment, Ireland are just... They're playing so well. Yeah, they're playing re really, really, really well, which is great for the men's team. They want to check this run that GB have had on them, and I, hopefully they do it now in the second half. We'll just have to wait and see. Certainly if they replicate the way they played in the first half, there's a good chance that they, they'll win this game. We'll just have to wait and see. As we saw earlier, a lot can change in 15 minutes. Or even 20. in the second half with the game um, slanted in Ireland's favour at the moment but as with a lot of the games today uh, the um, first couple of minutes of the second half are really really crucial GB need to get the first score once they get the first score they might wrestle momentum back and equally if Ireland get the first score the second half they might just keep control of this game so a lot depends on what happens in the next couple of minutes Will, care to venture, who's going to win the game? I mean, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a big ask for Great Britain to come back from five points down. Um, as I say, if, in a way, if any team can do it, it is this GB men's open side, such as have been their performances uh, of, of the last few years. But this is an unfamiliar position to be in. Yes, they can score five points off the bat uh, and put a team away but they're not used to being five points down at half time. So uh, this is, is gonna be a real test of their character as a team, whether they can put behind them the performance of the first half and turn things around with just 20 minutes to go. Incredibly talented lineup, this men's open side. Uh, each of them individually for their league teams or maybe even their regional teams will have played in games where they needed major comebacks but it's been a while since they needed one together in a GB jersey probably would have to go back to the last World Cup to find an example of it and we just uh, wait for the Hooter to kick off the final 20 minutes of tag of day one of what has been an engrossing 2022 British and Irish Cup. We will bring you up to date 
with, uh, with the other men's results following the conclu conclusion of play on this pitch. Uh, but we know that Ireland lead the two mixed categories. Great Britain lead in the Women's Open. The Women's Seniors is tied, and with all of the men's categories being played at the moment, we could have ties across the board there as well. So uh, one of the tightest B&Is we've seen in a long, long time. Yeah, absolutely. Similar to the one in Gorman's down before the 2018 World Cup, which uh, came down to the number of wins to decide who won it with categories in even three all. Penalty for GB here. So they've gained a few metres and get a fresh set of six. Uh, Ahern just wanted a bit of Sorry, McCullough just wanted a bit of clarification from the referee, which was the cause for the delay. Wilkes looked to break round the outside of Kevin Cook, who was having none of it. Ball, Ireland defending well. McCullough makes a tag again. So despite, oh, GB up for the exit kick. Go for Early in the set. set. Looks like it's a drop out rather than a 50-10. So clever bit of play by Connolly. Opting to knock the ball dead rather than concede the 50-10, meaning that Ireland gets the option of taking the kick out and can uh, look to move the ball down the pitch rather than have to deal with a 50-10 on the 10 meter. Yeah, we're just waiting here. It's a bit of a delay. It looks to be uh, Rogers, who's down on the far side for Ireland, and the touch judge and referee having their attention drawn to it. Just wanted to make sure he was okay before the play resumed. Right, Turn and make sure his hat's on before he clears up the ball. And into centre field. Barron feeds Wilkes. A little skip step. The colour makes the tag. Young decides the change of direction is needed. Turner with good hands on that one. Former championship rugby union player for Isha. A lot of penalties here in the start of the second half. Conceded by Ireland. Oh. Floated pass from Barron to Wilkes. Just hits the fingertips and goes back out. Wilkes uh, saying he was doing his best to give the ball back, but the penalty whilst holding given. it behind his back. <laughs> well, the penalty given to Ireland and they uh, come fast from it. And uh, now have the opportunity for the opening score of this second half. What will Ireland look to do here now? That's the question. Conley on the ball, he goes inside. Conley looks like he's in and he is in. And in the box as well, I believe. Looks like it might be. Waiting for confirmation from the referee. Might have we'll only been one rather than two. Take a look on the replay, see if we can get definite confirmation. Seven zero is yeah. called by so Alex Davis. Two pointer. Three. And that hill just turned into a mountain for not, GB to climb. Not the start GB would have wanted to the second half. All stemming from just a little floaty pass and a knock on and then just a failure to react really to the setback. GB with a big mountain to climb now. Yeah. Rogers encouragingly for Ireland, back on his feet, back involved. Wilkes, no problem taking that one and gains some good ground from it. O'Reilly. Barron. Wilkes. GB with time and space. Escapes the clutches. For the first time. McDermott. Irvine loops around him. GB Waters. Really moving the ball another Yorkshire now. native. McDermott. It's a fresh set of fresh set of tags as well for a penalty for contact. Yeah, Irvine will take it back to the mark. GB with field position now for the first time in the second half. Tag made by Mabry. Five tags to go. Barron, McDermott, over to O'Reilly. Roberts in the corner, and finally GB get their opening score. It's one point. It's the speedster, Josh Roberts. And the 
comeback is on. He had a prolific tournament here for the East London men's side at Nationals in May. Alongside Miles Turner in that side. Two speed demons in this side. Big kick from Greenhill. Possibly would have gone long if it had been left by Chris Ireland, Cole. but uh, Ahern didn't want to risk it. Chris Cole looks to have a go. It's penalty, Ireland. Ahern now looks to have a go again. He's tagged in midfield. Ireland need options, Maybury carries. Chris Cole beats the first one, second second one gets him. O'Hearn comes in for the uh, for the roll and it's back to Mabry. Mabry looks to use Finnegan, but he doesn't. He goes wide. He has to go wide to Karen Cunningham. Karen Cunningham to Rogers. And it's a wrap, so it's going to be a penalty to Rogers. So Keegan Bradley opts to take it quickly. The referee still talking to the opposition. Asks Ireland to go back. So it's Cunningham on the ball now. Cunningham. Wants to move it. Bradley's in to take the roll. Bradley goes outside to Rogers. Rogers making good yards. Drops to step inside. Gets tagged. Keegan on the ball. Mabry has it. Ahern's coming like a train, but Chris Cole has it in space. He opts to go to Jordan Finnegan, but unfortunately the pass is spilled. And it's going to be GB ball. So GB will have the chance to counter. Definitely unfortunate that for uh, uh, for Ireland as their attack was building into what could have been a nail in the coffin sort of score. You notice that Pointer has taken off the hat. Maybe it didn't seem like such a good idea at five nothing down. Certainly won't at seven one down. It's a good tag by Mabry in the middle, stop of momentum for GB as they look to build up ahead of steam. Box Edwards of Greenhill does so well to take that off his toes. Turner keeps the ball alive. Back to Fox Edwards. It's McDermott now in the middle of the field. Look to go for the pass, but his shorts were pulled. It'll be penalty GB in another set of six. Fox Edwards with the little skip and the step. Oh, it Good worked well initially, but Cole. yeah, Cole trapped well across there, didn't he? He sure did. GB nice Points little bit of momentum. Pointer looks like he's dived into the defence there, but I think it's just a tag. Oh, so a gap for him to dive through for sure, Barrick. <coughs> Greenhill to McDermott. There is space. Oh, good tag. And uh, wonderful effort again. there. Very good tag, because that would have been a box try otherwise. Chris Cole with the tag. Good turnover by Ireland. Is it? No, it's still. Fourth tag fourth called tag. by Alex Davis. Pointer with a little rocket pass. To Fox Edwards, this is fifth and, fifth and final. final. GB been keeping it very you tight. The GB. last few tags, Greenhill, GB Turner, Turner finds Fox Edwards, and no, no try. Six and a change. -up. So Ireland hold out GB once again. They only have 11 and a half minutes for a famous win. Interception. GB could be in here. Oh, but the pass isn't to hand. We're just going to see what Davis gives here. Is he awarding the tag? In which case, GB will maintain possession. He, I could hear him saying about a late tag. So it is penalty tag GB. Six tags to go. McDermott, Fox Edwards, tag made. Greenhill to Pointer to Turner with Reed and Reed diving over in the corner exactly the same place that Robert scored in so it's back to 7-2 7-2 but it's to go. well it's encouraging GB's got two points on the board don't forget they conceded two in the bonus box right at the start of this half meaning that the margin is now only back to the five that it was at half time. Still time though, 10 minutes is a long time. 10 minutes is an age in tag if we wanted to reach into the book of cliches, Barry. 
You know me, I'm a big fan of cliches, but game of two halves, etc. Um, that's Torfin Newton. Looks to break Conley's around the side. He opts the kick, but the kick is blocked. It's going to be a knock on, I think. But possibly GB ball. Yeah, because technically, I believe the attacking side is still Ireland, so he shouldn't have been, he can't dive on that ball. Seeking clarification, Hawkins says, well, let's just speed things up here. I don't think he dived on it. He fell over the GB player on the ground. <laughs> fell. Mm. Yes. Is that in inverted commas? <laughs> Young. Dummy half. GB looking to attack again. They're in the Good corner Good pace again. from Hawkins. Wilkes. Stumbles, but the tag made. Good defence by Ireland. Ireland have to do a lot of defending for the last six or seven minutes. Barron puts boots to ball, and that could be a box try. Davis checking his touch yeah, judges are happy, and he try, will yeah. award the two points. Ireland will he award the two points? He'd gone to do it. He's explaining his decision. Despite the injured Irish player on the ground, the box try has been awarded. Davis is calling time off here because the player is still not up. I think it's Peter Conley, is it? Yeah. So assuming nothing changes in Davis's decision, he seemed fairly certain. He checked. Oh. He checked once. He checked twice with his touch judges. He awarded the try, paused as he went to do it, decided to make it definite. And he now is now having to explain further with time off to McCullough. And now Cook has decided to come over and, and argue the case as well. So obviously there are some difficult decisions that have to be made by referees and not all of them that players will agree with, but we so don't really like to see such a long conference going on between players and referees, regardless of which way the decision goes. So that one has been awarded to GB. Seven, four now, three points to margin. A short kick from GB, but fielded well by Ireland. Ireland just need to hold the ball for six here and now. That exit, that's all they need to do. Or for Newton on the ball, he looks to step inside. He doesn't beat the defender though. It's Adam Cunningham on the ball, he goes to Mabry. Mabry looks to use Cook. Ireland being very careful with the ball at the moment. 10 metres inside, GB's half. Maybe goes for the exit kick. Looks like a good Rose. kick. Oh, and yes. it is a good kick. 50-10. Quality piece of play there by Ireland. Nice. Nice two, two, two runs to set up the 50-10 and then a beautiful little kick into the corner by Maybury. And Exactly what Ireland needed was six and a half to play and the lead having been reduced from seven points to three. They need some time and they need some territory to restore as much of that lead as they can. Jones does well. Otherwise O'Donnell would have been in at the corner there. Yeah, it's a good tag in the corner. Adam Cunningham on the ball now. What a nice J line. Set it up outside to Mabry. Mabry looks to Cook. McCullough looks to have a go. It's back to Cook. Cook back to Torfa Newton. GB coming up for the intercept, but Ireland don't pass. Caught slightly out of the line. Ireland look to go in here. It's tag four. Tag five, and it's going to be turnover now in a second. Ireland look to go in. O'Donnell gets tagged, and it's going to be turnover here in the corner. Yeah, Jones does well again, and O'Reilly. Wanting to bring the ball out, but told because the Irish player 
O'Donnell wasn't in touch. It's just a changeover where the tag was made. Pointer to Wilkes. Wilkes with the break. But Jack Nathan has the tag, unfortunately. So back for that throw ball there. It's a good tag again by Morgan Cochran. Really defending his wing quite well today. Hawkins, Roberts Nathan down the wing with space chase. in front of him. Back inside to Hawkins, oh, a wonderful a tag. diving tag what by Ireland. GB need to keep again. coming here. They can't lose the pace. They have an attack. Oh, and Young knocks it on in midfield. He's got to clear error. that up. It's a handling error, and Ireland look to move the ball again. Those were crucial moments there. Ireland failing to get on the board after six tags in the GB red zone. Then the British break. Really ought to have seen them reduce the deficit as well. But lost forward in midfield. Now followed up with a penalty to Ireland. And all of this using up time. Just four minutes to play in the game. Three points the margin. McCullough looks to go. But he gets tagged. To Cunningham. Cunningham inside to Newton. Newton to Mabry. Mabry to Cook. Cook outside to Morgan Cockham. His tag was really a try saving tag there a few minutes ago. Back to Cook again. Cook looking to drive, ops to kick. Bit of a knock on by Cook there. It was a little bit messy. And some confusion between Cook and Pointer as to who made the knock on. Davis uh, once again having his decision questioned. And just trying to work out where the mark is and in the end Greenhill says look just give me the ball let's put the ball down and play turn it on the right wing the tag. Roberts had that wonderful break Young nice step in the middle still going not tagged Mabry with a tag nice tag yeah good diving effort good Greenhill to the left with Wilkes Wilkes is through and that's a pull on the shorts. That will surely be a penalty. It will be a penalty to GB, which they have to take quickly. O'Reilly with pace and tracking laterally across the field and fires it too hard into the hands of Roberts. Knocked on into touch. Two and a half minutes now. Still three points to get. You feel if Ireland just keep the ball for six here, they'll probably close out the win. Most likely. Especially if it's a good exit as well. GB yeah. possibly forcing it a little bit there because they're down by three. Almost certainly. Of course, while you can score three points in a mixed game with a female box try, the maximum you can score in a men's game is two points in that box. So it's a two-score game. Mabry goes wide to McCullough. McCullough opts for the kick through. The chase is on, but the ball wins the race to the line, and it's going to be a row ball to GB down in the corner. It does win the race to the line, but Ireland won't mind about that too much. It puts GB in a tricky position and takes up a little bit more time as well. Morgan Cochran with the tag again in the corner. He's continuing his five, fine game. Once the clock says 38 and a half, we actually probably have about another minute to play on top of that. I would imagine. Yeah, of course, Davis did stop the, the time to explain three. his decision uh, from the Baron box try. And Waters after the half break from O'Reilly. Wilkes at first receiver to Pointer. Pointer with that trademark little kick of his and then appealing for the short pull. And late Blues. tag as well, I think. Yeah, but he was. He's a judge to have late. been tagged with the ball before the kick. Greenhill finds O'Reilly. Ireland find his tag through the hands of David Ahern. Yeah. David Ahern's having a fine game in this match as well. In fact, a lot of the guys actually are. Yeah, he really stepped up across the, across the team sheet from Ireland here. Morgan Cochran gives an option to Ahern. Ahern keeps going. It's good yards. Keegan Bradley was on the outside looking for the ball. Cochran off to run in himself. And it's a good tag by GB just down on the line as we head into a timeout at on. 
GB looking for the intercept. Tidied up by Chris Cowell. He's looking to step his way back into it. I think Davis might have said a minute and a half, possibly there. Yeah, sounds about right. I would have said a minute and a half, yeah. So Cook looks to attack with the ball. He needs a runner off him to give him an option. No option for coming. He gets to go himself and he gets tagged. So Cook to Finnegan. Finnegan back inside to Chris Cole. Chris Cole looks to go, but he gets tagged. So it's Cook or Cole to Finnegan. Finnegan back into Mabry. Mabry's had a really good game in the middle, controlling the game really, really well. And Cochran looks to go in, but he's tagged. Ireland hammering away at the line. Cochran looks like he might be in. I think he is I in. I think he is, yeah. Yeah. And it's a try for Ireland. So the icing on the cake. Five points in the first half for Ireland. Two immediately after the break. They end up with eight all together with the final play of the game being another one point try and a famous win for the Ireland men's open here. They reverse recent results. They lost 3-0 to GB at the 2019 British and Irish Cup. They lost 2-0 achieving a last gas draw in the third game at the 2021 British and Irish Cup. They lost both contests at the ITS. They lost their first game of the day to Men's Open. But finally, at the 10th time of ASCII, they win a game against, uh, uh, against Great Britain Men's Open. Eight points to four, the final score in this one. And that means the Men's Open category tied up 1-1, one, one, Barry, uh, as we go into yeah. day two. Finally, so finally pause for tomorrow. And Ireland will be, will be really glad to, to check that run. All started with James O'Donnell's intercept try and Ireland took off from there. Uh, the best performance by the men's team in a few, in a few years. And uh, no doubt GB will come back all guns blazing for the games uh, tomorrow. So we'll uh, provide you with a little bit of a wrap up of the day very shortly. But before that, uh, we're going to have another interview. Barry is going to speak to two of the men's open side it's David Ahern and Jack Mabry walking over who both had fine games themselves in a victorious cause for the Irish side Okay, so with me I have uh, Jack Mabry and Paul McCullough. So my first question is, how does it feel to stop the rot? Oh, it's brilliant. I don't think I've actually ever been in a team that's beaten the GB men, so it's brilliant to finally get one over on them. Make it exciting for tomorrow at least, so yeah, that was great. Yeah, it's nice to get their win, make it one all going in tomorrow, it's all to play for. I think it's fair to say that's probably the best that you guys have played uh, in a men's game, certainly that I've seen over the last while, so you must be happy with that. Yeah, definitely. We stuck to our systems. I think it's the first time we've actually played our proper game plan that we wanted to play. So, now look, it worked out and hopefully we can do it again tomorrow. So, Yeah, it just shows that all the training's playing off. The last two sessions and all the boys come down every week and it's just training's playing off. Yeah, well, congratulations, guys. Well done Cheers. and best of luck tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. So, Barry, uh, day one done and in the books at the 2022 British and Irish Cup. Uh, we started off with the men's 40s exhibition category. We know that uh, that had been one game apiece after their first two games. We were awaiting the result from the thir third and final game of day one. Of course, that one doesn't count towards the overall British and Irish Cup. Uh, we then went on to the mixed seniors. We saw Ireland win that one uh, and they won their second game of the day as well. So Ireland leading in the mixed seniors category. We then moved on to women's seniors. We saw a scoreless draw. They then had a 3-3 three, three draw on the other pitch. So that category tied up nil-nil as we go into day two. Men's seniors was up next. Ireland won again. Uh, and we're waiting for the score of game two there. 
We then moved on to the Opens categories. Mixed Open had lost, uh, Great Britain had lost their first game and then, then he lost their second on this uh, streamed pitch. Women's Open, both games have gone to GB. And that's the only category that GB leads at the end of day one. And then uh, we, we've just seen this incredible contest between the GB and Iron Men's Opens sides that for the first time since before the 2018 World Cup has seen Ireland come out on top to tie the category up 1-1 going into, into day one. So while we wait for the results of the men's 30s, by my calculations, that's Ireland leading in mixed seniors and mixed open, Great Britain in leading in women's open with women's seniors and men's open currently tied up. So at least a 2-1 lead to Ireland, maybe 3-1 depending on the results of men's 30s. Uh, you must be pretty pleased with this first day from an Irish perspective. Yeah, so far so good. I mean, really, really pleased, particularly for men's open. Getting the win today was huge for them. So it gives them a real chance going into tomorrow. Um, very pleased for the mixed teams, obviously, who have gone two from two. I believe the mixed senior, second mixed senior game was really close, similar to, to the open game. Um, so yeah, no, for us it's been a, it's been a good day, but it's still very very tight. Like I mean, anyone could win uh, women's seniors still, and uh, anyone could win men's open. So there's all to play for going into tomorrow. Absolutely, to have two categories uh, tied up at, at uh, level pegging after day one, unprecedented. Of course, we've not actually played a B and I over two days before with five tests each. Um, so we are in uncharted territory anyway. Uh, from a Great Britain point of view, they certainly uh, improved in the two mixed categories from game one to game two, getting closer on the scoreboard. Uh, I do believe wins will come tomorrow. Um, Ireland probably the favourite still to take those categories, but uh, certainly I would be confident of wins for GB um, to narrow the gap and maybe even take a, take a, a category there. Women's Open looking very strong for GB, as, as we saw. Men's Open will be disappointed with that result. Uh, as, as you know, as exciting as it is for the Irish to win after all that time, it's just e equally galling for GB to lose after such a, a winning run against their Irish counterparts. Um, and uh, and that, that women's seniors catch, I mean, that's, that's going to be incredible. Uh, let's just take you through the fixtures that we're going to have on uh, pitch one tomorrow. We'll actually be switching to the premier pitch here at West Park Leeds. RUFC now that Leeds Tykes are done with that field for the weekend. We will kick off early tomorrow morning, 9 a.m., with mixed seniors playing their third game. We'll then go into the third game for mixed open at 9.55. We mentioned earlier we'll be bringing you two games for, from the men's 40s exhibition category. So we'll start off with game four for the men's 40s at 10.50. Then continuing the, the fourth game theme, women's seniors at 11.45. Uh, we, we wonder whether we'll have had a win for either team by that point. Women's open at 12.40. Men's 40s final game at 13.35. The final game for men's 30s at 14.30. And final game for men's open. And the final game we'll be bringing you from this 2022 British and Irish Cup at 15.25. Uh, so we're headed to, uh, to finish up at around 10 past four tomorrow and do uh, join us for that full day. The coverage will be hosted on the Rugby Football League's Our League app, which is free to download. Simply go to the Rugby Football League website uh, and follow the links to, to log in and create your free accounts on there. Uh, you'll be able to watch uh, all the replays on your Our League account from the entire weekend, um, which will be, they will be uploaded to Our League early next week. Uh, there will be streams on Tritag Rugby's YouTube and Facebook page, but the Our League play app is the place to watch. Barry, job well done for Ireland after day one. Uh, plenty to build on for Great Britain. Do you dare to make a prediction for day two? No, I'm not, I'm not, I, don't, I don't do predictions. Though. You should know that by now. I personally wouldn't be doing one myself either. It's uh, to, to quote you about 10 or 12 times today, it's too close to call. So do please join us tomorrow as we look to crown our winner of the 2022 British and Irish Cup. Uh, it's been a pleasure talking alongside you as ever, Barry. Always uh, well, always. And uh, yeah, we'll look forward to seeing you in the morning, bright and early. 9am is the first game on the Rugby Football League Hour League app. Mixed seniors, first up.
Take care.